Hey guys, my name is Simpsy. How you all doing? Welcome back to some more Total War Warhammer 3 here today on the channel. And we're going to be starting a daily Empire campaign series playing as Carl Franz. So, if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video a like and subscribe if you're new. I'd really much appreciate it. Let's get underway. Now is the time, men of the Empire, to unite! Rightio, lads. You heard the Emperor. Us men of the Empire must unite. And then, I suppose, summon the elect accounts. Now, first things first, we have to deal accounts. with these pesky Empire successionists, which are just to the south of our capital, Altdorf. So here is Karl Franz in Warhammer 3. How cool is that? All right, so first things first, the main objective is to get the entirety of Reichland directly under Karl Franz's control. Then we want to bring the other elect accounts into our sphere of influence. Here is Karl Franz. Please take into consideration that this Immortal Empire's build is still in beta and development is still in progress. So you're welcome to pause, have a look at the skills and some of the details. Now, we've obviously got the Empire rework, which has been present uh, since Warhammer 2. So, a little bit of advice. I would recommend having roughly around about 2,000 gold in the bank at all times and about 1,000 prestige to counteract the random events that pop up. There's a little bit of RNG with the Empire campaign, so to get the best possible outcome of those events, I really do recommend that advice. We're going to go with Tithe, and we're going to get a 10% growth and 2 control early on. I think that's definitely in our best interest. So if we ever want to confederate, we don't want other elect accounts declaring war on each other. We need to do that. So here are the short campaign victory conditions. The Barrow Legion and so forth. There's, got, there's a domination campaign, which is 200 and whopping 72 settlements. Look, we'll see how we go. I would love to do a full map completion, but I think that would be a little bit insane <laughs> to try and do. I don't know how long that would genuinely take, but I definitely wouldn't mind working my way from like A to Z of all the legendary lords. Yeah, let me know who you'd like me to let's play in the future. But we're going to be kicking things off with the tutorial battle. Let's go. Let's warm things up. Now, this battle is not overly too complicated. Uh, back in Warhammer 2, there's a lot of high ground, so the map has slightly changed. It does look like we're sort of... This is more of a, a Cathay-looking battle map, which is kind of cool. So we've got a nice little bit of high ground to our right. So we've currently got one unit of great swords, halberd swordsmen, two units of hand gunners. We currently have no archers, which is a little bit of a shame. We do have a Reichsguard and a mortar. So once our artillery starts bombarding and raining fire and death upon these successionists, they're going to be wanting to try and close the distance. All right, we'll try and get an angle. There's a slight high ground ele elevation with our gunners. And we'll try and release some of those mortar shells to soften them up. We'll get Karl Franz to lead from the front with Gal Moraz, even though he has, he's got it, even though we've got the quest item just yet. But the men of the Empire are slowly but surely advancing, closing the distance to try and dominate the field. We'll swing our Reichsguard around and we'll try and get a nice cycle charge. We might even be able to hit their archers, which are sitting a little bit back. All right, so looks like they're moving out some swordsmen to respond. All right, let's go for their archers to try and neutralize them. Now let me know in the comments as well, army builds for this series. Early on, we want to get a bunch of archers, crossbows, swordsmen, and we might look to invest in some essentially great swords and stuff early on. Dude, can't wait to get stuck into the potential spell casters that we can get. And obviously the heavy artillery of the Empire, which will be our bread and butter of the series. My favorite artillery piece, the Hellstorm Rocket Battery. Dude, those things absolutely shred. Carl Franz is in currently in combat. Our Reichsguard have neutralized these skirmishes in the rear, and we want to try and start cycle charging against them. Now, Reichsguard are a little bit better in Warhammer 3. Cavalry is generally better, slightly because of the buff. They're a lot more viable on the harder difficulties compared to Warhammer 2. But it's a little bit of a controversy. Some people like artillery and skirmisher spam as the Empire. I don't know. I don't mind having the occasional Demigriff or Reichsguard unit just for a little bit of fun. Alright, we want to try and 
run down as many of them as possible, get those chevrons and experience up nice and high, and we'll allow our hand gunners to get some firing practice. So, nice little warm-up battle, nice little bit of terrain. Interesting that we don't start off with any archers of sort. Alright, decisive victory, just to speed things up. First engagement, 39 Empire lives have been lost after destroying the 600 or so. Swordsman did quite well. Um, our Reichsguard actually did the best. Well, hmm. Do we want the experience? I think so. We can probably do without the slight replenishment because we can't actually reach Grunberg. Okay, we can. I think I'll, I want a slightly more amount of units if we can. We've also got the magical items and ancillaries. Uh, we can also salvage them at some point, which will be good. We've also unlocked some skills. We're going to start things off with getting a plus 5 movement range because I eventually want to get lightning strike. Alright, back in Altdorf. We've got enough money to upgrade the village itself. We want to try and get Altdorf to at least tier 4 so we can get some higher quality units. So, to start things off, we can negotiate with a bunch of the elect accounts in and around us. And we'll try and get as much money as we can. But it's going to be interesting to see how well we do, where we spend expand and conquer. Will Kislev be able to hold against the Chaos Wastes to the north? We've also got to be a little bit proactive in protecting our elect accounts from either Vampiric, Beastmen, or Norsken Raiders, because you do get a pretty bad penalty if they do um, get destroyed. So we're going to slowly but surely try and confederate with the elect accounts. And we're basically just going to try and go after the Separatists, maybe the Vampires, maybe Bretonia. We'll see how we go. Okay, after a little bit of negotiations on the diplomacy front, we can afford to get some more units in our build. I think I want to go with archers early on. We've got plenty of swordsmen, halberds, even that great sword. But being able to have some armor hitting, piercing skirmish would be the play. Empire archers aren't actually too bad. Um, I prefer crossbows, but even in settlements, sometimes they're better to arc their shots up and over the walls compared to crossbows. But we'll see how we go. But the turn timer is a little bit long, even though it's like powering through it. So depending on your PC, it might struggle. 273 factions to power on through. That will significantly drop, I, I imagine, once we get deep into the campaign, because not... Um, Every faction, of course, survives. All right, so it's going to be a close victory in Grunberg, and we are only going to lose potentially one swordsman. And it is a siege at the end of the day. Mostly swordsmen, spearmen, and crossbowmen. And it's a walled cinema. So we're going to auto-resolve this one. We'll take the halberd hit, which is a little bit annoying, but so be it. And we'll siege and take Grunberg out. And yes. we'll look to bring Unite in Ubersreich, Ilhart, and I believe the Fortress of Helmgart as well, which can be a little bit tricky to take. And we're going to want to try and take I it soon. Hopefully the Dwarfs or some other faction doesn't take it, because it is a crucial fortress. Uh, we want to reduce army recruitment as well with Karl Franz, by the way. Okay, so... Altdorf has expanded, and we want to upgrade our barracks to a rally field so we can get crossbowmen and replace those halberds and eventually bring more infantry in. Roughly, one about ideally, if I could get like five great swords, the rest made up of skirmishes, wizards, and artillery. But it's just going to be a little while before we can get crazy artillery pieces, like the Hellstorm rocket battery. Uh, we probably could build a blacksmith. That's probably not a bad idea. At the moment, on the economical front, we're making just shy of under 2,000 gold per turn. We could increase that with clay pits, however, and being able to trade variously. 
Our prestige is only 250. I'd like to increase that. So, we're just on the doorstep of Ubersreich. We want to try and take this, because there's a chance that... I think we can get Gotrick and Felix, Felix pretty early on if we did build a pub here or something. But there is an interesting garrison here that we can get. The nation Once we fully repair it and bring things back to normal life, there's like, uh, I think you can even have like a dwarf and an elf. <laughs> and uh, there's like a um, Vermintide uh, reference, I believe. So we'll try and take Ilhart. Now. The Empire's secession, secession, I can't even say the word properly, secessionists <laughs> mostly have their power in Helmgart, and they do have a military force there. So I would like to try and get all of Reichland under our control, but we might have to bait Uber's Reich. We'll see how we go if we move out. Oh, here we go. Our first piece of events here. So, okay, unfortunately, we've got a lose lose situation. Alright, we're going to mobilize out of Ubersreich. And let's bring in a Fields as well. We want to try and go with Growth and Finance. Because then obviously we can get more military forces. Therefore we can conquer more lands. But yeah, let me know in the comments if you'd like me to expand and conquer. I do want to try and play realistic, role play as best as we can. I do want to try and strive to bring all of the elect accounts under my direct control, mostly by confederation. So Sterling demands a region. Oh god, this has been super unlucky. So I suppose we allow Sterling to gain influence. So they're still holding it, Helmgard. Now, I'm going to take a risk here and move to Ilhart. They could uh, retake Ubersreich. However, I actually wouldn't mind that because then we would be able to essentially surround and neutralize the army in there. Because Ubersreich is a far easier settlement to take than the fortress in the, the Axe Pass. So, we're slowly but surely trying to get a full stack before we can mount an assault on the fortress. We've got an abundance of archers and swordsmen now. We've also got the entirety of Reichland under our control, so we can install an edict, getting more growth to continue. Tech-wise, let's see what we're working with. So, we could potentially go down grain silos. Um, obviously, money is always a fantastic idea. But, hmm, maybe getting more ammunition might be a smart play. Alrighty, things are looking good. It's probably time now to recruit a secondary army. Arch electors I do quite like, but it does largely depend on the trait. Oh, okay, that, well that's just settled it then. We can go with the General of the Empire. Rizard von Liebwitz. I like the sound of you. A good royal sort of, and loyal Reichland name. Alright. Let's go. Oh shit, Hockland has been destroyed. Fuck. Um, okay. Yeah, look at that. I think it's just minus two. Damn. As I was making plans and preparations to go against the Empire Successionists at Helmgard. Now, we've got a full stack. Order resolve is not in our favour. We'll try and siege it out where we can. We do want to try and take the fortress as quick as we can, because quite frankly, I don't want anyone else to hold it. Be that me, dwarves or vampires of the Barrow Legion. So we'll bring up this secondary force. Okay, so it is in range. So let's move you in. We're still currently sieging out Hans. Oh, okay. Oh, I might have stuffed up here. Even though it's going to be a... Uh, close victory auto resolve. Unfortunately, this reinforcing army has actually been intercept intercepted by the enemy, but it's still going to act as a siege. Hmm. Okay, I thought potentially at that point they might sally out, which would be good, but we're going to have to siege them out. So here's the Battle of Helmgart. Really cool looking settlement. Now, unfortunately, 
We're going to have to wait until our reinforcements get here. So we might have just made the siege just slightly more difficult for us. Because we're not all here just to purely send it up there. But here's Helmgart. The ancient fortress in the pass here. And we need to bring it back under Empire control. As the secessionists from here were able to cause terror and carnage throughout Reichland. So, it's going to tell me a minute before those reinforcements come in. So luckily we're early enough in the campaign that they're not sort of peppering, bombarding me with artillery or missiles from this range. So we'll wait for Carl Franz and the boys to rock up and then we'll march straight up to the gate of Helmgard and try and take this city. Ask them nicely first, <laughs> but then ultimately try and take it. Wait for everyone to slowly but surely trickle on in. And then we'll move up. So now, with those addition, additional reinforcements and army we called from Altdorf, we should have enough to take Helmgard. Bunch of crossbows in here now, and archers. Alrighty. Let's advance with our infantry. Make sure they're not running, because we don't want to exhaust them too much. And let's divide our skirmishers slightly and angle them. For example, crossbows and one archer unit can go here, or the other archers can go uh, here, for example. I actually don't mind if they run, because I want, kind of want to allow them to be first to get either hit by skirmishers, and maybe draw some of the fire away from our valuable infantry. Because I don't really fear for the lives of our archers. They're not going to have any magical machinations or spells or whatever the like they can throw on us. But Carl Franz, after leveling up, is now on his trusty steed. Which is an automatic upgrade now, which is interesting. Can't wait to eventually get his main mount, Deathclaw. Okay, so already the secessionist towers are hitting us, trying to soften up. Let's speed things up slightly to hopefully put the last of the secessionists down and out. Okay, my artillery should really move up if they can there seems to already be like huge craters here which is interesting I wonder what caused that maybe surrounding the city it's like <laughs> our damage from our previous bombardment so our archers have made their way just below and shy of the wall. We'll try and get them to arc their shot and uh, get things on over. As Carl Franz has charged up to the gate and is going to try and bring it down single-handedly, wielding the Warhammer. Gal Moraz. Sigmar's heir. Getting stuck into it. So we obviously want to try and bring other Empire Legendary Lords in as quick as we can. Definitely want to prioritize Balthazar Gelt. Hell, if he even gets threatened by various greenskins in the south, we might have to go and save him. <laughs> Which, uh, we might need to do. Go save him down in Nam. Alright. The gateway has been destroyed, so we actually don't need to throw all our infantry on the walls, which is good. We're going to be able to send a couple straight through the gate itself. Currently 60% in our favour. They've softened us up slightly. And hopefully, I would say we have skirmish and supremacy on them. We'll try and soften them up from the outside. Hopefully we can push some of their infantry further back. So then we can move our archers onto the walls, walls and fire down from the walls with impunity. 
But the brave men of the Empire and Reichland are about to storm through the city gates of Helmgard. And they're going to be intercepted incredibly quickly. But yeah, let me know in the comments. Would you like me to expand and conquer? Factions you'd like me to take out? Because basically now... We've got to think of who we sort of go after. Do we go against the vampire counts, which are definitely on the target? One of our older enemies. We obviously want to try and bring all the elector counts under our control. We could potentially go after Bretonia, because also we've got to think about uh, climate suitability and sort of potential territories. Like, I don't mind Bretonia. I don't mind <laughs> uh, Leon Leon Coeur of La Bretonia, but he does have some really suitable settlements for me. <laughs> uh, same with the Wood Elves as well. They do have a settlement, I do believe, just north of us. So, I feel like a war with the Wood Elves is potentially inevitable. However, we will need to make alliances before the various hordes of chaos come. So, I think we need to ally with certain factions that we can't take their territory. Potentially the Dwarves might be the best place. But also, in saying that as well, we kind of want to have good alliances with other human factions in settlements that we could potentially own, like Kislev, but we, I wouldn't mind getting access to some of their units via military alliances and outposts. Dude, could you imagine an army build with Demigriff Knights, Reichsguard, and Bear Riders. Oh my god. What an idea. That'd be sick. But I can't wait to produce a bunch of Warhammer 3 content for you guys. And I really can't wait to see how far and sort of what twists and turns this Empire series has to go. So, make sure to support it. Leave a like and sub. I'd appreciate it if you haven't already. If you want to see future episodes, and depending on sort of your feedback and suggestions, we'll sort of determine how long this series is. I want to try and go as long as we can, as long as you guys are enjoying it and supporting it. Alright, so we are currently fiercely fighting in and around the streets of Helmgart. We're doing quite well. Okay, it might be safe in some pockets now of the enemy wall to move up on because like you can see there, we want to try and move something like this because quite often you can turn offensive sieges to your advantage if there's space to get up on that enemy wall. So we're currently cycle charging with our Reichsguard here. Karl Franz is at 50% health. So far, we currently outnumber the enemy defenders by about 300, so the tick rate is on our side. However, our infantry is taking a serious battering. Like I said, Helmgart is quite a hard settlement to take, so we do have to be a little bit cautious as we move on in. It can be a tough one. But thankfully, we can destroy the enemy succession. Se I can't even say that word. I don't know why. <laughs> Secessionists. Separatists. I think that's an easier word for me to say. Um, early on, before they sort of gain more strength and renown throughout the empire. Artillery is here helping out. Would like, cons would like considerably more. Let's try and get more of these guys up. But so far, we're doing well. I've got my. Gunners further at the back. It's probably not a bad idea to actually bring them up. Because they could cause some significant damage. If they can get a clear shot now. Nice. So it looks like we've neutralized their cavalry. And we're still causing carnage. 
Our mortars are still raining shots. They're starting to retreat slightly. And look at this, this is brilliant. Our arch is there. Uh, peppering the enemy with pretty much no threat. Artillery supremacy over the top. And now it's swung to a good 600 men we outnumber them by. Now they do have enemy towers within sight, so we are going to be taking various attrition. I just want to try and focus on the units themselves, because although the mortars can probably reach, some of those archers aren't going to be able to hit those enemy towers that are really just ripping us to shreds. Obviously in Warhammer 3, we have the building mechanic now, which adds another further dynamic to sieges. And I can't wait to see some of the new siege maps as well. Them being a, a lot larger, particularly in some uh, old region capitals as well. But so far, it's swung to about 90%. There's only a couple more units holding out. And that's it. They have capitulated. Nice. Let's uh, end the battle there. A close one, like the AO predicted. So, we lost about 700. I wish I could see Carl Franz's casualty sustained and inflicted. So, although our infantry did get intercepted, we came out with a really nice win. Nearly 200 apiece with some of those skirmishes. The Reichstar Guard did incredibly well In the name of to add to that. Alright, let's loot and occupy Helmgard, and that should be the last of the Empire Secessionists. Nice. A quest oh, what's this? Issued, mighty lord. A great adventure beckons. Be wary, though. For while the potential rewards are great, so too are the perils. Okay, we have an opportunity to get the Reichland Runefang, where we'll have to teleport north to fight some uh, Norsken raiders that are going to land off the coast here. Um, I think that's something we want to do. Oh, this is annoying. Money is power. So we'll be able to get one Imperial Authority. Oh, we're just a little bit shy, which is incredibly unfortunate. Damn it. Well, there might be a beastman threat, um, depending. It does seem like Kazrak the One-Eyes there. So what's going on here in Marienburg? I think we want to make a, probably a play for them, because technically they're not a part of the elect accounts. They're sort of their own and independent principality. So I think what we'll do, before we make plans and preparations, we'll do this quest up in the north to try and get the Runefang, our first battle against Norska. Now, I've got to make sure I do a lot of these quests. You can get a little bit overwhelmed with conquering territory and forget about them from time to time. But here we go. Let's get stuck into this quest battle. It's definitely going to be well worth it. And we get a speech. Hear me. The celestial wizards read the portents true. Norse raiders land on Nordland shores. We have marched many miles. But there is no distance so great that I would not gladly march it to face this, our ultimate foe. I have refused the honor of wielding the blade of our forebears thus far. I was not worthy. But should we survive this day, should we drive the ruinous tribes back across the sea, then, with your blessing, I will pick up the Reichland Runefang and use it to bleed our foes, to carve my way through Sigmar's enemies. Are you with me, men of the Empire? For when the Northmen come, they will attack hard, as their despicable gods demand. We must be ready to push them back, thrust them into the sea, in defense of the Empire! Okay, now I can't really remember this battle. It's been a while. 
from what I can remember, it's just like various Norskin waves. So, they've landed in Nordland, and we've essentially got to defend it. So, we've made a nice compact formation, trying to use the terrain the best of our ability. And we've obviously got artillery supremacy against these savage Norskins. We'll try and soften them up before they clash upon our front line. Now, we'd have to be a little bit careful because they will have cavalry and flanking supremacy. Our archers and skirmishers are going to get some shots off. We'll try and invert. Our infantry to bring in the classic Simsy Fold, which will protect us slightly. And we'll just try and soften them up as best we can. We want them to charge at us. Just trying to rotate here with my cavalry, trying to match theirs. It's probably not a bad idea to try and lock down those marauders. Nice charge here to pin them down. They did manage to get a little bit of their skirmisher fire off. And it's probably not a bad idea to move Karl Franz on the left-hand side as well. To try and go after and fight in combat with their enemy general. Our great swords are engaging. Now, our Empire swordsmen are going to struggle a little bit. Going toe to toe exactly with the brave men of Norska. However, what we have in abundance that the barbarian scum have, they don't have, um, is artillery and skirmishes, which is going to really try and carry the day. If we can try and burn them up, crisp them, and get those armor piercing shots off, the better. We seem to be maintaining our line well as the Reichsguard come charging on in. Nice. Carl Franz currently dealing with the enemy warlord. But four or five units of the Norskin infantry have capitulated. Let's give chase and throw them back into the sea from whence they came. Oh, it's a little bit close there. That artillery fire was clipping a couple of my own infantry. Hold on, fellas. Alright, let's rotate some of you around here. And let's try and flank. Some of them have recovered and have come back. Let's just try and get a, a close shot here. Nice! Wasn't the most high-octane charge, but... As we saw the Norskins flee and fly on back... It had enough sort of venom about it, I suppose. Alright, let's uh, give chase with the infantry this time and allow Carl Franz and our cavalry to just try and mop up as many of them as we can. Carl Franz, the man, the myth, the legend, the emperor himself getting stuck into the thick of it, which is what we like to see. Level 7 now. Alright, we've pushed them to the beaches. Oh, here we go. Yet more of the enemy emerged from their ship. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, I might have stuffed up here. Hang on. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. They deployed in the forest. They must have snuck around from a cove or something. Alright, let's move everyone back. Oh, damn it. I gave my infantry the command there. Hang on. I do tell you. It's been a while since I've played this battle. I can't remember it at all. Alright, let's form this. I thought they'd at least be deploying in front of us. Alright, has slightly complicated things. Uh, some of the enemy that we were giving chase to have recovered. I suppose with newfound news of their allied Norskin compatriots coming on in. Quickly now, come on. So need to move our infantry up. Now, some of our skirmishers are going to be able to release their shots. Nice. Couple decent volleys there by the archers. 
against the Norsk and Great Swords. Oh, no, no, no. What the hell? They're, like, retreating into the mortars. Oh, you have got to be kidding me. And they've recovered as well. Well, Carl Franz has to quickly recover and try and help out those mortars. Ah, oh, shit. Because they were retreating, I didn't really think they were a threat. All right. Wasn't too damage intensive or costly, thankfully. But we'll speed things up slightly. They are recovering incredibly well. So we need to continue to defend ourselves against the enemy. But we weren't the most sort of favoured to win this one, so... We'll see how we go. Still got plenty of crossbows, still got plenty of archers. That's where our strengths lie in this early army build. Yet, the swordsmen with their shields, okay. Against Norskin and essentially human factions, which we've only really faced. But if we ever come to blow with a potential Warhammer 2 faction, things might become slightly more complicated. But we're doing okay for now. Still trying to skirmish the axe infantry there. Now they are broken. And luckily we've swung around and we've got a solid position. Alright, more reinforcements are trickling on in. Could move my handgunners into a better quality position. Maybe joining the front line to help out. And everyone else still has a lot of health. Oh, oh no. And now another wave has come on in. Okay. Um, we have to might... We might have to make a real defensive formation. Hang on. I'm going to divide half of the infantry and try and make a triangle or something. I would love to make a noob box if we could. But I just don't know if we've got enough infantry. Hang on. We just need to rotate... the infantry to protect us from all sides and we also need to make sure the uh, missile units don't get flanked all right well this wave seems a lot more potent uh, they brought in a spell caster that's gonna complicate things so this is probably the third and final wave probably the toughest potentially all right come on guys reform the line you got to give it to Norska. <laughs> they are really adopting this sort of cool guerrilla warfare style of tactic. Carl Franz is at about 40 slash 30 percent ish health, so it's something I have to keep an eye on. As well, what's what's done a lot of damage to us is they brought in a lot of lords, oh, and they are really bombarding us here with our archers. They're really softening us up. Everyone's just a bit fatigued and exhausted because we're essentially fighting three armies now. All right, let's try and stop their wizard, who's causing us a lot of damage. We'll just try and pin him in place with our cavalry, and then we'll allow the skirmishers and everyone else to work on out. All right, we need to get our gunners in here. Okay, try and cycle charge. On the infantry that are getting held. Now we'll get all my crossbowmen to focus all their fire on the wizard. Because uh, they're really focusing me. Oh, Carl Franz. Shit, shit, shit. We've also got to move him out because we can't really afford for him to be defeated. I wonder if we lose the battle if we lose him, potentially. Because it is a quest battle, so it's slightly different. We need to get our gunners in action. Alright, so the balance of power has swung a lot more in the Norskins' favour. Just got to watch out for that power shift. Yeah, we need to keep Carl Franz alive to get those leadership and various bonuses in his Aurora. So, come on, let's uh, get some shots off here. Let's advance Carl Franz. And we've got some swordsmen there just sitting idly by. All right, come on. Need to get your shots off here. It's going to be a close one. This might end up being a Pyrrhic victory in the end. And unfortunately, once again, our mortars have been attacked. Maybe just slightly move you out. We'll get the gunners to focus on. Alright, 
their uh, lord. Oh, nice. And we're really putting the pump on him. Oh, God. My infantry is absolutely shot to shit. Right, hang on. Oh, there we go. Alright, let's uh, move you here. He's recovered. Oh, nice. That was a really nice volley. And now the entirety of the Norsecan force is in a full retreat. Brilliant. Hey. Oh, I ended up being a Pyrrhic victory in the end. My god. That was a tough one. You can't really sleep on quest battles. They outnumbered us slightly. Reichsguard. Well over 300 kills. The Great saw it's uh, carrying once again. Would have liked to see the skirmishes get slightly more. But they did alright. Particularly against three armies. Just the amount of agents and lords is what really... um. Cost us a bit. It is a bit tricky. Usually if there's more than like three lords when you're fighting with one army, um, that's what really makes it difficult. Not necessarily the uh, numerical supremacy of their infantry and stuff. It's like, early on, Carl Franz only has a certain amount of health points and damage output. Speaking of Carl, uh, we probably want to try and upgrade our missile strength. Where we can, and we've also unlocked uh, a couple of magical items from the global pool. So we should be able to get Dragon Tooth in, and Beast or Beast Slayer if we want. I think we'll go with Beast Slayer. Oh, here we go, Beastman attack an Elector state. So this is one of the dilemmas I was talking about. So. That costs 2,000 gold. So we can send a military, or we can hire mercenaries. We want prestige, because we can eventually spend that to confederate with another elect account. So we will be sending the 2,000. And it seems like Belthazar Argelt's forces, under the command of this captain here. I think the Golden Order should be alright in a defensive siege against Beastmen. So we can auto-resolve that, and we also can pardon the captives, which will allow us to get a thousand back. Because we don't need the experience with, with those units, we're not going to be able to use them at all. Okay, so I think... Volley fire, reload reduction. That's probably not a bad idea. Okay, so... We've got a beastman horde just north of Ilhart, and we have the opportunity to, once and for all, put Kazrak the One-Eye in the fucking ground. So, let's do it. Let's take his other eye. And, uh, I suppose we'll send his head to Toddy. Now, they have a lot of... flanking units here. Like, we're going to struggle against these chariots and such. We're actually not favoured to win this one. So just looking at the topography of this battle map, I think we're better off pushing further down the ravine here because there's a river crossing that we can hold, which will slightly deter them. So we'll try and move everyone around. Now, unfortunately, their zone of control, especially on that right-hand side, is probably going to beat us to that river crossing. So we'll try and get there as quick as we can. We'll absolutely double time it. Yeah, so it's like a... Okay, so most of it's dried up, but it's like a small river here. If we can sort of hold that, there even seems to be a little bit of high ground. We should be able to nullify and slow down any beastman fast-moving chariot or... Essentially... A uh, Warhound unit. Alright, we'll try and move our Reichsguard to try and... Chitin. Just protect everyone moving around. We are double timing. Now, the slowest moving piece is the artillery, so... 
Got to be a little bit careful here. Hopefully, Carl Franz and the Reichsguard should be able to stop everyone here. But the Beastmen have a lot of speed about them. Alright, so let's get stuck in. The Reichsguard are going to engage. Their hounds. And Carl Franz is going to deal with the chariots as well. Everyone's still double timing. We'll get them to an enable guard mode. And I also want to turn off skirmisher mode because once we're over that river, I don't want them to be moving. Nice. We've crushed the hounds, but now we're actually fighting their war herd. So we do have to be a little bit careful. They've got an ungore axe infantry here. Nice little charge. Go back to the spearmen. Yeah, just look how quick and lightning fast they are. They've got some really nice speed about them, the beastmen. And early on, you do have to be a little bit careful going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the beastmen faction. They are actually quite strong. We seem to be already skirmishing them over this river. So this will just try and slow them down. If we can get them bogged down in the uh, river, the brilliant... Look at that. The better. Look at that. Perfect. They only just made it over the river. Now they have to go back. And now they're being capitulated. Perfect. We'll form up in a defensive position. And we'll use our skirmisher supremacy to whittle them down. Because essentially, flanking them trying to flank us really, really hard and activating our skirmish mode would probably be the downfall of us in this battle. Because they do have speed and agility. But here is Kazrak. And his war herd pushing on over. And already, as you can see, they just get slowed down trying to push through that river. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get the mortar over the river. So, that kind of sucks. That's a pretty huge loss. It's really going to delay any massive sieges we've got coming up. Especially with I've got plans to try and go after Marienburg. But now the war herd has finally caught up to us. We're also just trying to delay them from even crossing the river. We'll give us more skirmishes, give our skirmishes more time to whittle them down. Now they do have some Minotaurs here as they're trying to charge on in. And they've got Kazwak himself. Now, Carl Franz is at half, half health, so we do have to be a little bit careful with him. We'll allow our Reichsguard to go after their skirmishes. But here come the Beastmen. An old ancient enemy. The Empire battling it up, battling it out against the Beasts once again. I do want to try and get Kazrak's trait pretty early on. We've only just stabilized Reichland. We've thrown back Norsken Raiders. And now, as soon as we've come back after briefly leaving our ho home, Kazrak has reared his ugly head again. But hopefully for the last time. Most of their forces are now in a retreat. And although we lost the mortar, we saved many Imperial lives. We did lose 100 after that battle. But we did manage to crush, crush Kazrak and the majority of his war herd. Which is fantastic. Close victory even then after that. So we didn't lose the mortars after that. Oh, nice. They were crushed and made to flee. But they didn't take... As many of them out. Alright, let's try and run down them. And, oh, nice. We've managed to gain access to a bunch of regiments of renowned. All right. So, we'll give chase and run down the last of them as well, gaining another amount of valuable experience and Kazrak's faction has now been destroyed. Perfect. Carl's gone up in skills slightly. So we're still a little bit away from Death Claw. He has an Imperial Pegasus now. We've also got Beast Scourge now, which gives us a 20% ambush defense chance. Thanks to Kazrak. I've managed to get some Death Jacks, which are a regiment of renowned archer unit. They do have magical missile ability. And I also 
manage to pick up a regiment of renowned swordsmen. And we'll try and get a total of 20 units as well. Nice. Oh, and we've got a, another mission unlocked against the Greenskins. Unfortunately, the Chaos Lord Festus has gained some prominence in our Elector Count territory. Alright, so we're going to be doing the quest here. We're going to be playing the famed battle of Blackfire Pass. It's a really enjoyable quest battle. I really can't wait to uh, tear up and boil some green skins, I suppose. Then later on, we're going to make plans and preparations to forcibly bring in Marienburg into the Empire. So, let's get things underway. We're going to be marching south. Let's uh, get stuck into the dreaded Greenskins. Now is the time, men of the Empire, to unite for the Orcs gather. Beyond the pass, a war boss draws to him all that is foul. An Orc horde beyond imagining. As Sigma fought, so shall we. We will become part of the legend. We will wipe the orcs from our door. And only when this is done, when our nation has healed, shall I take up Galmaraz for Sigma, for the Empire, for the Warhammer. For Sigma, for the Empire, for the Warhammer. So, this battle can be a little bit tricky once their giants and spiders come on in. So what we want to try and do is close the distance as quick as possible because they do have a decent amount of high ground. So we just absolutely want to fucking send it up that hill as quick as we can. So this is double time. Now, the dwarves, our old and ancient ally, have made the decision to come in on and help, which is going to be massive as they're bringing their famed gyrocopters to try and help us out so we do have to be a little bit careful tackling quest battles this early on in the campaign haven't got the perfect and most optimal army build but we'll try and make do bunch of swordsmen still got some great swords we've also got some death jacks which are our recently recruited regiment of renowned we've also got a bunch of experienced crossbowmen now just have to keep our gunners a little bit safe now the Goblin Wolf Riders, uh, they're going to cause us a problem here. Alright, archers and crossbows, quickly draw your short swords to stop them. And we'll get Carl Franz, who's now on a Pegasus, to engage their lord. But things are going to be tough here against these bloody greenskins as they have the high ground. But Carl Franz is targeting their legendary lord. The goblins are in the retreat. As always, the gobos are cowards, but here come the dwarfs. It's going to be a little bit of time before the Stunties are going to get their way up here. Just because their legs are a little bit short. Anyway, let's make sure these attack orders are working well. Nice. Some of the infantry in the center has advanced, and the secondary wave has kicked off. So let's just continue to push upon our good initiative. Nice. Those archers have actually prevented our artillery from capitulating. The longer we can have them actively raining fire and death upon the enemy, the better. Let's uh, continue to advance. Alright, now their giant is now here, so we've really got to target and isolate him. They've yet to bring in their spider. Nice. The dwarf gyrocopter is dropping some heavy bombs. Our crossbows are starting to light up the giant. But thanks to dwarven mechanical engineering, we should be able to bring it down quicker. Nice. And they're starting to burn him and crisp him with some nice hot steam. Come on. 
Men of the Empire. And then of the Dwarvish Kingdoms. Bring this guy down. Bring him down. Okay. So, we're just going to try and take the apex of this hill. So we can nullify the Greenskin's high ground advantage. Okay. And we're maintaining and we're holding well. Okay, the Dwarfs and their reinforcements have finally arrived. Nice. More Greenskins have come. But unfortunately, some of our Swordsmen are retreating. But thankfully, the Giant is one of the major problems we had to face. Oh, God. Try and bring it down. Come on. Although it's retreating, the last thing we want is for it to come back in. But we might have to draw our attention away from the retreating giant and try and focus on their spider now which is going to be more of a concern but so far if you haven't gone and seen episode one highly recommend you do after this just a quick recap we managed to take all of reichland under our direct control crushing the empire separatists Secessionists. Oh, Carl Franz is retreating. Oh, he's just been in combat just that little bit longer. Shit. We also managed to go on a little bit of an adventure north, crushing the Norskins that were threatening Nordland. And we also managed to, well, mount Kazrak the One Eye's head on a spike. I'm sure we sent it to Toddy. And I'm sure he's happy about that. <laughs> Boris Dobbringer. Okay, so... Balance of Power swinging back in our favour. Although my infantry is incredibly exhausted and depleted, thankfully we've bought enough time for our allied Dwarven companions to hold. Because they obviously have fantastic infantry. Some of the best in the game. Incredibly well armoured. We finally brought down that giant... And although our infantry has been crushed, in combined help with the dwarves, they're going to take up our uh, lacking in infantry. But our crossbows have an abundance of ammunition, thankfully due to our tech. But things are looking good for the Empire. We're slowly but surely conquering territory where we can, stopping foreign invaders like the Beastmen. And we're actively going after quests as well, because because there's so many of them, you can uh, forget about them. Like, sometimes I get so zoned in and honed in on conquering territory and painting the map red that you forget there's all these there's really valuable quests that you can do, but they can be a little bit tricky. So, yeah, just looking at this... Our infantry is uh, definitely a lot to be desired. So we want to try and get great swords in. That's my ideal infantry that I like to use for the Empire. Get about five of those bad boys in. But thankfully, our skirmish of supremacy was able to carry today. We ended getting a Pyrrhic victory against the outnumbered Greenskins. Alrighty, so unfortunately we did lose a great sword there. And our mortar. Oh shit. And our regiment of renowned as well. We'll take the experience. As Carl Franz is rocketing up in stats now. We're currently minus one Imperial Authority. However, we have made up for getting five thousand gold and Galmaraz. It's gonna be ten turns before we can get those guys back. I guess we'll bring in these pistoliers. And it's only four turns away before we can get more great swords in as well. We can get early halberds, but we're going to have to repair and lick our wounds from the Battle of Blackfire Pass, which was costly. Okay, so I've made plans and preparations to strike Marienburg. Now, thankfully, they're a little bit under threat. Now, as you can see, we've got no influence over them, so, because they're technically not a part of the Empire, they're sort of their own thing. Um, we want to try and bring the province of the Wasteland under our control. Now, they are currently in an active war against 
this green skin tribe here, and we might try and negotiate with them. And then I guess we have to go after Festus, uh, the Leech Lord, soon, who unfortunately is doing an absolute number on Telebeckland, I believe. Yeah, just a little bit in the north. So there are a lot of threats against the elect accounts, and we do get a lot of negative penalties if they do um, get crushed. So the Skull Smashers, you're currently in an active war against Marienburg. I would love to join your war, instead of just straight up war decking them. Because if we're already going to go to war with them, this is a really nice trick to always get a little bit of money. Because what? 300 gold isn't overly too crazy, but the more the merrier. Alright, so let's march against Marienburg. And they do seem to have a piece of territory really far north. Okay, so a lot of halberds and great swords here. Let's build a ram and a siege tower. So we'll send up Carl Franz, and we might as well bring our secondary army as well. We're still a little bit fatigued and exhausted from that siege against the green skin. So if I move you up in a force march, does that train does that change things a bit? Still two minutes on that reinforcements, which we can reduce no peace, um, eventually. But we'll start off the siege. We'll see if Marienburg and its garrison march out against us. Or you never know, they might have an army lurking around in the fog of war that we can't see. But thankfully we're gonna be able to divide and conquer Marienburg. That would suck. Skull smashes, green skins and gobos at the gates. And now you've got the the right hand of the Empire. <laughs> right arm of the free world coming on in with Gal Moraz and Carl Franz. Oh, elect accounts go to war. Uh, okay, so we can actually stop the war. So this is why you need that 1,000 prestige. I would highly recommend if you are playing as the Empire on Warhammer 3 slash 2. Always try and save up around about 1,000... Prestige to combat those RNG events, and also about 2,000 gold uh, at a minimum, because they can really become a handful if um, un <laughs> you just get unfortunate events, essentially. All right, well, let's fight this one here today and have the Siege of Marienburg. All right, welcome to the battle map. Let's go. Marienburg, a huge, important maritime city, especially for its trade off the coast. It would be a vital piece of territory for Carl Franz to set up operations if we are to trade into Ulth One and beyond. So taking Marienburg early on is definitely a must. But I don't think we can technically, even if we wanted to, confederate with Marienburg, so a war with them was more than likely inevitable. So let's march on up. Our units are slightly depleted. So they're not fully, well, at full strength as it were. Our skirmishers, particularly our crossbows, are going to try and carry the day. Now unfortunately Marienburg's towers on the outskirts are equipped with cannons. So our already battered and bruised and decimated infantry are going to have a harder time. But they just need to, quick as they can, get close, nice and flush to that castle wall. And they'll stop taking mass casualties. So, unfortunately for us, we're going to have to go with an offensive siege, which will cost more Empire lives. There was uh, no chance for them to sort of sally out against us. And there was no reinforcing army to initiate a field battle, which I would have preferred. But so be it. Let's take this city. The ladders have arrived. And fierce fighting is about to break out on the Marienburg Wall. Now, it's about 60% in our favor. We've taken a little bit of casualties on our encroachment, but we just need to get these attack orders going. Carl Franz is on a Pegasus, which isn't too bad. Better than the horse. Nowhere near as good as Deathclaw. Once we get that mount, things are really going to change on the field. But we've phased out most of our archers to now an improved crossbow unit, giving most of our spare units to our secondary army. 
We eventually want to try and bring in more mortars and cannons and hellstorm rocket batteries that we can. We might even as well um, get some more Reichsguard and Griffin Knights. Demi Griffin Knights. Where we can, but I want to try and prioritize great swords out of all the potential units we can recruit. Alright. Waiting for these reinforcements to come on in. But I'm curious to see how our infantry performs. I could have waited for them to get back up to full strength, but I didn't want to waste this opportunity of Marienburg being under the pump, as it were, by the Greenskins. Alright, the battering ram has broken down the Marienburg gate, and we're allowed to go on in now. So let's make sure that every single one of my infantry units has got attack orders going. Not really too much we can do with our pistoliers and hand gunners. We might be able to open up an angle. Just need to wait for our archers to come on in. Now, we didn't disband the abundance of archers we had earlier um, in the Carl Franz build. We just moved it and shuffled it to our secondary army. But so far, I definitely think we need these reinforcements. Getting those three fresh swordsmen could very much change the tide in this battle because Marienburg is a little bit of a tough settlement to take <laughs> particularly if you don't come at full strength but we're somehow making it work they're trading some fire back our archers are doing well but Unfortunately, we have two swordsman units just absolutely crushed, fatigued, and exhausted. And they've ultimately capitulated because of it. Okay. Let's make sure these archers move up slightly. And... I suppose we're going to have to trespass through this Skull Smasher territory and then ultimately betray them. So let's move the archers here. Nice. I think that would be a really nice and optimal angle. Look at that. Like, if we can arc our shots up and over the top and fire down at them there, we might be able to hit them from the side and rear, which would be perfect. Alright, just focusing on their infantry, as they're very, very close to capitulating. But, obviously in Warhammer 3, they can construct arrow towers, as you can see, so we might look to target that, but... They are actually slightly out of our reach. They're nice enough back to be an ultra-annoyance for us, being the aggressors. But, obviously in Total War, it is very hard to keep offensive sieges and casualties to a minimal. You always tend to lose more in an offensive siege rather than a defensive. That's just the rule of thumb. And we've melted away most of the Marienburg infantry that's holding. But you've got to give it to the garrison. They are fighting to the absolute bitter end. Tooth and nail. For their independence. Our handgunners are here. They might be able to get some rifle shots off. Alright, let's uh, speed things up. Man, even the Emperor himself is absolutely pushing himself to the limit. He is exhausted, just to say the least. Our archers have now arrived. And they're really getting their shots off there. Perfect, this is what I want. And they should be able to crush the last of the Marienburg Cavalry. There is literally only a handful of units holding and maintaining their position. Alright. Come on. Nearly now. So once we've got Marienburg under our control, we are going to cut off their recruitment capacity. And hell, most of their trade. So, 
They might have a full stack in the north that we can't see in the fog of war. But it's going to be very, very tough for them to mount a defense. Oh. Our secondary lord here might get caught, so we're going to have to move him out. Unfortunately, he is not immortal like Carl Franz, so we have to be careful. But so far, we're in a really good position for this Empire series. We're slowly but surely growing. We're gaining influence and Imperium over the various elect accounts. And things are looking upwards. Everything's uh, looking very Carl Franz up in here. <laughs> All right, let's uh, end that battle there. The Pyrrhic victory. We don't need to run them down. Nice. My God, <laughs> we lost significant casualties, even though we massively outnumbered them, like three to one. Crikey. Not too shabby, if I do say so myself. Ugh. Did lose a lot of infantry, though. But we've taken Marienburg. Probably the, the hardest settlement to take in our close proximity. Sometimes Helmgart, uh, the fortress, can be tough to take. But, look, I'm happy that we picked up the big W in the end. But we've got plenty of reinforcements that we can recruit from in our pool. Okay, I think we want to try and get the Red Moon in. So we can uh, get the Captain, the Waywalker, and the Witch Hunter as well. Altdorf has expanded to a tier 3 settlement, so therefore we can get some more valuable upgrades. I've been trying to rush those great swords as best as we can. We also need to upgrade the blacksmith at the same time. I also would like a gunsmith so we can recruit mortars as quick as we can. If we can get like 2-3 per army build, that would really change the tide as we come against harder factions now. We can counter more. Okay, so they have actually taken the fort to the south, which is interesting. So before we go north towards securing more settlements within the province of the Wastelands, we're probably going to deal with this fort here. And we'll quickly just auto-resolve it. As I imagine it's the same uh, blueprint as Helmgart. And I'm not going to play every single battle of this series. Only battles that I'm interested in, or otherwise I'll be here for a year playing this campaign and we won't get to any other. <laughs> so if it's a decisive victory, or it's just something I'm not... Look, I'm going to be honest. If I'm not interested in playing it, I'm not going to fucking play it. I'm going to play what battles I want. We'll replenish and repair where we can, and particularly if there's like a cool story for the battle, I'm definitely going to play it. Alright, so, what can we look to upgrade further? We've still got that little bit of cash now, but we do got this extra slot. Um, the gunsmith has been constructed. Yeah, it's going to be a while before we can get wizards in, which is interesting. It does sort of hamstring in that capacity. Should we get some stables? Look, why not? Let's treat ourselves to some Reichsguard and Demogriffs. I like them. Okay, so roads to renowned. We can pay a thousand prestige and get one authority. We're definitely going to do that because we want the growth and public order bonuses. Nice. We can install an elect account in the province of the wasteland. And we've only got one candidate, so we uh, might as well. All right. So it's, it's growth, not public order. But the more authority you have, you can press your influence on the various elect accounts and we eventually want to bring them on in. Alright, well let's uh, march no north to finally put the final nail into Marienburg. However uh, we might be actually better off to attack the Greenskins here because they had a full stack here the Skull Smashers. They've only got one piece of territory so we might as well betray them, although we've got good relations after we war decked Marienburg. I'm going to negotiate to Leon Leon Cure of Bretonnia. And we're going to join against their war, which will give us some better relations with them. Yeah, I don't know. It just depends what sort of happens. If we get swarmed with against various factions, uh, we might not be able to go to war with Bretonnia. But in the same boat... Um, we might need to go to war with them 
if there's no other factions for us to attack. And since their territory is so easily conquerable and it's so juicy. However, there's no harm in trying to keep amicable, amicable relations with the majority of factions. And then we'll just like surprise attack them. So thankfully we are going to be able to take this territory with ease as the Greenskins are mobilizing in the north to put the final nail into the Marienburg coffin. And we've really just divided and conquered these two factions, which is brilliant. We've played them off against each other. And now we've got a settlement to defend from, if we want. And they have lost their only settlement. So they're going to have to try and charge us, suicide down against us if they are. Or they're going to have to try and take Marienburg out. Because they're not going to be at, not going to be bad to get replenishment. Oh, they attacked me during the intern phase. Nice, mostly goblins. Um, yeah, no need to play this one. I guess they sent one army south to try and retake their settlement, while the other one went north. So a nice, clear victory against the skull smashers. Uh, nothing too overly complicated. Let's take the experience. Okay, we have a, another quest battle that we can do. The Silver Seal against the Vampire Counts. We get 5,000 there. Oh, here we go. I guess we rally support. We don't want that war to kick off. We've got a potential of mass migration uh, into Reichland and the Empire. We haven't overly expanded too much, so we can hold on the control. Alright, so... With the Greenskins getting battered back, let's allow the Empire for once and for all put the final nail in the Marienburg coffin. Close victory of Karl Franz is to attack. He's now got his new mount Deathclaw as he's rank 17. And now it's turned the battle into a decisive victory, bringing Marienburg and the Wasteland into the control of the Empire. Nice. We've managed to take control of the majority of two provinces slowly but surely expanding Emperor Karl Franz and ultimately um, Altdorf's influence and now we directly control one of the electoral seats but a lot of these guys we want to try and bring on over and eventually confederate with but with Festus and the vampire counts with Vlad von Karstein um, we want to try and bring them under control. However, there's a lot of territory uh, taken by the Greenskins here. There's also that little Wood Elf enclave that we might look to snap. But Festus is doing really quite well here in the north. Okay, so this is how sort of the world of Warhammer is shaping up. As you can see, here are the provinces that we've taken. Looks like the Dwarves are battling it out with the Barrow Legion. Bretonia is still holding for now. Look at that. So many provinces for us to take. It's probably not a bad idea to improve the Altdorf port. They're not as good as they used to be ports, but they're still a valuable source of income. Alrighty, here's uh, Karl Franz, by the way. We've got some magical items that we can equip. And we probably can salvage some of the rest as well. As the Emperor is... Level 19. Our army upkeep isn't insane. But I do quite like the 3D model that they've added of him. So, let's sort of have a look. Okay, so... The Black Pit Tribe here. They've taken a lot of the lands of... Uh, Middenland. And Festus as well. Yeah, we want to try and avoid these elect accounts falling. We could go potentially with the Barrow Legion. I think we continue on our green skin purge going over to the the Misty Mount Hills. Misty Mountains. Lol. On the mind. <laughs> what do you guys reckon of that new Lord of the Rings show? Which one's going to be better? House of the Dragon or the Game of Thrones TV series? Let me know in the comments. I would say House of the Dragon's probably going to be better. But I'd be curious to know. Alright, so, we do have to keep an eye on the Barrow Legion, but we're going to have to try and take the province of the Misty Hills. We're going to march, so they've got the Black Pit as well, and they've 
destroyed some territory yes. there. So let's get Carl Franz to besiege the Black Pit. Close victory. Mostly orcs in there. No legendary lord, of course. Let's build some siege equipment. Even though this army is probably more than capable to actually just straight up take the settlement if we want. Hmm. Do we bother building that siege equipment? Are we better off just to auto resolve it and take it? Let's, let's just continue to siege for now. We might play this at the start of the next. Anyway, in the north, we should be able to take uh, Wrecker's Point. And it's interesting to see that... Yeah. Boris and the various select accounts have really given up a lot of territory here. So we're going to be able to push on over and liberate it. But now we are in striking range and really quite close proximity of Norska. Carl Franz has been sent to do so. So, if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video a like and subscribe if you're new. I'd really much appreciate it. We've managed to knock out Marienburg in the last episode, having the siege of it. But let's get stuck into today's siege. Alrighty, first siege against the Orcs. Uh, in the last episode as well, we had the Battle for Blackfire Pass. If you really do like that quest battle, I do recommend watching that episode. So, Looking at our army build, we're slowly but surely evolving it. We've switched out our archers to crossbowmen, which are better, um, in my opinion. However, the archers are more cost-effective early on. Our swordsmen don't have the higher chevrons just because they've had such a battering uh, in this series. So we want to try and phase them out eventually with some great swords. We do have one great sword, which is a re regiment of renowned unit, and one halberd as well. Uh, Carl Franz is currently mounted on his loyal, well, mount, Deathclaw, and let's uh, get stuck into the greenskins here today as we slowly but surely try and liberate the lost territory in this elect account uh, region. So, unfortunately, Toddy, Midland, and Telebeckland have lost heaps of territory due to Festus and this Greenskin incursion. So, I've made the decision in this series not to straight up war deck the other Elect Account factions. I don't think that's the play. We don't want them to gang up against me. We would rather play the waiting game and slowly but surely confederate them and bring them in to the Empire through diplomacy rather than military action. But thankfully, there's a lot of enemies to go around, so we're not just sort of waiting or wasting time. So let me know in the comments where you'd like me to expand and conquer for this series. Feedback and suggestions, tips and tricks as well. Going to be uploading this daily Empire series uh, as long as we can and support it and I'll do more. That will ensure more episodes of this uh, particular campaign. We're just leaving fantastic comments which you guys have left a bunch so thank you so much. You guys have been awesome. I genuinely wouldn't be where I am as a YouTuber after years of doing this without your support. So, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I really appreciate it, boys. Ah, you're making me teary-eyed. Right, let's uh, get stuck into the green skin. So, we should be able to get rid of that war boss quite quickly. Oh, nice. Dude, it makes such a huge fucking difference having Carl Franz on Deathclaw. Nice. And I guess he's going to get a nice sort of snack there. Get a little piggy. There's some mushrooms there growing. <laughs> Which is, uh, fucking hilarious. What type of mushroom is this? I don't know. You've got a, you've got a two in three shot. <laughs> you can either eat it, you either get high, or it fucking kills you. <laughs> so, you're either gonna have fun two times out of three. Alright, let's, uh, slowly but surely push back. The green skins. Yeah, but I imagine those mushrooms will be off the charts. Because the, don't the goblins plant it? And they go crazy and they're like magically infused and shit. There's some lore that I don't know. <laughs> Clearly. Anyway. So. They've managed to gain a pretty decent amount of territory here. Toddy won't be too happy. Maybe he's a bit pissed off since we killed Kazrak earlier on in the series. Now, the gate has now fallen. 
and we should be able to get on into the settlement itself. But so far we're doing quite well. We're stabilizing the regions in and around Reichland. We've got really good relations with the Dwarfs and Bretonia. And we're completing quests as well at a decent rate. So let's now move our skirmishes up now that we've pushed the enemy infantry pretty far away. But this siege is looking a lot better than our siege for Marienburg, which just took we took a lot of casualties in this. But we do have to be a little bit careful with these trolls and orc uh, biggins as well, because they can really pack a punch. But now Carl Franz is more than capable to take basically anything in combat. He's, al he's already a fantastic 1v1er in his own right. Incredibly, even on a low level. But now he is just rocketing up in skills and stats. Renowned and overall level. The balance of power has swung to about 80% in our favor. And we're going to be able to take our first piece of territory in the Misty Mountains. I keep on saying that. <laughs> it's the Misty Hills. <laughs> There's so many names like that. Reichland, Rhineland. Uh, what's the one I always usually get mixed up? I think I see River Run instead of Riverwood in Skyrim. <laughs> Riverwood, Ravenswood, White Run. It's all, it's all, <laughs> Rivendell. It's all, like, after sort of you get engrossed into fantasy, like, Game of Thrones, Song of the Bison Fire, Lord of the Rings, Warhammer. It all sort of just meshes together. <laughs> You're like, what's the name of this place? <laughs> I don't know. I can't be the only one that's like that. Because they're all just like, slightly off. Like, yeah, like the Misty Hills instead of the Misty Mountains. Come on, there's only a couple more of these pesky orcs left in here. 90% now in our favor. Our crossbows are having an absolute field day. Sitting on the walls, firing upon the goblins. Trying to flee. Yeah, like some of the wording is just uncanny. <laughs> Nice. Still taking a bit of a battering though. We might need to buff his armor and health stats and hit points essentially. We'll take the close victory. 500 Empire men loss in, a in an offensive siege, which isn't too bad. Nice. We didn't lose any of our units, which is awesome. Because obviously in Warhammer we have automatic replenishment. So we're going to be able to get those guys back. And we've taken... The region Greetings, capital as well. Man. And bringing the entirety of the Misty Hills under our control. Oh, so Wrecker's Point is a part of that. Okay. I didn't fully comprehend that. So, they still have some territory down in the south and uh, in Midland. So, let's try and move there. Alrighty. Let's make plans and preparations to move south. We're 23 turns into the Let's Play. And so far, we're taking decent ground. Now, thankfully for me, they have managed to deploy an army just on the outskirts. Can we reach it? Ah, oh, that's a shame. We're just so, so close to that. We could have then drawn out the garrison and taken this settlement. Now, we are currently a little bit under threat from the Norskans here, so I could do with nearly a third army. We've got three provinces. We probably deserve three armies. So who have we got here? Um, finally, we've got an Archelector, Archelector that has the disciplined trait, which is one of my favorites. So let's bring that in, because it just massively improves your armies. So I am a little bit threatened by the Norskins at Pack Ice Bay. Obviously in the quest line, we did crush a lot, and God knows what's north of the Chaos Wastes. I don't know exactly where everyone is on the map. I haven't actually seen the full map um, that it's all been released, so... But I'm assuming... Uh, Nightmares and fucking chaos. <laughs> North there, towards the lands of Norska. 
So we'll divide the army up. One is a regional defense unit, while the rest can head south to help Carl. Oh, here we go. Greenskins attack. So, we've got a couple of options here. We can spend the 2k. Uh, in these events, when stuff gets attacked, I would rather spend the money. Okay, so it's going to be a Pyrrhic victory. We'll take the order resolve, and we'll take the money as well. So, technically, it's only like 1.4k. 1 1,400 gold lost. And we've kept their reputation. Oh, their army moved away. Alright, let's take a Weissmund. A Weissmund? I don't know. I'm not German. Let's, uh... Loot and occupy, I suppose. I am Prince and, and I guess we push to Middenstag. Karoberg is under Toddy's control. Same with Middenheim. But we still haven't finished off the Orcs of the Black Pit yet. And we'll try and move those reinforcements rapidly down as quick as we can. Double time. Hey, the Black Pit tribe was destroyed. Nice. Don't know who took them out. Probably Boris and the boys. Potentially. Oh, we've got another tech slot to unlock. Okay, so, for whatever reason, we can seem to get a peace agreement with Norska. Which are like, isn't like, also Witcher as well. Like, isn't this like essentially Skellig? <laughs> the, Skelli the Skelligans and stuff. Oh, God. Alright, no other diplomacy. Oh, cool. So, we've managed to acquire a light wizard. Perfect. Um, kind of a meh magic. There's a lot better. But, hey. We didn't have to construct anything to recruit him. We got him for free. And Ostermark has been defeated. Oh, God. We've been a little bit unlucky, RNG-wise, with the Elector Council. A lot of them have just been, frankly, destroyed. Oh, well, we'll bring him into Carl Franz's army build, as we'll push into Middensag just to see what we can do. But Festus has made a really nice kingdom for himself here. So let's move to Middenstag. We'll move with the secondary army, because we want to try and colonize it. Oh, we actually can return it to the Elector. And that will give us a bonus. Well, let's do that. We're eventually going to incorporate all this territory into our control. So, losing 500 troops and paying 1,658. I actually don't think it's worth it. I'd actually nearly return it for free. Interesting. Yeah, I forgot you could do that. Well, let's make plans and preparations to go against uh, Festus and Hockland. And eventually go for the Brass Keep as well. Yeah, he's gone on an absolute fucking tirade there, taking Telebeckland. So, we must stop no. this chaos demon who invokes and spreads the word of his Lord Nurgle, I suppose. Alright, so he's actually at Telebheim. Minus two. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, because he's actually taken out two Elector Count Holdings, the Leech Lord, and Ostermark has been crushed. Yeah. Alrighty, we're, we're basically just trying to save our Elector Counts. <laughs> Not less trying to summon them. Half of them are dead. <laughs> right, let's uh, push into Hockland. And thankfully, there's only a small Norsken settlement uh, garrison there. So I guess we return it to them. Yeah, I guess we try and bring Hockland back and make them great again. Because we're still going to get the level up. We still get the bonus. And I guess we move the reinforcements north. And thankfully, he's kind of overextended slightly. I uh, really is the sword, but that's okay. Like, he actually crossed the river and has weakened himself because his base of operations was the Brass Keep. And now we've actually divided and conquered him. Oh. Unfortunately, the Dark Elves have claimed the Sword of Cain. Yeah, really still quite close to us. I think they've shrunk the distance slightly. Hmm, maybe an expansion into um, High Elf territory could be on the cards. In the future, a bunch of quests here. Well, there he is. I guess we have to sort of see how he acts.
Oh, we've been intercepted during the end turn phase by Festus himself. Peric victory. He wants to battle Carl Franz. We are massively ahead of him levels-wise. Um, sure. A nice, clear battlefield. If we pull further back, they are attacking us at the end of the day. It's probably about 60-40 in their favour. We can probably crush them a bit. Oh, there's even some protective ground here, so hang on. So, they can flank around here. Can we connect this to another side? Like, go something like this, and then grab everyone else. Oh, yeah, 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 there's like another piece of ground here. Hang on. We want to try and use the terrain as best we can. Oh, if we just had one more... Like... We can nearly stretch it. Oh, like, if we just had one more unit, it would be perfect. But that's actually not too bad. That will allow us... Not a crazy amount of time. To stop flanking maneuvers, it's better than nothing. And if we, oh dude, if we could perfectly have them flush over this hill and like kind of shoot down like a wall, that would be brilliant. So I think we move our gunners there, and then we'll chuck our uh, skirmishers in the rear line. Now, I reckon in a one v one duel, Carl Franz should be able to make quick work of Festus, but I don't know. Haven't fought him in War Hammer before. Missiles will fly. Uh, kind of go something like that. All right, and let's uh, move Carl Franz up. Now he should be able to sail past most of the chaotic critters, and we just need to hold the line. We're literally protecting farmland and some. Farm's barn, <laughs> which is hilarious. So they got a giant. Uh, got some Nurgle Chaos Spawn. But here we go, Carl Franz. About to 1v1. Festus. Nice. Just gonna chuck a debuff on Carl, but it's okay. We'll try and do the same for him. And the quicker we can get rid of. This legendary lord, the better. Go on, Carl. Bring him down. Cut him into chunk side, chunk size pieces for Deathclaw. Now, unfortunately, we don't have any artillery with us, so that's a little bit concerning. We're purely going to have to rely on missile supremacy. Now, thankfully, the terrain is really, really favourable for us, so it's not like a normal flat open battlefield. They will be delayed slightly from rotating and flanking around us, so hopefully that additional added time will allow our skirmishers to inflict plenty of damage. Now, some of their Chaos Warriors will fall rather than others, but it's a really interesting army build. Norskin and... Nurgle units left and right, but already look at this. Carl Franz has put on an absolute masterclass, bringing down Festus the Leech Lord, which is going to cause a huge morale debuff through the entirety of the army. Okay, let's reform our gunners slightly just to get the best out of them. Now we need to prioritize and focus on the giant. And there are various monsters and machinations coming on in. So we're holding for now. Need to get Carl Franz in. Our gunners don't have perfectly the line on side. It's some... Oh, okay, it's a there's a little bit of a high rising there, which sucked. But we still have a bunch of enemy units in retreat. Just need a hold for the Emperor to swing around and give some resistance. But I can understand why. Hocklin and Telebeckland fell so quickly. Pretty strong faction by the look of it, Festus. The amount of territory we was able to take from the various elect accounts. Because quite often, when you play as the Empire, even in like Warhammer 2, they seem to be relatively stable. Now with the addition of all these chaotic and other enemy like lore-wise factions. 
they do seem to be under the pump more. But this is sort of our first real test against a Chaos army. And I'm sure these men of the Empire, who have only been really fighting, are the humans. And the occasional beastmen here and there are having an absolute fucking shock. Men passing out, going possum left, right and centre. But Carl Franz now has a chance to bring down the Chaos Giant. And that should massively shift the tie in the battlefield. Oh, could you imagine getting crushed by a giant after it's been taken down? Oh, no. Got to watch out for those armored Chaos Trolls as well. And they seem to be blobbing up here on this left-hand side, which is interesting. Carl Franz now to the rescue. Thankfully, we fought this battle with him having Deathclaw. Deathclaw, because it, I imagine, would have been a... Uh, Really different story if you didn't have it. They're struggling as these nerd, uh, nerglings here. Nice. The gunners. And... Crossbows are doing quite well there. But we are going to claim a victory here today. Will it be a Pyrrhic? Potentially. Well, it's what the AI predicted. Sometimes they can be reasonably accurate. But victory. Alright, so we lost 400. It was a close victory in the end. Unfortunately, we did lose one unit of halberds. However, we have managed to destroy uh, Festus's full stack. And now he's only got two pieces of territory. <clears throat> Excuse me. And... He does have a couple of armies still in and around that we will need to intercept. Sounded real horsey then. Been recording a lot here today. My voice is starting to go, I suppose. <laughs> Across the various YouTube channels. Some of you may not want to know that I do have a, well, football, Hearts of Iron 4. Got heaps of YouTube channels. If you guys want to go check out that sort of stuff. I do try and upload as much as I can across. How many do I have now? I don't even know. Four channels. <laughs> I lost count. Anyway, here's Carl Franz's stats. Alright. I wonder... Will Hockland be able to hold this territory now? I guess it doesn't matter because we're still getting experiences and stuff, but... Now that I've liberated them... From under the yoke of... The Leech Lord... Will they come out again? Oh, God. That order resolve is terrible. I hate fighting Nurgle factions because we've got Plague and Pestilence galore here. I want to try and get rid of this army. Nice. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. That's more of a favorable order resolve. Oh, my God. And we're losing... F Holy shit. Hmm. I'm really just tempted to do it, but I won't. We might need a retreat. Oh, no. Heinrich... Uh, Kemmler has attacked me. Um... The moot petitions. I guess we grant the halflings... ...request. Okay, so, after essentially losing some of our strength, because we have just been absolutely crushed by plague and pestilence and unit decay, we're sort of being ganged up a little bit here. We want to try and finish off Festus if we can, but now things have been complicated with the, um, the Barrow Legion. Declaring war upon me, so we might need to send an army to go deal with them. They could threaten our position in uh, Helmgart. Well, even in the Marienburg fort that we took, potentially. Right, uh, let's return this to Telebeckland. And then I guess we move back to our own territory. Try and, or try and move into some territory where we can replenish and repair. And then make an assault on the Brass Keep. To put the end of this scourge. Yeah, decent army roster, and combined with pagan, Plague and Pestilence, really does a damage. 
Okay, so Skaven, for the first time, I've attacked uh, one of the elect accounts. They've attacked Sterling, so we'll send military forces to help on out. Uh, it's mostly just clan rats. Thankfully, there's no Jezels or anything too crazy. So, a nice victory. And Carl Franz has the plague. Hey, we can accept our first confederation with Sterling. We do lose three Imperial authority, which is quite a bit. However, we're going to be able to gain a bunch of territory for free. We could use their assistance in this new war against the Barrow Legion. So, Sterling has been incorporated into the Empire. We've taken their southern territory. Oh, nice. They've got a huge chunk of land. Now, we're not even negative either. So, we will have to assess and sort of judge their territory. Um, that's not too bad. Probably go with growth there, though. However, we do now border the moot and the vampire counts, which could complicate things. So... Uh, this is our secondary army, so they have this. Uh, we probably don't need another, so we probably can get rid of you. Yeah, we just don't need you. We don't need to pay for that. Because that's even quite a bit itself. It adds up. And I guess we'll keep this army at the moot. Uh, for now. Okay, and we can install a new elect account. Currently having... Uh, Two, now making three under our direct control. Nice, mate. Lord. We might be able to get a trade negotiation here. We've only got a certain amount of trade nodes, so why not? Let's negotiate with the uh, northern provinces and get some trade with uh, Miao Ying, the dragon princess. Okay, so our pestilence is play and plague has now gone. However, we're still suffering attrition. Let's make a play for the brass keep. So Festus is now back after licking his wounds from being incredibly wounded thanks to the 1v1 of Carl Franz. We'll move our secondary army on in. And it will end in a Pyrrhic victory. However, do we lose any units in its entirety? No, I don't think so. So, we'll uh, continue the siege. We'll siege them out and see if they attack us. Or maybe, maybe we should sort. Mm. Nah, let's just do it. Let's wait. Let's be patient. Uh, oh, yeah, because this is one of the annoying ones. If they go to war, yeah, so we just want to straight up stop the war. Alright, so, here's an aerial map. This is what we currently own. So, we're still at war with the Barrow Legion and Festus. We're making 800 per turn, and we've got a bunch of provinces directly under our control. So, uh, I guess unfortunately for them, they never pushed out against us, so we whittled them down slightly, and let's auto-resolve this one against Festus. We've already beaten him before on the campaign map. A siege would only add to his advantage. So the Brass Keep is now secure, and that should be the last we see of this cursed faction. And we can get the Luminarch of Hish, and a Hellstorm rocket battery as well, the first of the series. So they, they're currently still alive somewhere, but we've made a lot of decent territorial gains. Gotrick and Felix have arrived. Interesting. So, if you haven't watched the last episode, highly recommend you do. We managed to defeat uh, Festus and take the Brass Keep. Oh my god, we are really getting ganged up on here. Vlad von Karstein has declared war upon us. Now, that means our Sterling territory is going to be incredibly susceptible to attack. We might have to fight there now instantly. Oh my god. We just had a peace treaty with them. I don't know what's going on. I think it's because we've become sort of a regional threat. We've been massively ganged up on here. Um, we're going to refuse the request as well. Alright, so Wrecker's Point is under attack, and we've lost it. 
Mm, the basement of a Tacton, Tacton Midden stack. We actually don't have the money. Because we're hemorrhaging so much cash now. Um, we're going to have to spend the prestige. And deal with it. My god. We've been under the pump. Alright. Turn 40. Been a little bit under the kibosh. We're going to send one army north. To try and retake Wrecker's Point. In the... Misty Hills Province. I've sent one full stack down to... Helmgart, because I wanted to go after the Barrow Legion. That's what we were sort of making plans in preparation to have here today, before all of the Vampire Counts sort of ganged up against me. So, we're going to try and take this former Bretonian uh, village successfully, and we'll send this full stack to try and go into the Northern Grey Mountains to go against uh, Heinrich and the Ghoul King. While Carl needs to go to stop Vlad von Karstein, I suppose. And we do have an additional army here as well, uh, thanks to the Confederation with Stirland. Well, let's move in to their lands. So, we have reorganized, refitted our army slightly as Carl Franz came back from. The Brass Keep, he was able to pick up some great swords from Altdorf and three pieces of artillery as well. So let's put the pressure on Vlad von Karstein. A little bit weak, licking our wounds from defeating Festus. Now we've been thrown into a defensive war on two fronts. So we're going to be moving into the lands of Sylvania now. We want to try and have at least the siege of Tempelhof, or one of the major settlements here. But it looks like the other Elector Counts are coming to help on out as well, which is fantastic. And unfortunately we can't do anything here. I just take the prestige, I suppose. Which kind of sucks. Alright, back over in the west. Um, it does look like Heinrich Kemmler is further south. He seems to be fighting the Bretonians at Bastogne. Not the most crazy looking army. Alright. But the Ghoul King is currently defending their capital, so things are going to be a little bit difficult here. We can't actually... Oh, we're just out of range. That's so unlucky. Well, I suppose we move up to Karak Ziflin, and thankfully the settlement is only held by, uh, <laughs> ironically, a skeleton crew. <laughs> well, quite fitting, I suppose. <laughs> and... Hopefully this will try and bait one of those stacks in so we can p manually play them. Uh, Schwarzhafen is potentially a center we can take. Looks like our allies are coming on in. So where is Vlad? There he is with Isabella. So I guess we just continue to push. Although they attacked us, we seem to be way more aggressive. Close victory there would be with the order resolve. And we don't seem to lose any units in their entirety, so we'll take that. And we'll bring Castle Temple off under our control. It does seem that Dryich um, and the Wood Elves are putting some pressure on them from the north, taking Waldenhof. And, ah, uh, okay. Kislev has sort of pushed into that former Elector Count territory. Yeah, so they did kind of attack them, I, I, I suppose, or maybe gain the territory. Colonizing. Uh, Colonizing colonizing it, I suppose. Uh, we'll move this secondary army that was formerly Stirlands further south to the Moot, and we'll try and get some reinforcements as well to help us on our push against Vlad von Karstein. Oh, no. Elector Count declares independence. Vissenland. Uh, we're going to try and rally as much political support as we can and try and stop it. So... Another Von Karstein has come up. He's actually moved back to his capital, which is unfortunate. So we might have to try and push for Eschen. I might actually try and intercept him. And it will draw out the garrison of Eschen anyway, so that's alright. Anyway, let's fight this one. We haven't had a battle against the Vampire Counts. Now, we've got an okay army build. We've got great swords in. We've got a cannon regiment of renowned and mortars, but 
We've got to be really careful against the vampire counts. They are one of the S tier factions, in my opinion, from the Warhammer 1 roster. So, especially Vlad himself. The dude's an absolute chad, so we're really going to have to watch out for him. Alright, so nothing too fancy. Great swords in. We've also got our Light Wizard as well. And we have a, a Warrior Priest to help us out. Bunch of crossbows, mostly regiments of renowned. We've got a Reichsguard unit, and we also have some Outriders as well, which is a pretty underrated unit in my opinion. They can really pack a punch. So now that we've got a little bit more firepower and capability with us, we should be able to soften up and make quick work of the enemy combatants. And we're going to try and turn every single battle now into... A defensive one with the help of that artillery because the AI doesn't want to get hit with impunity so nine times out of ten they very rarely take the artillery hit and try and close the distance and go right into the path of my great swords right so we'll try and get Carl France to bring down the Bong Karstein pup they do have additional reinforcements coming from my right hand side, but so far that's not overly too much of our concern. We've got some black riders here, which our outriders are putting in some really nice damage against them as they try to get a flanking maneuver on in. We've got our Reichsguard here as well. We'll try and move them up to stop their hounds coming on in. So far, 80% in our favor. That's without the garrison coming on in. Oh, they've turned there. Shit. Alright, let's try and counter uh, counter charge their units there. Now, we've managed to trap their crypt ghouls perfectly. Oh, I wish I had the artillery like ready to fire. Like, come on. It's going to take them a little while to recalibrate and calculate. Oh, we've got them there in a perfect area. They're just probably not going to be there too long. Like, fire quick, 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 quick. <laughs> because there's only a couple. It's only like th um, 20 seconds or so. Well, at least we sort of nullified and stunted the charge slightly. Here comes the artillery barrage. That might be enough. That's one of their better units, the Crypt Ghouls. Okay, our Reichsguard has taken some damage, but we're okay. We are holding and maintaining against the first wave of assault. But man, absolutely under the pump this episode. Unfortunately, our cannons have been neutralized there. I believe it's like... Um, I think what happened is... Essentially, it's like the greater power penalty just sort of um, accumulated, which sucks. But hey, you got to embrace that sort of stuff, embrace adversity. So let's go. So if we can bring the vampire counts under our control, the better. So we've defeated Marienburg. We've gone after the Greenskins. And Festus, now we're going to really try and focus on eradicating once and for all uh, vampiric corruption throughout our lands. Alright, they got some bats coming on in and their reinforcements are coming as well. Unfortunately, I'm not going to lie, we haven't probably dispatched this first army quick enough. I might have to send Carl Franz up, yeah. Dude's an absolute tank in the chat, though. Level 25 now. Our cannons and Reichsguard. Trying to get the better of this Graveguard here, which are holding really well. But yeah. The Vampire Counts, particularly Vlad von Karstein. His roster, his magical capacity and ability. One of the best factions in the game. That is so, so good. Definitely on the list to play at some point. Okay, so here they come. Now that they're clustering up, this will be a prime opportunity to get our mortars to rain fire and death. Our outriders have our outriders actually capitulated. Now they've rallied into a really nice flanking maneuver. Let's send an infantry unit up to try and hold them. But the vampires like to fight to the absolute bitter end before they turn into dust and ruin. We'll send our great swords out. But this is definitely a mid-tier army now. 40 turns into the campaign. Great swords, mortars, and superior infantry slash crossbows galore. 
still very much inflicting high damage. Hell, two of the great sword unit, two of the great sword units are actually regiments of renowned that are holding their own. But I wouldn't say this army build that we're facing against the vampire counts as mid tier. Like a lot of these units are still tier one. If anything, it's just they're so strong. Nice. And now they've capitulated. A close victory. But we're going to be able to take Eschen and defeat uh, Gottfried von Karstein in the process. 165 lost. It felt like we lost a lot more. We're outnumbered though. 2-1 to one, to be fair. But Karl Franz got the better of them. So if we take Eschen, they've got no territory further in the north. Thank God the Wood Elves have sort of put the pump on them. So we'll take Eschen now, we'll march on in, we'll loot and occupy. And we'll just try and uh, wait for us to attack Vlad von Karstein at a perfect moment. We've really got to pick our mark carefully and go full guns blazing against him. So we do have access to a Hellstorm rocket battery, which I'm nearly tempted to bring on in. Oh, I don't want to... Um, Disband anyone though. Alright, back on the Barrow Legion front. So, we've got to keep an eye on Kimla. I don't know where he is. The Ghoul King seems to be still holding the capital. So, how about we siege it out? Um, we've also got the Lumignac of Hish up here. Because it was just available in the recruitment pool. And, oh, they've actually he's actually moved to Schwarzhafen. So, he's constantly on the move. He's not sitting stagnant in the one place, which is interesting. And, unfortunately, Gottfried actually has just run away, which kind of sucks. Still has a lot of pieces of territory. Even has Oakenhammer, by the look of it. So, is he going to allow us to attack Castle Drakenhof? He is. We can't auto-resolve, but we're going to have to actually manually play it. Yeah, why'd he go to Schwarzhafen? I guess he, I guess we were posturing on the border for a potential attack. Look, you know what? Let's take his capital. Let's manually fight this one and defeat the garrison. I'm curious to see what it is once we get on the battle map, the balance of power. Will it significantly change? Yeah. I don't know why. I guess it's because it's their capital. But anyway, let's play... The Battle of Castle Drakenhof, our first major siege against the Vampire Counts, against uh, Vlad von Karstein. And let's reduce them to what, one settlement. We will have to fight him on the field of battle at some point, but he seems to be avoiding us. I guess he wasn't expecting the Blitzkrieg. You could say of Karl Franz to carve up his <laughs> kingdom. Uh, I guess we gamble now with the winds of magic. Dude, we haven't even needed to rely on it because we've only just now got a light wizard in our army build. All right, let's give out these attack orders for these great swords. Get them to ascend and dominate the field of battle. Nice. Now, unfortunately, they do have cannons or whatever their equivalent is. Throwing magical, exploding bombs against us. So, just to be a little bit careful. We do have our own artillery to help us out, though. Uh, let's move Karl Franz to go after their general unit directly. And now, with artillery help, we should make a siege like this a lot quicker. We've learnt <laughs> from the various sieges in Marienburg and the Black Pit. As Karl Franz flies on in, let's go after their general unit. Okay, so numerically still rather quite close. Let's move our wizard up so he can be more effective. We do have a couple limited spells. 
Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of Light Wizards, but hey, we got him for free and we haven't had to construct any of the buildings to be able to recruit wizards. But we're slowly but surely moving on up. Um, are we actually properly firing? We haven't done any damage there. Maybe send the warrior priest up to start battering down the gate. Alright, Carl Franz still going after the general unit. Still doing alright. And... Let's give out some multiple attack orders here. Nice. Those ghouls will pack a little bit of a punch. But... Hey, we've kind of surrounded and strangled held uh, Vlad von Karstein's territory, so we could nearly wait him on out here. If we could get to a point where we can surround and pin him on in, detain him in Schwarzhafen, like, we could basically take our time and try and whittle him down as best we can, because he is quite a formidable legendary lord to come up against. Like, even now, I don't even know in a 1v1 would he actually beat Carl Franz. It's going to be incredibly close. Right, we are not arcing our shot there effectively. We need to move this cannon up. Right. Unfortunately, I guess it didn't have the best range. So that's why, when I gave out the order, it didn't do any damage to the gate. It just didn't have inch-perfect line of sight. But so far, thankfully it didn't auto-resolve it, I suppose. Would have been a decisive defeat. Manually playing this one was definitely the play. Alright, now we're on in. Let's march in the Warrior Priest and move in the Reichsguard and the Outriders as well. We'll get some nice hammer and anvil cycle charges hopefully in the settlement. And the Outriders should really skirmish quite a bit. Oh, there's a perfect blob jewel there, I like to call. And a perfect angle we could probably open up. Uh, Carl Franz, doing incredibly well. The Emperor himself is tanking two units there with a greatsword unit. Fighting in, in and around this decrepit tree. Haunting. Disturbing. A couple words come to mind. But, if we can burn down and sort of anoint this desiccated place again. Bring it back under our control, that'll be good. Right, come on. Let's, um, hang on. Let's swing the Reichsguard around slightly, and I want to get my Outriders to fire into that dude. If we could get a phenomenal shot against those Black Knights, my god, it'd be perfect. There we go, they're clustering up brilliantly. Look at that, two units already wavering. Get you guys to hold, and then get the Reichsguard to come on in. We've got the hammer. Flying on in with the Reichsguard, we've got the Amble with the infantry, and we've got the flaming sparks of the Amble with the Outriders, I suppose. And that's going to give us the W. Close victory. We've destroyed the really strong garrison there, and we've taken their capital. Castle Drakenhof has fallen to the Empire. Hail Sigma, brothers. <laughs> And all that leaves is Schwarzhafen. Oh, no, they do have Oakenhammer as well. Okay. I'm just seeing on the map there. Uh, we need control. We need stability. We need to not allow these territories to openly rebel against us. And they've actually got another army here as well that we have to keep an eye on. So we can bring in another Elector Count in the region of Sylvania, so let's do that. Um, I don't really know who, which one was the sort of the senior figure. Uh, whatever, doesn't really matter. All right, back over against the uh, Silver Legion. I'm sure they're gonna be pissed off to hear what's sort of happening to Vladdy Boy and his territory. So we're gonna try and siege out Blackstone post and we'll build some siege equipment there as well with our secondary army uh, we'll try and look to move the third army against the Norskins and we'll try and keep that army uh, in and around uh, Schwarzhafen as well yes yeah, so they do have Oakenhammer so they have taken that off the dwarves and now he's moved back there 
He's really moving about here. He's in a force march, though, so maybe we charge out. And they've moved the other army up to Schwarzhafen. Pyrrhic victory. Okay. Well, I guess we siege them out. Um, ideally, I would like them to attack me, but we'll see how we go. Oh, actually, I could... Oh, I actually might have to siege Schwarzhafen because... That's in range to hit Karl Franz. And then we're fighting a... A 3v1, potentially, so... I don't think this army is capable enough to take Schwarzhafen. But we'll just try and get it to kill the movement. Potentially. They might charge us out. I, I don't know. We'll see how we go. Anyway, let's end the turn and continue. And uh, see how the AI reacts. Okay. So the Barrow Legion has attacked me. A little bit complicated. Three armies. But I suppose we fight this one. Damn, I, I could have done with some artillery in this build. But I had to give the rest a call. Alright. Welcome to the battle map. This is a shocking battle map by the look of it. Incredibly slanted. Really hilly and rocky. What can I work with here? I suppose gaining the high ground is the play. If we can have our backs against the wall of Oakenhammer... Like, even the deployment zone is very small and sort of shoddy. So, hang on. What do we got? Oh, yeah, so that'll do. So, we can't be too far up in the corner. We have to play lower down, which is fine. That'll do. Try and invert the flanks and fold. Now, we're going to have to rely on... Our archers to do most of the work and our gunners. But this is going to be a tough one. Hopefully. We've got enough. Hang on. Just need to reform up this perfectly. It can be a little bit tricky. When there's only a very limited amount of room. However... If we are successful here today, and we take the settlement, the Barrow Legion will have no settlements under their direct control. Unless they took out some Bretonian uh, village or settlement somewhere that I can't see. And we'll stop the vampiric influence west of Altdorf. We'll basically end it. Oh no, I, oh no there's the Red Duke, isn't there? further in Bretonia, which I forgot. Okay. But I wonder if we were at war with them because now simply, um, we backed the halflings when they got attacked in that event. We gained a bonus fighting vampire counts and vampiric factions a while ago. Maybe that sort of drew us into this war. So once this war with the vampires has ended, who should we go after? Let me know in the comment section down below. And of course, any feedback and suggestions as well. Sorry, I'm taking too long with this. I want to get this perfect. I really don't want to stuff it up. Because we've only got three great swords. Swordsmen. Crossbows. Yeah. Essentially would have traded those... Five archers for crossbows, but we'll see how we go. At least he's on a Pegasus, so he should be able to do something. But this is going to be a tough one. We do have the high ground, so it's going to slightly help out our archers, but... Here we go. Secondary army. Against the godforsaken Ghoul King. So here's the army that attacked us. Incredibly outnumbered here. Forgive that visual bug. I don't know what that was. That could have been me. I don't even know what that was. Like a shadow thing. Alright. Let's uh, check things on max speed. Wait for everyone to come on in. Make sure everyone's going to hold their ground properly. And not flee in terror. In the sight of... Any godly... Or ungodly... 
skeletons or demons and stuff. Zombies that are going to be coming up against us. A lot of zombies, a lot of skeletons. Bats. Alright. Can't move you anymore anyway. Guard mode, yeah. Oh, hang on. Some of those gunners are on skirmish mode. Which is what we don't want. But here is uh, the Ghoul King. As he slowly but surely makes his way on up. Uh, they can see us because of our general unit. Pulling him back might actually entice them in. That's a little bit of a trick you can do sometimes in heavily forested areas. Quite often, the general unit is the only one that's exposed and can be seen by the enemy combatants. Or belligerents, as it were. So you pull them back in the deep forest and then, pow, you pounce on them. Dude, I remember doing that way back in Shogun 2 <laughs> as a tactic. Some of these tactics still work. Even implemented from the historical Total Wars. The high ground is king. Alright, so they are going to move up their bats. Thankfully, not when stuff... Is fully engaged because if we can take these guys out before we really face the main army, the better. Because nice, we are absolutely fucking decimating those bats in the air. The gunners are arcing their shots brilliantly. Now, there has been a cavalry charge by them, we just need to hold. But the problem is, if they all sort of if those bats effectively hit our missile units, they're going to nullify any skirmish as a premise that we have. But here come the Barrow Legion. Sigma! Thankfully, I've got a bunch of gunners here because we definitely need those armor piercing rounds. And any firepower we have, that could make the dis difference. Okay, so far we've survived the first initial wave. But here comes the rest of the onslaught. And they've also got a bunch of lords as well, so that's really going to complicate things. And... What's his name? Rizzo von Witz? Fuck, I remember. Oh, no. Some of our infantry now. Is... Absolutely getting smashed there. Alright, uh, come on, hold the line. Just getting debuffed, absolute hell. Yeah, I don't even know if you would be able to comfortably beat <laughs> the Ghoul King. The dude's the Ghoul King, man. Ghouls are terrifying. Alright, most of them are focusing on my right hand side, so I might actually swing my great swords around. Because if they're going to delay swinging here, we'll go with something like this. Oh, they had some units hidden. Still about a 50-50, though. Jeez, 2 to 1. This is a 6,500-man battle, which is pretty big for Warhammer this early on. But so far, the Great Swords are holding. They've lost half their casualties. The... Swordsmen are taking the most. Just need to hold the line, brave men of the Empire. You are alone here. Carl Franz can't save you. But if we can just push past those zombies and skeletons, those skilly boys, we'll be good. Right, maybe go on in now, as he seems to be a lot weaker. Now, we've got to be a little bit careful. We have to keep an eye on his health. We can't allow, uh, be allowed to lose our general in the process. 
Okay, everyone's still holding for now. Unfortunately, three infantry units have been, well, quite frankly, utterly destroyed. Our crossbows and archers should have been getting a lot more shots off. But I guess some's better than nothing. It's actually our gunners that are really doing a lot. But we're still heavily outnumbered. So... Look, we'll try and whittle them down as best as we can, but if we do lose, we might have to do a tactical retreat. There's no such thing as losses. You can't lose in this game. It's just a tactical retreat. We might need to recalibrate and bring more firepower. To be fair, I I wasn't expecting like two full stacks that they have were under, like able to control. But at the end of the day, we never chose these wars. We sort of just had to go to the border and... Even with uh, Vlad, we're just sort of trying to take and press our advantage. Because I would have liked to prepare fully. Get the perfect army builds, but you can't always choose when you're in a defensive war. Oh no, this might be it. We've got units capitulating left, right and centre. I've actually got the generals stuck here trying to go after their wizards. He's been free, but is it enough? Yeah, I think this is a GG. Unless we can um, pick up an absolute miracle. We're at number two to one. Damn, man. Yeah, I don't think deploying on the lower ground would have helped. Fuck. Anyway, we're not down and out for the count just yet. We're going to keep on going until that end card defeat comes out. Um, I guess we just sort of go for death and glory. And make sure every single unit is just trying to take out one bugger with him. So go after the general though. Nice. Go for the Hail Mary of general and agent sniping. Our infantry has been... Quite frankly, utterly crushed. More crossbows are adding to the retreat. Come on, you're just getting clustered here. Yeah. So we're like evenly losing 400, but they still outnumber us by a thousand. They are taking losses. Hang on, we are sort of rallying here. Oh, hang on. Oh, shit. I thought they would, like... I thought... Oh, my God. We've got units here just sitting idly by. I thought most of the units that were available were actually just getting attacked. Like in manual combat. Oh, hang on. Hang on a moment. We might be able to use this to our advantage. We've actually retreated to a really nice area. Hang on. If we can just fire into this cluster... No, why? Make sure every single one of my units has an attack order. Dude, they are f dropping like flies here. Hang on. Hang on, don't lose the general. Do you see that? Do you see that little green fucking bar? It's swinging back in our favor. Oh, shit. We might be able to pull this one out. No way. How have we done that? I thought this battle was chalked. Come on. Let's have you. This, this is graveyard units is really holding. Oh my god. A Pyrrhic victory. Look at the stats, man. Off the charts. We did lose units, but I always said I believed in miracles. And we've taken Blackstone. And we've been attacked here, though, in Schwarzhafen. We'll take the tactical retreat. There's no way that we can manually win that. It might have been better to draw them back. But we've reduced the Barrow Legion to zero zilch settlements. Uh, how fantastic is that? <laughs> Oh, what's this? Artos. 
onto a non-aggression pact. I'd rather not. And we'll continue with the migration. We already accepted that, like, ages ago. Um, the more the merrier. Retaking our settlement from the Norskin scum in the north. And we're going to have a battle against Vlad von Karstein. Hopefully ending the Vampiric Scourge near our lands. So, if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video a like and subscribe if you're new. I would uh, really much appreciate it. So, we're going to be able to get a trade right here with Zufbar, which is nice. Okay, so we just need to continually block the army from Schwarzhafen every single time we end the turn because it's just allowing us to whittle down the garrison in Oakenhammer and we're just trying to ideally I want Vlad von Karstein to march out of Oakenhammer and attack us so we'll just keep on manually retreating because there's no way we're going to win that oh would you believe it bloody Bellacor has declared war upon me and he's going to draw his Norskin vassal. Fuck's sake. <laughs> Alright. We're really getting ganged up on here. So, we're at war with four factions now. We're strength ranked one. Which is pretty decent for the Empire. Uh, we've really got to keep an eye on him. Because he's actually just north of the Albion Channel. There is a... Shadow Rift here. Something you have to keep an eye on. And there's like three settlements here, I believe, or so. So he could threaten our Northern Territory. But we're going to have to keep an army in and around the Chaos Wastes to the north. Alright, back down in Altdorf. We've got enough funds to actually upgrade it to a Tier 4 settlement. That's something we definitely want to do. Because we haven't even got the capacity to recruit wizards yet. We've been relying on those being spawned in. Okay. Um, I think they're not going to sell out and attack us. So, we've whittled them enough. We've skipped a couple turns. Let's get stuck into this one. Level 19 Vlad versus level 27 Carl. Let's start the deployment. So, thankfully, it's not the siege of their capital. Templehof. That would have... Um, Oh, Drakenhof, rather said. Um, that would have complicated things. He's actually decided to make his final stand in the ancient dwarven settlement of Oakenhammer. Now, there is a little bit of coverage from the mountain to the left. So, we're going to have to move our deployment... We'll move from where our deployment zone is, or otherwise our artillery uh, artillery and mortar pieces are actually going to clip the top of the mountain. Like, they're not going to be able to arc their shot effectively, I don't think. So we're going to go with a three-pronged attack. And what I want to try and do is sit back, relax, allow my artillery to do most of the work on the enemies on the inside. I want to whittle them down enough. Uh, if we can get to a point where it's just... Carl versus Vlad, I'll be happy. But he's going to have a really hard time fighting both Isabella and Vlad at the same time. This is, I'm not going to lie, probably going to be our hardest battle of the series. Just like, just at the sheer stats and quality volume of Vlad, um, he's just such a hard lord to take down. So we'll just move up slightly. With the great swords. If we can hold this bridge as a choke point, that would be brilliant. Our artillery is already firing at will. And then if any arrow towers or blockades pop up, we'll try and quickly uh, bring them down and destroy them. So let's advance. And let's actually get our gunners and crossbows there to get their shots off. Let's move our outriders in to try and cause some carnage on their infantry. And we'll flank with our Reichsguard as well. Hopefully we can get a good angle. But still quite close. 50-50. Hopefully this can be the end of the vampires. Now, a cannon should have a nice clear shot 
at any enemy units. Alright. So they are moving a little bit close to us. Do have to be slightly careful. We've managed to destroy their arrow tower, which they constructed. Our outriders are putting the damage on. Really underrated unit outriders. Highly recommend them if you're playing as the Empire and you need a cavalry unit and you're on a strict budget. We are a little bit outnumbered in this one, but so far we're picking apart any infantry that's coming towards us. And our mortars are shelling any units that are further back. Let's get a shot here. See if we go. I have completely stuffed that up, and that is the one and done. <laughs> I don't want to waste any of that valuable ammunition. Let's give out some attack orders. Oh, no! The Outriders have been caught there. Hang on. Let's just move everyone back slightly. Alright. So, we'll try and kite this chariot out. Our artillery has a plentiful amount of ammunition, so let's chuck things on maximum speed. And we're basically getting rid of a unit one every second, uh, three every second, which is pretty good. So if we can keep that up, we'll need to keep an eye off any keep an eye on any arrow towers being constructed because that would change things. Um, we're actually cutting out some of these dire wolves. Which is nice. Okay. I've moved my great swords up. Getting some nice crossbow shots. Arcing their shots up and over the top. And our gunners as well is actually getting some clean shots. Nice. And we've thrown back those damn ghouls from whence they came. Alright. So we're still taking out a decent chunk of them. We've got plenty of time. 50 minutes, it's got to be cool, calm, and collected. I think the plan is to try and destroy as much of their units as we can, and then we can focus with the missiles to like, even soften up Vlad. But here come the Reichsguard, cycle charging in the cold, chilly weather here. This is dwarf territory that we're fighting in. Speaking of the dwarves, thankfully we've kept pretty amicable relations with them. Oh, but here they go. They're being a little bit more aggressive here now. Oh, no. They were about to dive bomb against me, but we might be able to bring them down. I do love it when the gunners arc their shot. Bring these fell beasts down. Nice. Someone absolutely fucking dropped one. Hell yeah, brother. Alright, let's swing you around. And we're just slowly but surely just continuing to soften them up. Oh, Tower's being constructed, but look at this. We're going to be able to massively whittle it down. All right. So the longer we do wait, though, we do give them ample supply to construct more defenses, which aren't really too much of a concern. I think we are smashing them enough with our artillery. Like, we're just shelling the absolute hell out of them. For what, what a couple arrow towers and barricade, it's 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 worth them having that, right? So we might be able to crush this unit here. Hang on, I just need to sort of bait them in, yeah, and then everyone go for them against those Vargists because they were kind of annoying before. Although well, there's a little bit of friendly fire going on, our Reichs guard are getting a battering. It's the outriders that are probably going to bring them down. Bring down the Vargists. Nice. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess we just got to let him hold them in place. There we go. Perfect. Oh, my God. <laughs> Literally down to the last man. The uh, Reichsguard captain survived. Hilarious. Why did they, why did they move so far? I was I was trying to I guess I gave an attack order that they moved up. That's so whack. Great sword. 
Right, let's advance with my um, great swords. Oh, that arrow tower's coming back as well. Quickly neutralize it before you move up. All right, our mortars are out of ammunition. Our skirmishes still have a fair bit. But sitting back now is just giving them more an advantage. So I think we've bided our time enough with our mortars. Let's take this city. Once we give out some attack orders on that barricade, we should fall quite quickly. Nice. Thankfully, Vlad and Isabella are sitting further back. We just need to focus on their army, I think. Also, sitting back stopped us from getting hit from their spells, particularly their infantry. Alright, let's attack those skeleton spears there. Let's send up another unit to help, and let's move our skirmishers, archers and crossbows, to a more advanced position. Same with our hand gunners as well. Still only about 60% in my favour, so we still have to be slightly cautious. Dude, look at these, like, crazy... They kind of look like dwarven vats of lava, but I'm assuming they're used for smelting. Crazy. Really cool looking dwarvish fort here that we're fighting in and around. Oh, but here we go. Uh, already. Unfortunately, Carl Franz is losing hit points there. Taking a little bit of a, a battering from Vlad von Karstein's uh, magic. Okay, so we're struggling to push here slightly. Looks like most of the offensive is going to come from here. But so far, 15 minutes in, we're doing okay. All right, I think we just killed Isabella there. Or is she further down here? No, she's the other one. We got rid of one of their agents. All right, thankfully there's actually a barricade there, so it's actually stopping Vlad and the rest of his reinforcements coming in. Okay, well, that's Isabella, so we should really focus on her. Dude, if we could divide and conquer the pair, that would be bloody brilliant. Bring her down. Nice, we got her. Ladies and gentlemen, we got her. Alright, one down, one more to go. Carl Franz is very much maintaining his health. Perfect. And we're just still focusing on their units, prior prioritizing them over Vlad himself. Nice. Because, yeah, I, d I genuinely don't think... Maybe I'm being a little bit cautious, but I don't think in a 1v1, Carl Franz will probably beat him. He is such a potent and deadly lord. Him and Manfred both. Probably the lords I fear coming up against. Maybe even someone like a, an Akai as well, like Agrok on that sort of level. Ready to fire. Okay, so... We've basically got to really just go after Vlad himself. So we'll break down this barricade, we'll which make the army slightly susceptible. And we'll get all of these skirmishes just to fire their last little lot of ammunition against him. And we'll move our infantry up to hold. If we can hold him in place, that would be brilliant. My god, was that a cannon shot? What was that? No, it was, um... The Light Wizard. I thought those rounds looked a little bit bright, but the way it just, like, badong, like, fucking bounced, I thought it was, um, a cannonball. Alright, he seems to be just wasting our ammunition there, which is hilarious. So we'll try and hold him in place. 
and get everyone just to release everything at him. Doesn't seem to be overly working. They're out of ammunition now. Oh, nice hit. Yeah, it's getting to the point where our skirmishes are out of ammunition. Oh, look, look we've done absolutely nothing to him. We will hit him with a pretty decent amount of volleys. All right, let's get all our melee units to move on in. And what I'll do is, of course, send the skirmishes and one infantry unit around the back to try and take the town square. But look at this. Our car friend's already at half health. The priest as well. Like, look at this. Even though he's at half health. Look at this. He's tanking so goddamn many of them. He just capitulated in the end. We didn't actually fully beat him. Dude, Vlad von Karstein. Absolute chad to the end. <laughs> My god. But great swords, 200 kills, perfect. Reichsguard 120, not too bad. Cannons 120 as well. Some really nice, hard working uh, units there, to Bring say the least. So Okanama is now ours, and then we can combine our strengths and push for Schwarzhafen whenever we want. Uh, hopefully sooner rather than later, because we don't want him to. Replenish and repair and lick his wounds. Now, we can get a Hellstorm rocket battery in though. Poggers. Uh, okay, minus 20 with the Golden Order. The local <laughs> no boys. <is>, oh, what? <laughs> Galfrands and Balthazar killed fancy the same girl. <laughs> what? That's so weird. Okay, so although we're not at full strength. I think if we force march, stop the recruitment here, we siege out Schwarzhafen. Okay, so that's decisive. So hang on, we'll continue the siege. And we'll bring this as close up to the city gates as we can. And then they might attack us, maybe. Who's this? Azag the Slaughterer. Oh, is he up there now? Just east of Kislev. Norskins attack Nordland again. We'll pay the money. Oh, wow. These attacks grow bolder by the day. We paid the 2,000. I don't think we got any compensation there. Anyway, uh, let's deal with Schwarzhafen as Vlad is now back. But hopefully that's the end of his faction. Uh, what's this? Oh! The Wood Elves have attacked him. Dryach, okay. Interesting. On the outskirts of Drakenhof. Yeah, because they do have a lot of territory in there. Technically trespassing, but I'll allow it. And now the Dwarves are going after them. Oh, wow. Our allies just want to get rid of <laughs> Sylvania. What's this? Artis. Oh my god. I thought we had good relations. Minus 11 is not too bad. But, Britonia have Wodek the Empire. God damn it. <laughs> That's not good. I've only just wrapped up the vampires. Last thing I want is a war with Britonia. Alright, and the Red Duke's there. Yeah, it's just because we're strength ranked one. We've put an absolute massive fucking target on our back. Hemorrhage and cash. We need to stabilize the region here. So, looks like the wall has shifted to the western front. Oh my god. Anyone else? Yeah, I guess we get the Imperial Authority. We'll take that. Alright, we can get a defensive alliance from... Kislev. I think I'll accept that. Even though they seem to be getting pushed here by Throt and various other Chaos factions. So we'll accept that during the end turn phase. We're slowly but surely replenishing and repairing, repairing Sylvania. And we're moving Carl away from the eastern border to the west. Just because we're at war with so many factions over there now. The Red Duke. Artus. And essentially Bellacor and the Norskins. And we had to deal with the Barrow Legion over there at one point as well. 
Alright, building's damaged, unfortunately. But we are reducing the vampiric corruption here, massively. Okay, so we've got some tech available. I guess we go with production there. So no one else wants peace. No one else wants a military alliance. No other trade we can do. Except for a non-aggression pack with Kata Kadrin. I think I might do that. Uh, Ungrim Iron Fist. Maybe I should have made non-aggressions and sort of packs with Bretonia, but I don't know. I kind of wanted their land. Uh, we can't actually build an outpost in any of these regions, can we? Just here? No, I think I think we can't do it because we just don't have enough money. But I'd love to get access to Kislev units if we can. Oh god, they are really under the kibosh there. Unfortunately, uh, Montford Fort has been attacked by the Red Duke. After what we did to the vampires, I suppose. Alright, Kislev is building an outpost in our territory. But uh, welcome to the top of the turn. 55 turns into Let's Play. We finally changed the terrain here in Slovenia. Some of it's still very vampiric corrupted, but I do quite like when the terrain goes back to nature. Uh, yeah, this looks more or less like uh, an empire settlement now. So we've got a full stack holding one army in Castle Drakenhof in southern Sylvania. We can always move into Eschen. We might go after Dreyich, because I think after we sort of deal with Bretonia and sort of this whole contingent over here, we might have to go... Well, the Wood Elves are next, I suppose. Right, we'll try and uh, retake uh, Mont Montfort as the Red Duke took it. We should be able to reclaim it quite quickly. Got a straight up occupy, I suppose. Delayed our efforts. Going towards Artis for now. Okay, and they've got a couple of armies here. We've got some Norskins here. Okay, they're actually further back. So they're actually just trying to dominate my Northern Territory. So, uh, we'll get Karl Franz to move to Marienburg, and I think I might get this army back up north again with Alexis <laughs> Dog Burglar. <laughs> what a name. It was like my Skyrim character, uh, Quest Gobbler. <laughs> I don't know why it reminded me of him. Oh, but he's going to accept a peace treaty. Alright, that's a weird little war. I guess he maybe go, went in with intentions thinking, oh yeah, I might be able to take some territory from the Empire. Uh, nope. <laughs> that ain't happening. So, we're going to peace out with them. Good. We'll just beat them into submission real quick. And we'll try and move back north to uh, recalibrate our position. I suppose. Another civil war here. I guess we stopped the war again. Yeah, this is why you just need those political influence, man. Like, last thing he wants is the Golden Legion to be at war. Mm. I guess we pay. Right, well. I think we go after Artis here. And then we might make a play against Bretonia. They actually have the a piece of territory in the island of Alba, which is interesting. Yeah, well, weirdly, artists don't want peace, but they declare war upon me. So, we've wrapped up the war with the vampire, well, yeah, and the Red Duke. So, we're going to have our first battle against uh, Artis of Bretonia. Okay, so, a lot of cavalry, a lot of flanking. Do have to be slightly careful. So our artillery and mortars will be susceptible. So we just need to adequately protect them, I suppose. Which is easier said than done. There's not really too much we can do. We don't have a crazy amount of infantry. 
Like, the Bretonia army build is probably perfect to counter us. Aerially to stop our and nullify our artillery and missiles. And especially if they cavalry spam, flanking is going to be hard. But the Hellstorm rocket battery is going to have its first real attempt and it's going to shoot a huge rocket load right into a bunch of trees. <laughs> Fucking brilliant. <laughs> Carl Franz is going to go in. But once again, the Empire, not being of the conquering sort, is fighting another defensive war. I can't wait to see how effective the Hellstorm rocket battery is now that we've got it. I can't wait to get more in. Okay, it looks like there's going to be a charge here. Hopefully we can soften them up before they hit us. As Bretonia is at war with the Empire. Well, Artis. But I'm sure if we crush them, it's only going to be a matter of time before we want to go after Leon Leonker for orchestrating this fight. Okay, so anything that was coming in the center push there is fine. They are really trying to flank here. We'll try and reposition slightly, but we might not have enough time. Oh, shit. Dude. Bretonia's cavalry is so, so good. I actually don't mind Bretonia. The lore, the characters are great. I think people are a little bit harsh on the army build style. People just don't like the army build, though. I get it. But it's like, you don't want it to be, like, just identical. Like, the French Empire. <laughs> you know what I mean? Comparing to the Empire in this game. You want it to be slightly different. Right, still going to try and go after... Is it Chilfroy, their captain? But, man... The AI, particularly on the diplomacy front, war decking and ganging up on me, has been incredibly aggressive and tough. Credit to them diplomacy-wise. They have re they haven't given us an inch. Like, we destroy a faction. They are right back on the offensive, sending another enemy at our gate. So, we'll try and focus on... Artos and probably Bretonia. But who knows next? What is it? More green skins? That goddamn Wood Elves are going to be at war with us? Who knows? Alright, so. They have moved some of the engineers off that Hellstorm rocket battery, but it's okay, I think. But yeah, this has just turned into a massive. unorthodox battle. It's all over the place. And we're not even fighting Castalton. <laughs> right, we've picked up the W though. Nice. It's nearly better off to auto resolve something like that. 200 men lost. Which is a bit, seeing as they only deployed 1,000. And a lot of our units got incredibly weak. The Hellstorm rocket battery carried though. Even though they fluffed up the first couple of shots, wasting, wasting valuable ammunition. Not being able to calculate and coordinate between the tree line. But we'll take on the experience. We'll crush them. And then I've got to think about what I do with uh, actual Bretonia now, the main faction. Bring me to my men. So. Because if we want to get to Artis's lands, we might. We might as well just go to war with them, you know what I mean? He's already pissed for whatever reason. Minus 58. I did sort of want their territory, but I was more than happy to sort of role-play and have an alliance with them, you know what I mean? Same with, like, the Dwarfs. So, if we negotiate with the Red Duke, we can join his war and get 900. And Karl Franz is officially at war with Leon Leonker. The bromance is over. Now, we have managed to bypass some various alliances there, which is good. And we'll start looking to bring Bretonia's territories into the Empire. Now, it's such valuable territory because it's just so hospitable to us. Like, if this happened against the Dwarves, like, their territory will be essentially 
useless. Um, because it's very mountainous. So we'll go after the unit here. Th they were pretty unlucky with this. They're going to lose a um, an army here just because it was unfortunately for some reason trespassing in my uh, northern province. So we're going to be able to carve it up. And that's going to really weaken them because they probably only have uh, one or two left. So we'll move you further south and then I guess we make plans and preparations to go for their capital. We probably should secure this fort though. Oh, great. More warriors of chaos declaring war upon us. Yeah, dude, no wonder. Kiss lever on the back foot. They've got th <laughs> Throg and the Norskins. And heaps up there. Okay, we can get a confederation with Hockland. I guess we'll accept because I don't know when it's going to be happen. It's 20 turns before we can happen again. But Hockland got kind of destroyed in this series. So I don't actually know if that's overly worth that. Because, like, aren't Hockland the ter Like, isn't the Hockland territory... Okay. It's only, like, two pieces of territory. God damn it. Because um, they were crushed by uh, Festus, weren't they? Oh, well. No matter. It's like it's not built up either. Because getting those negative debuffs will be probably more of a con consequence. Alright, we're hemorrhaging a little bit of money because of this confederation now. And we're a lot weaker and essentially destabilized. Um, they do add a negative debuff when you confederate, so that's something we have to keep an eye on. But this army is completely useless. We don't need that, so let's just get rid of that. And instantly we're going to be able to make 500 per turn. We can install a new elect account in Hockland now. So, that's not too bad. We'll accept that. There's a Cathay um, trade caravan there. So we have to keep an eye on. Got some valuable resources there that we can extract, which is nice. Well, I guess we continue on with the war effort. So, let's move Rizard. Von Liebwitz. Okay. So if we are to auto resolve that, it's only one unit. So we'll continue the siege. Uh, actually, no, we could take it this turn. I'm kind of tempted to do so. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll take that. It's only one great sword. So we'll loot and occupy this. We will play the battle for the Bretonian capital because it's like a unique settlement. But. The Empire. I will take the clean cut victory over Artis there. Alright, so Carl Franz. Um, we'll see if Leon Leon Kerr rocks up. Because we want to try and intercept him. We'll actually wait for this. Um, or, can I. Actually, you know what? I might be better off to not go manually. Maybe go. Na oh, hang on. Ah! There we go. It bounced there. I didn't mean to do that. We'll try and bring him in just to help us out. So we can have an over-resounding siege of the capital. Let's move into Grunzit and take it for ourselves. Um, I guess dwarfs you know, used to hold it at one point. And then we'll continue our advance and we'll kick things off. Episode 6 coming out tomorrow with the siege of the Bretonian capital. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed episode 5 here today. Make sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. If you haven't already, would really much appreciate it. And the war against Bretonia and their remaining counts. We're going to start things off getting war decked by a bunch of factions. Firstly, Durthu and the Wood Elves and Throg. So hopefully we can come over these, overcome, let's say, these new adversaries. So if you'd like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video a like and subscribe if you're new. I'd really much appreciate it. All right, this is what we currently control and occupy as the Empire. We're going to be continuing our war against Bretonia here today, but unfortunately, the Wood Elves and more Norsecan tribes have united against us. We do have that military alliance with Kislev, so we are going to be able to create an outpost in one of their lands, ideally to get those juicy bear riders. But we're going to have the siege and assault of the Bretonian capital here today. So we're under the pump a little bit. And hopefully, we can come out on top. Now, I think this is the best place to recruit an outpost. Which is kind of surprising in the southern oblast. You'd think that, like, Kislev itself would 
naturally be able to recruit more units. So Durthu has marched south from his uh, well, Woodland Realm, and he's at to besiege Gromberg. Now that's quite annoying because they're really quite close to Altdorf. They have two, two full stacks here at the moment. It sucks that the Wood Elves have marched against us when we're at war with Bretonia now. Obviously, we've got the natural enemies of various beastmen and chaos demons and stuff. But, yeah, now that there's like two like law-friendly factions going to war against me, it's really going to be tough. So, we've got an army from Slovenia heading on over. Uh, Carl Franz, I still want to try and wrap up this war against Bretonia as quickly as possible. And then, I guess we go against our new enemy, the Wood Elves. They have been corrupted, potentially. But anyway, hopefully we can be successful in this war against Bretonia. A lot of good territory, very habitable for us, and resource rich. Alright, so we're only a turn away from Grunberg, but it's probably going to fall, which is a shame. It'd be quite a shock losing a settlement in Reichland. So let's move uh, this army down. Now, it probably could retake the settlement if we want, but we do have to be a little bit cautious. We do have tier two armies, I would say, mid-tier armies. We've got decent amount of artillery and great swords. Plenty of crossbows. All right, so let's get Carl Franz to besiege the Bretonian capital. We could build some siege equipment. Let's move this secondary army up. Or maybe we're more than capable enough just to attack it. Yeah, particularly now with those reinforcements. All right, let's uh, get stuck into the siege of Kiron. Nice, so, let's move my cannon to try and target the gateway. And if we can take Leon Leonkeur's capital, that would be a massive blow to the Bretonian war effort. Okay, so let's form things up. First time attacking Bretonia. And their capital in Warhammer 3. Carl Franz will send on in. Let's start the battle. And let's get our great swords up. Two regiments of renowned. Three normal. Total of five. That's what I personally prefer. We've got a bit of a mix match of archers. Really experienced crossbowmen. And regiments of renowned. We haven't got the perfect artillery build. In my opinion. Which would be... Five Hellstorm rocket batteries. <laughs> They're just quite expensive. And he's on this war campaign, Carl Franz, so it's going to be a little while before he can recruit back in the Empire. But we do have one unit of Hellstorm rocket batteries. Unfortunately, due to the thick forest that's sort of protecting the front of it, we're not going to get all the best shots off. But uh, here we go. Check out this amazing settlement. Artillery's bombarding. Artillery's really awesome in this game, particularly for the value for money. But here is... Bretonia. What a gorgeous looking settlement. Nice. So our army is actually deploying from the other side. So we are going to be attacked from be able to attack from over there. All right. So Carl Franz is getting stuck into the thick of it. Now we have to be a little bit careful because they have some of the best cavalry in the game, Bretonia. But thankfully, we're only fighting the garrison. So, it shouldn't be too overly difficult. But if we keep things up, we should be able to take the city with ease. Not the hardest battle, but it's culturally significant to see Carl Franz conquering and fighting and battling in the streets of Bretonia. Alright, let's move my light wizard up. I do want to try and get more access to more wizards, but we are still pretty early in the game. Now, I've moved my archers up. Once we put them on the walls, they're going to be able to rain skirmish fire, arrows and bolts with impunity upon the Bretonian inhabitants. They have built some barricades, but it's very minimal. The gateway has fallen, and our infantry are now in, and we're bringing more reinforcements day by day. Oh, our reinforcements have arrived, and they're going to attack from the far side here. So I guess we'll just grab everyone, and we'll try and push up towards this gateway. Look at that. That is a beautiful shot. Check out that. Screenshot that. Shit, that looks so good. I do quite like the um, architecture of Bretonia. It looks sick. 
I do find it amazing that the modders in the Total War Attila 1212 AD mod were able to actually port <laughs> some of these buildings over to that game. It's kind of crazy what modders can do. I can't wait as well for the rest of the community to get your hands on this. Can't wait to see what the modders do. Which you might actually have access to by the time this video comes out. But hey, still down to do more Total War Warhammer 3 content on the channel. But this is going to be a long and juicy Empire campaign. So if you are enjoying it, support it. And I'll do more episodes. But so far we're doing daily episodes of this Empire campaign. And it's a lot of fun. I love playing as the Empire. <laughs> Some people give me shit because it's like, dude, why are you playing as the Empire? <laughs> there's literally like 80 new, there's like 80 legendary lords you can play. I do find that quite funny. I know, I like playing as humans. Because I'm human, <laughs> I like to play from this perspective. I don't know. Okay. So, most of the garrison is now in a retreat. It's mostly just the heavies now holding. Carl Franz is taking a little bit of a batting, battering. I am being hyper-aggressive with good old Carl. Just chucking him into the thick of it. But, he is taking a little bit of a battering. In the battle against Vlad von Karstein, he inflicted quite significant damage as well. But everyone else is doing fine. The Grey Swords are slowly but surely gaining ground, inch by inch, as they engage Bretonian Cavalry and the rest of the remaining garrison infantry. Our archers are currently on the walls as well, but they are actually getting countered by arrow towers and a trebuchet unit as well, which is hitting us cleanly. So hopefully we can try and neutralize that and stop that from ultimately firing against me because it's actually done a lot of da damage in combination with arrow fire there but we're 99 yeah there we go 99 percent now controlled towards victory and they've capitulated 300 men lost which is a bit seeing as the garrison just deployed a thousand carl franz ends the battle with the most kills being the MVP. The Mortars were able to get 100 each because they were able to arc their shots. And a decisive victory. The heart and capital of Bretonia has fallen. That will really uh, slow down their military production efficiency. And look at this. This is quite a built-up settlement. Crikey. Oh, wow. A lot of investment here as well. Nice, and we are going to be able to get high-quality wizards from their capital now. Yeah. Although it's not law-friendly, but it's always... If you can take out Bretonia as the Empire, it's always worth it, because their lands are just so, so good. And you can avoid going against your own elect accounts. Alright, welcome to the top of the turn. 60 turns into the Let's Play now. Alright, so... Let's bring all of the marches firmly under Imperial control. Nice. And we also have a port now on the doorsteps of Ulthwan. Hope we can get trade with the High Elves. Back in Altdorf. We're still a little bit away before we can get wizards, but we want to do that at some point. I think we actually can probably get them here, matter of fact. Uh... Which one is it? Yeah. A wizard's conclave. We might be able to get... We might be better off to get our wizards being recruited from Bretonia, if you know what I mean. Hmm. Confederation offered. Who's this? The Golden Empire. Oh, wow. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the confederation we want. Belthazar, Gelt, and Calfred's back together. <laughs> the, the boy band's back together. Hell yeah. Oh, we definitely needed that. Well, he's actually on the border there with the Wood Elves. Maybe he saw Wood Elf Incursion. Oh, God, how's he doing? So what's he got down? Oh, dude, he has really expanded far south past uh, Blackfire Pass. He's moved into Border Prince territory. Oh, wow. We are hemorrhaging heaps of cash, though. 
Is that Sartosa? Yeah. He also has the vaults. He's got a bunch of agents, though. Oh, <laughs> Ryan might have been attacking him. That's not good. Because we are all with Dirtha. It's probably only a matter of time before the rest of the Wood Elves probably join against me. So, we have to probably... Reduce some of this expenditure. And it's probably mostly going to come in the form of agents. We don't need an army here in Pitdorf, as particularly with there's like two agents. I might try and leave the agents to last, because they do cost quite a bit, about 300 per turn, but they are worth keeping as many of them as you can, embedding them in armies. So I think we start off with, there's like two armies here that are quite small. Uh, looking at Balthazar Gelt's army, eh, not too bad. Maybe a little bit better than what I expected. He's ranked 15, which is good. But now, he can probably start a southern push against the Wood Elves. So, if we reduce these two armies, what are we looking at? At a negative. Because we kind of need this army to just go after Durthu. Here is um, Gelt, by the way. And here are his stats. Okay. Not too bad. I kind of wish he had the mod where we could reset everything. Alright, so, I suppose we make... Gelt the elector count of his own lands, like why not? I would imagine that would piss him off if we took it and gave it to someone else. So we need to try and stop this attack at Grunberg. I suppose we force march, because we're not going to be able to get there if we manually walk on in. And we'll get the garrison of Grunberg on news of the army rocking up to help to it uh, rocking up to help to attack okay good that's pushed them back so thankfully Grunberg did not fall because we were able to mobilize an army with uh, Vladimir van Horstman very strong imperial name that's what I like van Horstman yeah <laughs> all right let's uh move you back up to Fort Saul and I suppose we'll try and move as many of these agents in um, at least one of the... Right. So we can't get any allied recruitment. We get some bloody ogres. Um, but we're currently hemorrhaging cash. I don't think we need that now. Alright, so what's going on here? We probably have to attack this. I suppose we move south. Alright, now... I believe this has been a little bit contested territory. This has gone back and forth. A lot of vampiric corruption here. So we should be able to loot and occupy. That, that will actually stop our negative debt. We were at war with the Red Duke, but there was a quick peace treaty with him, but no, you never can trust a fucking vampire, can you? Quote me. <laughs> never trust a vampire. <laughs> anyway, let's uh, move Carl south, because they might actually retake Artis. Alright, um, do we go after the Wood Elves here? Jeez, minus four. That confederation... Although we've basically spawned a couple armies with Gelt, particularly in the south, we are going to be negatively affected overall. Um, yeah, we'll fight this one. We'll try and take back Montfort. And hopefully we can be successful. Alright, so it's going to be an open field battle. And most of them are deploying from the top left. Okay, so we'll try and match our units there. So this army is a little bit weaker. Nowhere near as many regiments of renown. However, we still have artillery supremacy in the form of our mortars. But we've got to be super careful against the Wood Elves. Them and the vampires, I would say, are probably the hardest factions for the Empire to face. Like... It's, it kind of sucks that they have war decked me because the Wood Elves are comp it's complicated because they're densely forest territory we're not going to be able to really get all the benefits from. It kind of sucks. The AI has been hyper aggressive. We've been war decked by so many factions. Um, we're actually fighting a lot of defensive wars which is interesting. We never declared war upon Bretonia. We only acted on Artis when they attacked me. I think the vampires... I think we've been fighting defensive wars this entire time. We're only defending ourselves. We have the right to self-defense. <laughs> we haven't had an off offensive war except for like... Um, Marienburg. That was quite offensive. And like the Norsecan tribes in the north. Alright, so we crushed her. So we can actually end the battle here if we want to. But I actually don't. I would rather them 
come into the battlefield in a worse position. But it's just like their archers, heavy hitting, um, their aerial capabilities, their monsters as well. So this is probably a really big test. Also, I have started, I've played this battle after taking a bunch of attrition going through the former vampiric lands of the Barrow Legion. We lost men trying to cross the mountain pass. But our archers and crossbows are fully fit. And already, look at this, taking a little bit of a, an impact of damage. Even their magical abilities as well. Their glade warriors are sick. So, expect this excursion into the deep wood to cost many empire lives. And ultimately a war I don't really want to do. But hey, you've attacked me. We'll try and... The best way to go for peace is just to beat them into submission. And then we'll recalibrate. So we're fighting on a war on two fronts. I suppose it's doing so much damage and carnage against Bretonia, the Wood Elves. Thought. To try and save them. Now our mortars are going to do a lot of damage against their tree kin. But yeah, the Wood Elves roster is really, really good. Probably like one of the best like near us in the continent but hopefully we can prevail the vampiric influence has really fallen off in the old world but there's still a bunch of wood elf influence because there's that like wood elf enclave uh, in the north isn't there so we're gonna watch out for them. Like, do you know that like between the Norsk and border? It's it's now it's it's around the Black Hills. Yeah, yeah, sort of the mist, Misty Hills, or whatever it's called. Black the Black Pit. That's what I'm trying to think of. I'm trying to remember the place off the top of my head. And we've also got uh, Dry Edge as well. Okay, so thankfully they have deployed on in quite narrowly. And my mortars are having an absolute field day here. Luckily, Rizard, my general, is mounted on, I guess, Deathclaw's sibling. I don't know. What if they all hatch together? Oh, what? Oh, okay. He's capitulated. Ah, uh, that's not good. We need to get him out of there. He's got a lot of health. I just think he must have withdrew, essentially because of terror and fear. Okay, our great swords are holding for now. Thankfully, we actually have lopsided. Probably with skirmishes in this, so we're actually kind of trading with their superior archers. Still a little bit back and forth. 50 50, I'd say. We've managed to get our gunners and pistoliers with a little bit of high ground. Because those bad boys are really going to try and break them down. But this is way, way too close to call. I can't wait to look at the casualties sustained and inflicted. Alright, you've actually recovered. Oh, thank God. So move you back behind our friendly lines. Because making sure your Aurora is still strong. We still want those leadership bonuses. Yeah, I think I think you just like got a bit scared. Right, we actually outnumber them by about 400, but we've still lost significantly. Come on, just need to hold out that little bit. Our mortars are halfway through our ammunition dump. Come on, come on, just keep on going. Target these guys at the back. Our front lines are both wavering. We've even got archers capitulating. Maybe we just need to go after General. Oh, nice. We've somehow pulled it away there. Oh my god, that was uh, way, way too close for me. For my liking. But we're going to be able to retake Montfort and throw back at least one full Wood Elf full stack. Now, we're going to be a little bit careful here because they are retreating quite well. We just want to try and run down as many of them as we can. However, we we don't we lack any cavalry in this build, so we're going to have to allow 
our archers slash artillery and our general unit just to try and run down as many of them as we can. Like, really focus on those tree kin. Because facing them again is going to be really tough. But nice, we got the W. 644. Yeah, so we actually outnumbered them closer to 500. The mortars did really well. 100 apiece. Yeah, the great swords, even at half health, got 122 kills. Crikey, that is a very, very good result. Alrighty, well, we'll continue this war against the Wood Elves, and we'll try and wrap up the rest of what will be the Bretonian resistance now, and we want to put fully our capabilities in uh, bringing Durthu. So, we're throwing absolutely everything we've got against those bark bastards. <laughs> so, uh, let's take Monfort uh, first up here today, bringing it back under Imperial control. So, we've really pretty much defeated Bretonia here. There's only some rebel scum uh, here and there. And then we're going to be continuing on our full-on incursion into the woodland realm. So we're going to replenish and repair with Rizard. Also, in the last episode, we managed to get the band back together, bringing in Balthazar Gelt into the fold. So we've got him directly under our control. We're just going to try and get rid of the last of these Bretonian armies here. But we're doing pretty well in this campaign. We are now 62 turns into it. Unfortunately, Bretonia att attacked us. They've been crushed. Hopefully, the Wood Elves join the list. However, I haven't forgotten about the Norskans to the north and Throg. So we're probably going to have to send in a force up there. We've wrapped up uh, the vampire counts, except for the Red Duke to the south. But in the old world, there's no vampires anywhere near us. We've got to keep a watchful eye on the other Elector counts and various other Wood Elf, Wood Elf factions that we're yet to be at war with, but that's what we control in green, which is a huge chunk. We're going to be sending Carl Franz down south to hopefully take the Water Palace, and if we can take their capital, that would be uh, magnificent. They do have a lot of for former Dwarven settlements in the mountains, though, which are going to complicate things in this Wood Elf invasion. Ah, oh, God. Does anyone else want to fucking have some? Grom the Paunch. Now the Greenskins are probably going to come after us, for fuck's sake. And Bretonia has officially been destroyed. Fan bloody tastic. Alright, so Belthazar Gelt can push into... Yeah, so the Southern Grey Mountains are surprisingly fully under Wood Elf control. Maybe because I've allied so... Like, my closest ally are the Dwarves. We've got so many negotiations with them. Maybe... Yeah, we've just been a little bit unlucky with the Wood Elf and Bretonia coalition against us. The Wood Elf one is a lot worse because we're not going to benefit overly from taking their territories, which sucks. But uh, so be it, I suppose. Alright, so, skipping a couple turns ahead. We're just outside the Waterfall Palace and we can make a play. Another Wood Elf work faction has declared war upon me. But it looks like Durthu has fled back to the mountains. But we're going to go after the capital and we're going to burn this bush down that's in circle and we'll bring in the secondary army here as we all need it we are still getting some negative penalties due to our confederation but overall we have what four or five armies in operation anyway let's have the battle of waterfall palace it's going to be a good one thankfully there's not too many tree kin um, a lot of glade guard which is something we have to keep an eye out for, and Way Watchers as well. But Carl Franz attacking their capital. Hopefully, well, we're going to be able to burn the bush down. Oh, look how densely forested this is. Shit. Okay, so that sucks because it's probably. Oh my god, look how. It's kind of realistic, I suppose, how densely forest it would be okay the problem is what I can foresee is the hell storm rocket battery and cannons are gonna basically not gonna be able to arc their shots over those tree and those trees and they're probably gonna be smashing their uh, ammunitions like into the fucking trees and splintering shit everywhere so 
We're going to have to heavily rely on our mortar capacity. But we're going to take this one a little bit slow. We'll move on up. We'll try and allow our artillery, well, anyone that can fire, to try and soft them up as we can. And we'll wait uh, 50 seconds, a minute or so, before we can move in our reinforcements. Because it does look like the Water Elves are going to fight tooth and nail. This is the garrison. Uh, don't you forget, this is an, uh, an army as well. So we've got to be a little bit careful. They're going to be fighting to the bitter end. And just looking at the deployment zones as well. A lot of high ground, a lot of coverage. They are definitely going to use the terrain to their advantage. Because if they're going to sit in this tree line and just start peppering us down from height. We're going to struggle to like shoot and hit anything in. We do have some outriders here. So these guys should really cause some damage. Particularly against these war dancers. As they are very under armoured. So let's try and get a volley here. This thing should absolutely wreck them if it's a good shot. Nice, and would you look at that. Unfortunately, ladies... Oh my god, they're down to half health. Perfect, that's what I like to see. However, we're being hitting on the side here. Oh, we're losing a decent chunk of our own. Damn, Glade Guard. Try and move away from that shot there. What's the zone? Yeah, okay. We can actually just, if you press air space bar, you can see how far they are away. Okay, so our infantry is getting a little bit hit here, and our reinforcements have arrived, which is fantastic. So we want to try and initiate combat with our infantry soon. Whoops, did a minute pause there. Let's uh, move those riders around. Oh, we've also got some demigriff knights as well. They should really be able to cause some carnage flanking. Alright, thankfully we've got a bunch of Mortars 5, which is fantastic. Let's just reorganize this better. I like to have everything in zones of control, particularly if you're fighting with like 40 units. The micro can be a little bit hard, so easy just to group up all the infantry, all the archers and artillery. So, And then like, um, I like to make a, a gunner section as well. Alright, let's advance now that everyone's basically here. And let's move a little bit further up as well. Everyone's on skirmish mode and fire at will, so let's just try and move everyone up where we can. But already, the Water Elf archers are absolutely shredding us in certain units. Let's move on up as we can, and we'll give out some attack orders as well. This is kind of a hard settlement to take. There's a lot of elevation. Like... This terrain is just really conducive to their playstyle. They're kind of doing like guerrilla warfare tactics. Our artillery is moving on up. Here are our demi griff knights. Can't wait to get these puppies in. The champions of Altdorf. Alright, everyone else is moving up as well. Trading some fire here and there. Alright, we're trying to go after some of their Glade Guard. Some of the Great Swords have initiated combat, but men versus elves. You think an alliance would last for a lifetime? We're currently at war. Now, hopefully, this doesn't negatively affect the High Elves too much, because they are a lot stronger than probably what I worry about. But if we can get rid of Dirthu, the quicker the better. Yeah, I wonder what Orion's position is on this. Because it was Durthu and his tree kin to kick things off. The bloody end. <laughs> okay, so those Outriders have recovered. Those Demigriff Knights are just standing still. Oh, that's a damn shame. We're going to have to break these barricades before we come fully around. They're actually blocking our progression a little bit. Even up here as well. Alright, let's give it an attack order there. We've capitulated the three units that we're able to hit. But this is not good if we're pushing up this causeway here. They're actually hitting us from multiple sides. Uh, let's get Carl Franz into the thick of it. Oh, one poor unit here. A little bit more friendly fire than anything. Alright, make sure you break down this barricade. You have to be a little bit careful. Okay. Oh, it seems like some of the units are bugged over the top. That's okay. We're going to be able to hit them then. I do want to try and cycle charge as best we can. Get these guys into combat. Oh, some of our Hellstorm rocket batteries are somehow getting some shots off over the top. 
Nice that they've slightly moved up. But once we've done with the Wood Elves, I can only imagine that the Greenskins are probably on the fucking list next. Now they're at war on uh, against uh, Grom the Forge. Alright, let's uh, move up to the town square now. Yeah, just looking at some of the health of these greatswords, I think just some of them have been caught. It's the fact that, obviously, greatswords don't have any shields or very little blocking protection, and they're just getting hit from multiple vectors of attack. If a unit gets hit on the rear and side, they do lose a lot more. And we're kind of hitting our own men there. Okay. I wasn't expecting... This seems to be overly too difficult. But did we not break that down? Why do we stop? Okay, I thought I had an order there. I guess we hit the unit. But... I did say that we've got to be really careful. Oh, nice. We've got the W there. Let's try and run down as many of them as we can. Uh, we got, I want to see uh, a perfect charge down from these Demogriff Knights for the first time in this series. Here come the champions of Altdorf. Running up a hill. So they lost their momentum slightly. There we go. Feast boys. <laughs> no, but I was, what I was saying, if there's like a if there's like a tier list of factions that the Empire struggles against and excels, I would definitely say that probably Bretonia, they're probably B tier. Um, a difficulty. Then we've got like the vampires and the wood elves. Like they are really hard factions. We really got to watch out for them. Look, the Empire against Norska. Quite frankly, other Empire factions. Um. We can really do. It's, it, we're, we're, they can be really tough to go against. I reckon would even have an easier time against the dwarves. If you can just sort of whittle them down before they even get to your front line, because they're just so mo slow moving and you've got stuff to break through their Magnus. heavy armor. Like, even they are an easier faction than I think compared to the wood elves or the vampires. It's just like their skirmishing ability, their aerial apparatus. And their archers, basically. Like, the hit-and-run tactics. When they go full guerrilla warfare on you, it can be quite difficult. But anyway, we've taken the Waterfall Palace. But, like I said, even this invasion is going to come at high Imperial losses. And we're not even going to be able to overly benefit from it as well, because most of the territory isn't hospitable. Okay. So I don't know why Findle attacked me, but yeah, some of the Wood Elves are keeping neutral. Okay. We're going to have to bring this secondary army up. Like, even moving through the forest as well, we're losing attrition. Uh, let's get some Reichsguard. Oh, I really don't like war wagons, personally, so let's just try and get any other units we can, we can from the Elect accounts. Right, now that you've moved you on here, nice. That should be enough. I actually think this must... This actually might be... Uh, even though we're losing a couple units there. I think we should auto-resolve this one. Because... Like, even before when it was just one of them, we lost a lot of units. We probably would have lost less in that auto-resolve, even though we lost three. If we manually played that, I reckon it could have been. Well, we've already lost three or four last time. Manually playing when it's manually playing another battle that's like doubled the army size um, would probably lose more, I think. So I think that was a tactical order resolve we should have done. Okay, nice. We can get an Altdorf conclave of battle wizards uh, in Altdorf now compared to the one in Bretonia, which we constructed before. Ah, oh, brilliant. Bellacor has invaded. And is going to start pressurizing our northern border. Hopefully he doesn't raise it. Oh, he fucking did as well. <laughs> Durthu wants peace. Piss off. Hey, I didn't even realize it. Did it pop up? We've hit our short victory conditions. The Empire Successionists, the Barrow Legion, and Sylvania have been destroyed. At plus three capacity for all heroes and 30 regions. So, we're currently 13 over. So, I didn't even realize. <laughs> we have completed the short victory conditions of this campaign. Domination is 272, which is still a long way away. Um, maybe we should do a domination. That'd be insane. But, um, it'd be up to you guys. 
But we've completed our short victory conditions. Let me know in the comments. Should I go for long or domination? It most, it's mostly up to you guys supporting it. Look, if you guys are enjoying it, liking, subbing, the views are good. I'm still enjoying it, of course, up most. Along with you guys supporting it. We'll do more. If not, we'll maybe move on to another campaign. And maybe do a short victory campaign. I'm thinking maybe the High Elves next, though, by the way. Alrighty, so... Interestingly enough, we've actually taken most of Durthu's like, forest territory. He's fled up into the mountains in Karak Norn. Which is interesting. So, Belthazar Gelt is pushing from the south. Uh, Carl Franz is now going to be pushing after going past the... Um, the fort at Helmgart. He's going to attack from the north while Balthazar pushes from the south. After skipping a little bit ahead, we are now 70 turns into this Empire Let's Play. What's this? Oh my god. Unfortunately, the Great Prophet, the Bloody Hands, are starting to attack our territory. They're really coming after us. Shit. That was, um, some Border Prince territory. Oh my god, and Bellacore as well? Oh, okay. We're gonna have to deal with them at some point. Alright, so the Red Duke declared war upon us, and he actually took Leoness. We've got an opportunity now to make peace with him, but I've just been so preoccupied with the war against the Wood Elves, trying to crush and finish them. The best way to stop future attacks from an enemy faction is to destroy them. So that's what I'm focusing on now. However, thanks to Grom the Paunch and some of the Greenskins, we've been uh, we've got a lot of pressure from other Greenskin tribes. Essentially, we've got Bellacor as well. We're gonna have the siege for Karak Norn. So if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video a like and subscribe if you're new. I would really much appreciate it. We are 73 turns into the campaign. Half of the elect accounts are under our control. We're dealing with a green skin curse in all our lands. Um, Bellacor is uh, taking territory in the north with these Norskins. Um, Bretonia has fallen. The vampire counts have fallen as well. And hopefully it's the last of the Wood Elves. So overall, things are doing good, but we are definitely under the pump by enemies. Once again, we're fighting on multiple fronts. So once we get rid of Dirthu, hopefully that will give us some breathing room to recalibrate, replenish and repair, and get out of this godforsaken territory in and around the, um, the mountains here. And sort of the Wood Elf territory as well. And hopefully we can just sort of throw back the Green Scourge, which is popping up now. We've got uh, the Bloody Hands taking territory in and around central Reichland, which can be annoying. And then what we've got to deal with Bellacor and his demons to the north. But overall, we're doing all right. <laughs> Let's have the Siege of Karak Norn here today. Now, we're going to have to be a little bit careful here. As we are fighting with the weaker of the two armies. Cal Franz is coming on in with Balthazar Gelt being the leader commander for this one. Now this is a, well, randomly generated army that we managed to pick up when we confederated with him. So we're really going to have to rely on Carl Franz as reinforcements because it's not the most optimal army build. There's a lot of things not to like. The captain's okay. The witch hunter, meh. We've got four units of halberds, which actually might not be too bad. Um, they'll be quite efficient against anything large, essentially. If there's any tree kin and stuff. Two swordsmen, crossbowmen, really lacking artillery. We've only got the one piece. And, oh, interesting. This is like the same settlement, like the exact same one that we faced with Vlad von Karstein, yeah, in Oakenhammer. Dude, I kind of feel bad for the the dwarfs in this series. They have been really quite under the kibosh, losing territory left, right, and center. I wonder if that's a common occurrence in other people's campaigns. Do the, the dwarves not last too long? Anyway, we're probably going to do a similar tactic to when we fought Vlad. 
We'll try and choke point off this bridge here. Allow our skirmishers and archers and artillery to do most of the work. Now, it's still going to be a little bit of a time delay before those reinforcements come on in. And I guess Durthu, very much the same as Vlad von Karstein, is going to be quite a difficult adversary to fight in 1v1. Karl Franz is going to struggle in this one. All right, let's move on up. Both of our gelts now here, but unfortunately we've only just got him, got him under our control, and he isn't specced the best, unfortunately. But hopefully we can come out with the W. In the last episode as well, we hit our short victory conditions, and we're about halfway towards long as well, which is nice. Okay, these skirmishes are going to hit us with impunity here. So we really should not uh, fucking allow that. So let's move on up and give out some attack orders. Right, our mortars are starting to put some damage on in. Right. So luckily we did bring up these reinforcements because there probably would have been no which way we would have won it with just this army. But here comes Carl. Never fear, ladies and gentlemen. The Emperor is here. Alright, let's try and move everyone up as quick as we can. Let's give out some attack orders. And now, the reinforcements are here. We can probably pinch them from multiple sides. Here we go. But man, oh man. I would say, up there with the vampire counts, these damn wood elves are so, so good against us. They've definitely been our hardest adversary that we've faced. So, definitely have to be cautious and meticulous in your approach if you do declare war upon them as the Empire. Word of advice. It's just like that they have the perfect units to sort of counter you. Especially if you go with a sort of army build that I like. Very limited infantry, a lot of artillery and skirmishes yourself. Because like, I only bring a limited amount of infantry. And if you do lose those great swords, the battle can be kind of fucking chalked. Alright. Let's uh, give out some attack orders here. Let's move in our Demogriff Knights as well. Now, we'll try and go after every single individual unit we can find in and around the city. Then we'll focus on Durthu himself. Although he's only a low level 11, we're going to need artillery and probably skirmishes to bring him down. Maybe. I am being cautious in that. However, I will send Carl Franz up to engage in 1v1 combat just to see how well he can do. We're already putting some pressure on them. Thanks to Gelt. But we have currently six lords, two legendary, and then heroes and stuff under our control. Alright, so we've trapped Durthu in place. Hopefully we can get some artillery to help. And snaring him still, Karl Franz, with Gal Moraz, should be able to inflict some high damage. Okay, you're getting caught here, Light Wizard, so we have to be careful with you. They're starting to build up some barricades. Oh, shit. They actually brought out those two agents. Fuck. Hang on. Swing around here. Deal with them. Nice. We've managed to... ...take the choke points here. Let's continue to advance. And... Although we can't chase those units, we're actually phasing them out slowly. Which is right. Oh, okay. Carl has lost a decent chunk of his health there. Upwards of 15 to 20%. So, we'll move him back. Last thing we want is... France to capitulate. Now let's fucking lose this one. Alright, let's get the great swords in. Alright, they're building barricades everywhere, so it's stopping the movement of our commands. Dude, we have done absolutely nothing against Durthu. Uh, and they're gonna try and pin him down. Shit. Come on. We need Carl Franz's army in here quick, fast. Alright, let's continue to advance. We've also got to watch out as well, they do get a, pe um, a bonus 
sitting up on those barricades. Alright, let's move our artillery and firepower here. Dude, once they get in range, we should be able to turn the tide. Because essentially, we've got one mortar, one cannon. The mortar's fine continu continuously, it's used half of its ammunition. The cannon's only probably used about 40 and is only shooting sporadically. Our friends and Gelter at Hearth Health. Oh, we've lost one of our warrior priests. Alright, we've got a couple of units capitulating, so we just have to be a little bit careful. But Durthu, top tier, S tier, in 1v1 combat. Dude's an absolute beast. Just chuck him on in, he will tear up units. Right, that agent's gone. Let's go after one of them. Particularly if you give him the Sword of Cain. It's one of the... Better units. He's even got another Treeman there as well, so that's going to really complicate things. Shit. Okay, our Light Wizard has capitulated. That sucks. Alright, let's try and bring this Treeman down. Focus on him. But if we are successful here today, this should be the end of Durthu. And hopefully the last of the Wood Elves that sort of oppose us. Yeah, I would not have chosen this war... ...if I had a choice. They did attack me at the end of the day. God, just once again, we are losing casualties left, right, and center. We are just trading so hard. But they did offer me peace a while ago, but you just can't trust them. Like, we took basically their forest territory, but they fled into the mountains near Karak Norn. And what? The only problem is, like, you just can't trust the AI in this. So, okay, we make, we sue for peace, but we go all the way to Norsk and then they attack us and take more territory in Reichland. I'll never forgive and forget when Durthu besieged, although he didn't take it, besieged and terrified the people of Grunberg. We'll make a big fucking bonfire <laughs> for the occasion. Alright, so let's uh, get some of these great swords to flank. Alright, let's move up Gelt. So there seems to be about six units left. We've progressed into the first and second half into the city. Now we're pushing into the final third, where Durthu's sort of hanging in and around the garrison. But we'll get all my skirmishes here to fire everything at Durthu just to weaken him up. Our mortars and artillery, everything should be to start peppering him. Hearth health, hopefully we can reduce that further. Because our infantry there. They're getting softened up by skirmisher fire. Look at that, a lot of them at half health. Jeez. And in combination with their magical missile, missiles, once they get into combat, they're coming up against decent blade guard or sword dancers or whatever. Alright. Nice. So, <laughs> we've got like six units peppering him. We've got an abundance of artillery and we've been on like 20% damage. Absolutely nothing. Gelt's about to fall. We've chucked Carl back in just because I want to pin him in place. Because we're running out of Winds of Magic. Come on, bring him down. Bring it down! Nice. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. The corrupted Durthu is no more. And a Pyrrhic victory at that. Oh, holy shit. We actually outnumbered them massively as well. We brought 2,600. Then had 1,400. Oh my god, nearly 2 to 1. Mass casualties as well. Gold and silver chevron. Durthu! Absolute chad!
But now that uh, should be the last of them. Yours is probably the, the stronger of the two. I would say Dirth is probably a stronger faction than Orion, to be fair. Oh, God. Casualties left, right, and center. Oh, no! Fuck, I didn't realize we lost a Hellstorm rocket battery. <laughs> Shit! Anyway, let's take Karak Norn. And hopefully that's the last of them. Hey, oh, they are defeated. All right. There's no rest for the wicked. As the greenskins are still continuing on their skirt. You fucking kidding me. Oh, my God. Would you believe it? Dreitch. Come off it. Oh, Wurzag. Leave me alone. Um, okay. We've been attacked here, which is strange. Vladimir, he was moving north. I guess we'll auto resolve that. That's odd. I wasn't ex anticipating that. I sent an army north to try and stop Bellicor and his allies. Oh my god, and the bloody ogres have now joined a war against us. Oh god. <laughs> there is absolutely no break in this. Oh, dude, Immortal Empires is brutal. What garrison do we have here? Because we could march out. Alright, so we've successfully be beaten Durthu, but we're still dealing with the Greenskin incursion, and now, yeah, Dryach has attacked me. I, I would imagine she would be quite upset for what we did to Durthu. I'm sure Carl Franz has strung up the old tree and made a really nice desk back in Reichland. <laughs> Big, nice, oiled, mahogany-looking desk. Alright, so we've sent one unit north to try and stabilize the region um, due to the Norskan incursions. Uh, Bellicor is just in the north. He's been sending units down, so we'll send an army there. So we've got two in the north operating to try and recolonize and maybe just try and take back some of the regions. And then the rest are going after the Greenskins. Oh, we actually can win this one. Because he's so weak. I don't know, because... Oh, Savage Orcs are crazy in combat, though. We actually might be better off to take the auto-resolve there. Oh, well, there he goes. That's weird. Oh, my God. I've just started to leave. As you can see, Carl Franz has left the mountains. Oh, and now another Wood Elf faction has declared war upon me. Um, Ungrim. Wants a military alliance. I'm going to accept that. We've got really good relations with the dwarves in this series, so I want that to continue. Um, okay. Throt has declared war upon me. First major Skaven faction to attack me. I don't think we fought the Skaven in this series at all. They are north. Um, past Kislev. Kaskastic. Anyone fucking else? Anyone else want to declare war upon me? This has turned into a bloody This Is Turtle War. Everyone's attacking me. God damn it. <laughs> but let's embrace it. Let's fucking go. Oh, I'll have you. Come on. Another. Right. She wants peace, thankfully. Oh, my God. It's because we're just like a rising regional threat. Oh, my God. Look how many people are at war with. It's kind of insane. It's brutal, man. It's tough. But I kind of like it. I like it a lot. And especially when there's a legendary lord leading the faction. Someone to keep an eye on. We are now nearly 80 turns into the Let's Play. So, those units that were going to go against the treatment, no more. Just look at this. Look who we're at war with Bellicor, Throg, Grom, Scrag. Alright, so this is what we currently control. Nearly all of Bretonia. Half of the Empire. So, I've divided into some defending grids here. At each corner defending of the Empire. Okay. So, Morgas there. Um... So, Rizard, defending 
essentially south of Montfort. We're going to be able to take this from them. Yes. Former Bretonian settlement. The Wood Elves took it, so we'll retake it off him again. But he's operating down south of Helmgart. Anyone else wants to make the peace? No. Mm -hmm. Alright, Vladimir's heading north to retake Wrecker's Point back from the Norskans here. Nice. We'll probably have to keep an army here permanently. Okay. So the beastmen have moved into our territory. We can't allow them to stay, so we'll throw them back. And I guess we'll just sort of hold this point. Okay. Ah! Orion's faction actually took it. Okay. So that water faction that we were at war with has been destroyed. Gone the Paunch has moved up. The problem is when a war's going, they've got two full stacks essentially. So Rizard is holding here. We'll move back. And if Grom attacks, we'll uh, we'll deal with him. Alrighty, so we've got one, two, three, four, five. Six or so armies in operation. We also although the bloody hands were defeated, they still occupy some settlements from me, so. And they still have um, territory in Everland. So I've been retaking those. But the dwarves have moved into there, which is kind of annoying. So we've got two armies in the south, ready to stop any incursion. We also want to try and rebuild the army slightly. Rizard is holding the south. Uh, Vladimir is holding against Norskans to the north. And we're actually under besiege at Marienburg, so we're probably going to have to lift that. And Bellacor is probably going to push towards the grass, but uh, the brass keep. So we'll send Gilt over there as well. But although we've been under the pump a bit, we've managed to retake our territory, and things are looking a lot better. If we can sort of reduce the amount of factions we're at war with, that'd be the better. So we'll try and lift that siege of Marienburg. If we're not there in time, we're going to have to probably manually play it. And it looks like Bellacor is probably going to attack the brass keep as well. It's just because we we fully I, I pull, fully threw everything into the invasion of Bretonia, and then the Wood Elves attacked us. So we were kind of neglecting our northern provinces to some extent. So hopefully they can have some regional defensive armies. We can have one in the north defending Norska. We can have one in the south defending um, sort of the old Bretonian territory that Grom the Paunch has influence over. We'll try and keep Gilt probably up near the Brass Keep um, to defend against Bellacor and other... Chaos factions that are pushing through beyond the waste um, and Kislev because they don't seem to be that strong in this series. Throt and other demonic factions are pushing south. And then we'll have Carl basically going to any. Um, going after any faction we want to offensively take territory. So we'll keep them a bit mobile. And then I guess we keep another one um, in and around Sylvania um, near the Ogres as well that are starting to push up from the Border Prince territory and sort of that Dwarven territory, which sucks. Okay, so Telebicklin demands the region. I guess we... Yeah, return it. Alright. Yeah, damn. I assumed as much, because we just we were only a turn or so away. So, unfortunately, the order resolve is not in our favour. So, we are going to have to play this one against the Norskins. Throg has sent his Wintertooth clan south. They brought two mammoths as well. So, we'll play this one. Our, I believe it's our first major defensive siege of the series. We have the defensive siege of Marienburg. It's going to be a good one. Four units of halberds, three swordsmen, two gunners, only one crossbowman. Shit. Could be a little bit better. One great swords. Um, okay, we're going to have to watch out for their marauders. Especially the berserker type. The two-handed as well. But we're going to be kicking things off with a defensive siege. Let's go. Oh, wow. Looks sick. Okay, so got some battering rams here. They're dividing up into two groups. Let's build a arrow tower here. And we'll try and upgrade them as well where we can. So they got the mammoths and the two. Then they got a, the siege towers there. So let's try and divide things up, shall we? So, in today's episode, we're going to continue to just try and stabilize our rapid territorial gains because, let's be honest, we've conquered a lot in this series. 
80 or so turns in now. Can't remember the exact number. But we've brought most of Bretonia under our control. And Athel Lauren. And then, of course, we've got half of the elect account. So we've saved up enough influence, essentially. It's like we've got, we've got he's like 6,000 or so. Now, I did say at the start of the series that I didn't really want to spend any of it. Until we have like uh, 2, 3k and we've got like essentially the same amount uh, in the bank as well to stop the RNG events. But now we're at a point where we probably can speed up the rate of confederation by spending it. Because there's only a couple more elect account factions that are not under our control. And I would highly recommend not declaring war upon them. Because you don't want worse relations with the other elect accounts. You're better off confederating them in. And also, it does give the AI time to build up the settlements. So then you don't have to spend the money <laughs> building them up. But anyway, let's focus on the defensive siege of Marienburg. We are more than capable to win this one. I'm just hoping that we can delay and destroy them before they move on up. Because these towers are incredibly hard hitting. Dude, I can remember our offensive siege of Marienburg was tough. Okay, nice. They're halfway up and we've hit about 50% of them. Hope we can crush a tower. Our arrow towers are raining fire and death upon the brave men of Wintertooth clan. Still about 70% in their favor. We'll see how we go. Our handgunners should be alright, but it's mostly going to be up to our infantry. We just do not have the skirmishers. We've managed to knock out some of their cav. Our handgunners are getting some vital shots off here. Shooting down upon the great swords. Very lightly armored. No blocking. And they've made their way up onto the walls. Our infantry getting involved now. Damn. That's quite unfortunate. We could have... Uh, Really Understood. done with one of those arrow towers falling. Shit. Okay, let's uh, move these handgunners back to the second level. To the second level! <laughs> Fucking Gandalf. Okay, so they've brought up their other battering ram. That's actually quite smart. Because if we were to... Because usually the battering rams were there come up one at a time. If you move them both up at the same time, it divides the fire and it actually has a chance of both, at least one of them surviving. Okay, so now they're trying to skirmish on out against us. Come on. Brave garrison of Marienburg. You're fighting for the crucial port city. We've really prospered massively from holding Marienburg, having trade flowing from Altdorf throughout Reichland to the city. But here come the barbarians. And they've brought two mammoths as well. <laughs> Shit! Okay. I think our best chance is to give out some attack orders here. The quicker we can win on this front, we can swing around and deal with those mammoths, I think. Alright, what have we got back here? Uh, let's upgrade you to another tier. Alright, change your... Firing patterns and give out some attack orders there. Oh my god. Those mammoths are absolutely ripping us apart. Oh my god. Causing chaos and carnage. Alright. Come on. Get here quickly because you can, if you can get your shots off, that's a wild fucking shot there. Side on. Handgunners. Perfect elevation as well. Alright, the mammoths have gone berserk. The feral mammoths have gone berserk, typical. Try and bring one of them down. One of our halberds is uh, capitulated. There goes a second. Let's just get some more towers in just to help. Alright, focus on them. Let's 
Still not favoured to win this one. Not out of the woods just yet. Especially with their general. I think it's actually a good idea to keep our skirmishes and archers up on the walls on that side. Especially when they can't get up there. Nice. Come on. Let's get rid of those Marauder Great Swords and we can swing these back guys back around here and free them up. Swung back to a 50% now. We've got spare fun. So let's just try and build as many barricades as we can. Turn this into a tower defense game. <laughs> and win. Because we can stop them getting towards the town square. It's about 50-50 now. Come on, this looks a lot better. It's a general. They're trying to reduce my available surprise. Hey, but we won. They managed to capitulate. Nice. Pyrrhic victory. We'll take that. Yeah. All right. Definitely we'll need to buff up the Marienburg garrison. I didn't expect for them to attack me there. I had my army worrying about retaking Wrecker's Point and really worrying about them crossing the sea to the north. I wasn't expecting them to go so far south. But hey, we're going to start things off with a W. A really fun defensive siege. I'm happy that we won. Perfect. So, Telebeckland wants a confederation. Uh, it kind of sucks that it was them. There's a lot of other um, elected counts I would have preferred, but hey, a confederation is better than none. So, Wissenberg, Toddy, still fiercely independent. Oh, this was the, um, the settlements that we took ages ago. We're not hemorrhaging cash, though, which is good. When, um... Oh, Festus took him, I think? Yeah. So it's not the largest faction, but whatever. Okay, things are looking good. Surrounded by enemies. <laughs> uh, Karak Norn's sl slowly starting to grow. Kislev are having a pretty fucking hard time. But uh, Grom the Paunch isn't really threatened us. He decided not to attack. I've sent uh, Carl Franz and Alexi, Alexis to go south to deal with the Ogres. Uh, unfortunately, we lost a piece of territory in Bretonia. Uh, Gelt has moved towards the Brass Keep. And we're going to attack Bellicor because we don't want him to take it. Because guess who we're going to pick up on the way? That's right, Gotrick and Felix have offered their services. It's actually perfect that it's in line. So, look, why not? Let's uh, bring in the the Chad and the Dwarf. Why not? And they'll be able to help us out against Bellacor, who has been causing a little bit of carnage against us. We were just completely distracted. Now, oh, you're kidding me. Guilt doesn't have the movement. So we're going to have to attack with... Uh, Gotrick. Oh, uh, okay. The only reason I'm just a bit meh and hesitant about it is because he's going to get Bellacor's trait. And obviously we're not going to be able to have uh, Gotrick and Felix for that long. But anyway, let's get stuck into our first battle against the Shadow Legion. They do have one Beast of Nurgle. That's something to watch out for, but he is actually quite weak. From raiding and taking attrition and such. Alright, so. Damn. Still going to be a little while before our reinforcements come on in. Thankfully, we're actually hitting him from multiple sides. The garrison from the Brass Keep is going to march out. And then, as well, Belthazar Gelt. Now, we'll just wait and have a massive stare off. Here is Felix, and here's Gotrick. Let's fucking have you. Melee specialist. These guys are fan bloody tastic in combat. Can't wait to use them for the first time in uh, Warhammer 3. But here he is, the Demon Prince himself, Bellacor. 
His face is incredibly uncanny and uh, really gives me the fucking creeps. <laughs> but here are his chaos spawn and beasts. So thankfully, he seems to be allowing us to to wait on out. So, a Belthazar guilt with the help of Gotrick and Felix, hopefully. We can win the battle here today. Welcome to the Brass Keep, gentlemen. Welcome to Estalia. <laughs> okay, let's move our infantry up. And we've got a mortar and a cannon as well. Hey, we've even got some... Dwarven Mine is helping us out. Oh, that must be because of the uh, potential outpost. Yeah, that must be. They must have built an outpost there. Well, that's kind of cool. Alrighty. We've only got some bolt throws as well. Bolt throws? What am I saying? Quarrelers. <laughs> I forgot what they're called. I haven't played as the Dwarves in a while. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, Dwarven Crossbow are called Quarrelers. Bolt throws. <laughs> There's a bolt on the crossbow. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I was getting at. Okay, so... We're slowly but surely advancing and trying to... Surround Belikor from all sides. So let's give out some... Spells with Gelt. Now that they're clustering up a bit. Alrighty, so let's get everyone to send, descend that hill and fucking send it. Let's go. Let's move our Reichsguard around as well, and let's get Gotrick and Felix and everyone else to move on in. Let's go, go, go. The balance of power has swung massively, about seventy percent in our favour. So hopefully this will. Stop for a while the Norskin and Chaos Scourge entering our lands. It might stop it for a time, focusing on it. But we allowed it to, unfortunately, grow in strength. But obviously, Bethacore has a bunch of Chaos units from a myriad of factions. We've got some Slash Chariots here. Zinch Chaos Spawn, Bellicor himself in combat. Just need to get Gotrick and Felix in here quick, fast. If I couldn't send Carl Franz to fight Bellicor, hell, Gotrick and Felix, next fucking best. Best friends going at it. It works well because the dwarves are anxious of our loyalist allies in this series. People are a little bit upset for me going to war with Bretonia and the Wood Elves, but so be it. My Rock Scar got a really nice charge there. Look at that. That's what you like to see. High octane, high volume, high energy, high ground charge. Boom. Send those guys go flying. Oh, God. Guilt getting stuck in. Dude, Gotrick. Slaying a demon prince. I'm sure as a slayer, he'd fucking love that. Alright, let's move on up. Dad would probably bring him a lot of honor in the eyes of the dwarves. Bringing down a demon prince. <laughs> what do you think? But at this rate, he might get taken down by some fucking archer. <laughs> so hopefully, Bilicor's reign of terror, terror will be 
delayed and stopped for now. Yeah, there we go. We <laughs> can't bring him down. Send him back to the Chaos Realm from whence he came. Right. Some of my infantry is struggling. They did well to actually focus my archers there. Come on, bring him down. God. The how reinforcing army with Gelt has still not properly arrived. Jeez. I was kind of blown away how long it's taken to ascend this hill from the south. From the north, we were quick on there. Probably should have waited. If I hit them both at the same time, that would have been optimal. There's Bellacor coming back into it. Is slightly winded, but there he goes. He's been taken down. Oh no! And he's poofed and dissol dissolved away. Poof! <laughs> and that should be the end of him as well, you'd think. Nice! Victory. Let's uh, make sure to completely run down the rest of them. Yeah. Got to be a little bit careful with Bellacor. He's right on the border. Like, he's super, super close to Bretonia. So if you do end up playing as Bretonia yourself or the Empire, a little word of advice. Definitely watch out for Bellacor and his Shadow Legion. It was a close victory in the end anyway. And we outnumbered him 5 to 1. Fuck me. Bellacor did most of the work. Those Chaos Spawn are so good. Especially when their experience is up a bit as well. Silver Chevrons. But hey. Now we can stop him from raiding and destroying my goddamn settlements in the north. Okay, so control wins a magic casualty. Oh, that sucks. I would have loved that with guilt. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, oh well. There's his traits, though. Alright. Um, there's an army near the Bretonian capital. So this army was sent to... relieve Marienburg. It wasn't needed to, anyway. But they actually have taken... Well, Throg's actually come south. Which is annoying. I think I need another army here. So I'm getting one at Ilhart. You're still holding here quite well. And then I suppose we're going to launch an invasion against Scrag the Slaughterer. Who's, once again, um, come back and rose to power in and around the lands of the Empire. But <laughs> it sucks. The fucking dwarves have again <laughs> lost their um, homeland. And then I guess we have Gelt sort of hold up towards... Talabekland. And then there's only a couple more Elector Count factions to bring under our control. Still at war with a bunch of factions that we have to keep an eye on. But I think we make plans and preparations with Carl to go on the offensive and try and retake the Black Mountains. Black Mountains pushing towards that Border Prince territory. So, if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video a like and subscribe if you're new. I would really much appreciate it. Sorry I haven't been uploading. It's been a while. Seven days ago or so. I've uh, been busy. Had some personal stuff happen, so I had to dip for a little bit. So, my apologies, guys. Life happens. But, to be fair, I'm still on track to be uploading roughly over 300 videos this year. And I have been uploading on my other YouTube channels with some pre-recorded stuff. So, if uh, you haven't gone and checked out those channels, I recommend you do. Play FIFA and play Hearts of Iron Fall, Apex Legends. And uh, Football Manager. I've got a bunch of other channels as well with a variety of content. This Total War channel being the uh, the strategy games content. So, sorry I'm gone. I'm back now. And uh, let's sit down and play some Total War Warhammer. See where we were. So, we've got most of Bretonia, the Empire under our control. And we're dealing with some incursions here. But we're looking good. The Empire looks good. 
But what I've sort of noticed is... <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, the Empire is incredibly weak. I think they're weaker as a faction compared to what they were in Warhammer 2. Like, they've been nerfed to the ground. What do you guys think? I think... Have they been a little bit hard but done by? Okay, so 84 turns in. I just feel like the Empire, like... It's very hard to get... Like, you can... It's, it actually takes a lot longer to get wizards and stuff, but... I don't know, I feel like they might need to buff them in the next version. To be fair, I'm technically playing the beta still at this point. Although the, like, the full game is now out, I'm still playing on the, um... The early access version, which I think is the same. Um, but I don't want to update anything just yet. Um, because I don't... The last thing I want is a save corruption to happen. Usually Total War's pretty good. Like, compared to other games, um... Total War very rarely has save corruptions, but... In the the, the the Chaos Realms, like pre-release, we did have a, a couple of save corruptions here and there, so I don't want to risk it, basically. Also, I still get comments about it, and I thought I'd address it as well. Um, the question about why I don't live stream uh, anymore. So I never said this publicly, but I made a promise to myself this year, at, at some stage, to live stream for an entire month and see how we go. I think we went over 30 uh, one plus days though. So in the month of July this year, as you would have known, I live stream for an entire month. 4 a.m. in the morning, waking up here in Australia, starting the stream at about six, and then going for like eight hours <laughs> plus straight. I think we, we did a 10 hour one or a 12 hour one in Skyrim once, which is in, insane. Finishing at like one or two o'clock in the morning, and we went through and played nearly every single Total War game at least once. Morning. And as much as I loved it. And you guys were just awesome to interact with. You were also really generous as well. So I really th thank you for that. But I just found it, it was negatively affecting me in too many aspects of my life. For example, as soon as I wake up, I like to work out for at least an hour, an hour and a half, like vigorously. I found out I was working out less. I was eating like shit. My sleep went to shit. Um, I feel like I had no spare time with other stuff. The gameplay got worse. Um, my voice was fucked for the rest of the day, and I found that I was spending less and less time with my families and friends as well. My caffeine ingestion went through the roof, I was drinking so much of it, more so than I normally do. And also, when I upload daily regularly, it's usually between 12 and 1 o'clock in the morning. I'm asleep by like multiple hours, <laughs> like usually I am fast asleep while YouTube videos are going out normally. And that's been a thing for years. And I really do appreciate it and my other people that can do it like eight hours straight. But I, I don't think I'm the person that can do that. I think I'm the video guy. You know what I mean? I enjoy making videos. I think I consistently do that. And even if I s record it for like eight hours straight into a day, which I rarely ever do, I could even chop that up into multiple days. So I felt like I was working more. Um, I was working less on the other channel as well and also as well even when i did start the stream as early as i possibly could um there were evil people still complaining saying you should have started earlier and there was still heaps of people missing it because basically because i just live on the other side of the world the best time for me to stream is about 12 o'clock at night midnight to about six o'clock in the morning like that's the peak time for my entire community to get it and i just, you just can't do that i just can't do that some people can some australians pull on notice consistently but I can't. <laughs> I just feel too fucked because of it. So unless I move to the UK or US sometime in the future, doing like eight hour live streams like that, which is the most beneficial to do, I don't think I can do it. Maybe I need to do it in moderation here and there. Look, will there be live streams in the future? More than likely at some point. Um, maybe I need to only go for a couple hours, two, three, I'll keep it. But it's like, even I, I struggle to do that because it's like so addicting. Um, playing a game, talking to you guys. Um, also, I think strategy games as well are like more into like trying to play Total War. Like I noticed that if I was to play Total War for like eight hours, I was fucked. Like my brain is fried. However, I'm playing Skyrim. Um, it's a lot easier. So I even found myself going to like easier games just to manage that. Like it's it's really interesting. It's not like physically fatiguing, fatiguing, but like mentally it is. But anyway, I just thought I'd share my thoughts and opinions on that. Also, I think the gameplay was better, like more dialed in when I'm just like focusing 
on the game rather than chat. Also, some people don't like when you're sort of more interacting. They just want to sort of see the gameplay and your process and how to do it and stuff. But, um, yeah, really sorry if you're disappointed with that. But just thought I'd be honest. And, uh, yeah, we're going to go back to, as much as we can, consistent videos on the channel. So, thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate all the support regardless. So, here come the Ogres with a good charge. The brave men of Kislev firing off some pistol rounds. This will be a really good test for us. We have yet to really face the full force and brunt of the Ogres. But still thoroughly want to continue this campaign. Let's go spend the next couple of days recording and playing more parts. Another charge in, but we seem to be holding and maintaining well. Our great swords are doing okay. But yeah, we're just going to try and continue to hit um, as many main object uh, object objectives uh, as we can. But we definitely want to try and get the um, the event to trigger. Which I'm curious to see what it would be. It can obviously be either the Tomb King, the Tomb, Tomb Kings, the Greenskins, um, a Chaos one or a Vampiric one, isn't it? Oh, whoops, misclick there. Some of our units are taking an absolute battering. Carl as well doesn't look too overly healthy. But once we get rid of Scrag, we should be able to get most of the Black Mountains under our control. Thankfully, with that confederation with um, Gelt at Winter, P uh, Winter Teeth Pass, we are able to secure most of the Border Prince, former Performer Prince territory that he conquered, and um, the vaults as well. But yeah. During my sort of week off, been watching a bunch of TV shows. Caught up on Rings of Power and House of the Dragon. What do you guys think about that? I've been putting those community polls out. They've been really um, interesting to see. But the majority of you, after like a couple of thousand votes, like so far in my community, which is interesting, the house people like House of the Dragon about 7, 8 out of 10. The Rings of Power sitting at about a 1 or a 2 out of 10, which is really interesting because you'd think that like my community is probably... Like, evenly, Lord of the Rings. Maybe slightly more Game of Thrones focused. But it's interesting. House of the Dragon hasn't been terrible. Definitely been better than uh, Rings of Power. But also, Rings of Power, I had no hope for that fucking show. It's not as bad as I thought, but it's not amazing. It's just, meh. Whatever. The dialogue's way worse, though. But it looks amazing. Anyway, Scrag's being taken down there. But yeah. I'm curious to see where they sort of go. Because I think both of them are meant to be like three, four seasons. So... You have to think of it as well over like that year how many years as well but it'll be interesting to see what they do with it all anyway a close victory apparently 131 Carl got absolutely smashed the Pistoliers did quite well same with the Bear Riders but unfortunately the Mortars really just unfortunately didn't really break through there but Scrag the Slaughterer is defeated and we've taken a massive chunk out of the Disciples of Maul which would be good hopefully this is the last we sort of see all the ogres because they're so far eastern Cathayan territory the rest of them we'll try and rid them from the Empire Sphere of Influence once and for all oh you gotta be kidding me so at the top of the turn Carl Franz was so <laughs> wounded and low health, the uh, attrition attrition got him in the mountain pass. Fuck's sake. So we're going to have to bring in someone else in for now. 
But they still have a... Alright. Welcome to the top of the turn. Continuing on against... No one tells a Scrag. And... We're going to push further south, and hopefully this will be the last of them. But maybe thanks to confederating with guilt, they maybe grew in power slightly. But at the moment, here is the two offensive armies. Everyone else is just sort of protecting Bretonia, Bastogne, like the Misty Hills and Hockland and stuff. Well, most of the Empire's offensive forces are now coming down here. Speaking of the Empire, there was some pretty whack looking um, World War 1 slash 40k mod, which is cool, on the workshop. I don't know if it's been taken down yet, but I did see that highlighted. Okay, so we probably can get another outpost going if we can get some dwarf units. That'd be sick. Because you're probably better off having them as your infantry than great swords and like Kislev units, to be fair. Oh, wow. Um, I did not expect this. Grom the Paunch has actually attacked me here in Paravon, finally. We've been at war with Grom for quite some time. He's really yet to push, though. Not the best army, but with the garrison, it should be okay. So, I guess we sally out and face the Goblin King. Always quite like Grom. Disgusting looking oaf of a character. <laughs> He's in a, um, a wah. So, we're going to have to watch out for him. But, oh my god, look at this army build. Three swordsmen. <laughs> Just uh, archer spam. <laughs> And, um, oh my god. We gotta be really quite careful here, oh my god. I've yet to really modernize all our armies yet. And, like, switch out this with, like, great swords and shit. We've got good money, but we're not fucking rolling it exactly. Well. Once we throw back Grom, we actually might be able to offensively push against him and get rid of him from his sort of hold. I kind of wish I could see what was going on in the rest of the world. Like, what was what's sort of going on in the um, sort of Lothurn? You know what I mean? What's happening in the donut? Like, who's winning around the... Uh, in like Malekith's territory and Lustria and stuff. Wish I could say. Who is dominating Gunpowder Road in the Cathay territory? Alright. Now, as long as we try and keep them at a distance, we'll be good. Gotta watch out for Grom's devices. The mushroom eaters. Love that. Alright, they've got two big spies with Forge Alpha. They've got some trebuchets of their own. Oh, can't look at that. <laughs> Gross. Now, we're sending in one of our champions against Grom. Thankfully, he's on a mount, so he should be okay against the fat man. But. Let's give out some attack orders here, so... Yes. The longer we can wait and delay from him from attacking us, the better. Nice rings. But yeah, I've just sort of been sitting there in Paravon, protecting against any vampiric green skin or let's be honest wood elf incursion because even though we've defeated Dirtha I'm sure the boys in the rest of the woodland realm are probably not too happy 
in and around Orion. Oh, he has not done well there in combat. Even level 25. Alright, they're starting to advance and close the distance on our front line. Let's try and hit those chariots there. Got a bunch of handgunners in reserve as well. So if they can get clear shots on, they should be okay. We're smashing their spider riders, which is sick. Still quite close balance of power wise. After getting some artillery shots off on the crossbows, about 60%. But now they're engaging my front line. We just need to try and soften them up as much as we can before they get here. Because let's be honest, the spearmen and the swordsmen do not have a chance in hell. But if we're successful here today against Grom, it'd be quite a successful episode toppling him and Scrag. Right, they're moving their skirmishes up now. And they're trying to trade with us. Taking position. Water. By Ulrich's wrath. Water. All right. Just won. Let's slightly reorganize. Sterling's running. And move these mortars now back. Oh god. Most of the infantry now is wavering. Thankfully some are recovering, but shit man. Oh no! Ah! We might just not need to get our... Archers. Our skirmishes to our... Uh, well... Skirmish. Is fucked. <laughs> We're gonna have to get our skirmishers to try and save this one, try and just kite everyone. If we can get them on weird and awkward, like rear shots and fucking off angles, that's probably what's gonna do it, but jeez. This is such an unorthodox battle. Just need to hope we can pull on through. Nice. We've claimed victory. Holy shit. Well, we definitely want to try and run down as many of them as we can. Bring down that spider. Bring it down. Because we want to try and fully crush this army. Because he's sitting in just like his one... Settlement faction. Nice, we brought it down. Oh my god, what a steep cliff.
Pyrrhic victory. Rizard getting the um, W once again. Dude, we outnumbered him 3-1 to one and we still struggled. <laughs> that just shows you it's like how good his units were. They were just so superior to ours. But to be fair, uh, we did... Well, is that a little bit deceiving? Because he's still got the Wa, doesn't he? He's got two. Yeah. Good win, though. They're still in range. So we'll give chase. Fight for our nation. We'll lose a couple units in the process, but so be it. But thankfully it wasn't a long and annoying protracted siege, which it could be. Oh no, they got another one here. Oh. I thought they only had this, like that fortress in the mountain there. Cool. The last of their lightly guarded territory. So, if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video a like and subscribe if you're new. I'd really much appreciate it. Still continuing headstrong with this Empire campaign. Making the Empire great again. Alright, back down in the mountains near Karak Harin. We want to try and get rid of last of... Scrag's holdings. And we're also coming to in range of some greenskins as well. Carl Franz is currently wounded. He's been sent back to Altdorf, being taken care of by the Maesters, so hopefully he will be able to return at full strength soon after convalescing slightly. But most of the dwarves that occupied these mountain passes have been absolutely decimated in this series. They've been a little bit hard done by the uh, the dwarves. Just need to fix the boom mic there. It was annoying the positioning, whatever. <laughs> anyway, but uh, yeah, only a couple more armies left of Scrag and the. Uh, you would imagine. All right, back up north. Unfortunately, we've had a Norskin incursion. I've sent Gelt from Hockland to go and deal with it. And we might be able to get our first piece of territory in Nordland. Another army's dropped off here as well. The Mr. Heels are fine for now, but we can't allow any incursion to come on in. And we actually can get some better quality relations yes. with Nordland. We're still yet to bring in Mid Middenheim, Nordland, and Visseland into our control. Yeah, so they're going on a bit of a tirade here in Wreckers Point. So, Gelt has been sent north to deal with them. Trying to overthrow another roaming horde, hopefully. Hey, we've got a confederation offered. Maybe that was due to giving and reclaiming that Nordland settlement. So, it's minus three. We're already minus six. And it's going to go from three to six, so that's quite a bit. But now we can control this Northern Territory. We have a bunch of Imperium steel. But this confederation will weaken us slightly. So we've nearly got all of the elect accounts under our control. Like I said before previously, highly recommend not going to war with the elect accounts. Just waiting to eventually confederate them and bring them on in to the empire. But overall, this is what we can control. A nice swath of territory. Things are looking up for the empire. Okay, so the Disciples of Moor have attacked us, and this might be the last of them. Hopefully. Hey, and it is. The Disciples of Moor have been defeated. Perfect. Carl Franz is now back, whopping level 40 as well. Great to see Carl, Carl Flams, <laughs> Brack, back. What am I saying? <laughs> Carl Fred's back. Jeez. Alright, we want to try and get rid of uh, Grom here now. So, he had two pieces of territory. He might have actually come back here now after we destroyed his full stack. 
at Paravon. Oh, okay. So it's not overly too large of a garrison. you think it would be in this mountain holdout. Yeah, so now Grom's back. It's mostly the garrison army. Well, I have no ambition to rush this siege. So let's just try and siege them out for as long as we can. Okay, Gelt is still trying to deal with that Norskan incursion. Yeah, just Belakor and his vassals and Norskan allies do send a fair few of them. They either try to hit Wrecker's Point, they either go into Nordland, or eventually make their way down to Marienburg. Seems like they have a waypoint there. Gelt is currently accompanied with uh, Felix. What's this? Clan Moors has attacked the dwarfs in Karaz Karak. So that could complicate things. We're already at war with a bunch of them, but yeah, the dwarfs just are not doing well in this series. So this is turn 90 now, so we've spent one turn at least sieging out Grom. So they're probably going to attack us at some point. I've moved a secondary army over here to help, and okay, so that's going to make it a decisive victory. So we currently have two full stacks essentially operating in and around this area of Bretonia. We've already fought and crushed the paunch as well. It's only really the garrison there. So is that the last of him? Yes, perfect. The Broken Axe Greenskin tribe has officially been crushed and dissolved. Perfect. We've been at war with him for such a long time as well. Oh my god. As soon as we wrap up some wars, more just come out of nowhere. Dry edge of the Wood Elves has attacked us. Oh wow, they've actually taken a, f a bunch of Borma Electric Count territory. Well, it looks like we're going north to Ostermark. And I guess after the defeat of Grom, more green skin tribes are coming out of the woodwork. Great. We'll call our allies, mostly dwarves, and the ice court with Kislev and Katarin. Alright, so Marienburg is under siege. It'd be quite detrimental to the campaign if we were to lose it. So we'll send Gelt down here. It was trying to protect our northern border. We've still got units in Bretonia, which we can send reinforcements from. And Franz is pretty far south uh, after defeating the Ogres. And we'll try and eventually move him to deal with um, Dryach. So, Middleland, Ostland, and Visseland are the only factions haven't brought in. But we have 10,000 of... In Imperial authority, so why not let's spend a bunch of this and try and get at least one of these to try and confederate with us earlier. Still minus five at the moment. We just need to purely wait for events. But like what have we got ten thousand, which is absolutely absurd, and we're making a bunch as well, so we might as well spend it diplomacy wise, not really much else we can do either. Ah, perfect. So Middleland has offered us a confederation. That'll be really good. So then we can get Toddy and the boys in. But what's the what's the highest it can go to? Currently minus seven. So we're getting a, a huge amount of negative modifiers. 94 turns into the campaign now. Nearly hit. Triple digits. Okay, so we've got a small army here. We probably just want to try and see what we've got. So Boris has an army here, only rank 11. But Toddy's now fully under the control of Car France. Nice. It's been a while since we've looked at the, the huge topograph. So we've got an army in the north in Nordland with Boris. Uh, we've got two armies heading towards Hockland. We have two in the Vampiric Territory, and we've got some armies with Carl uh, trying to head into Northern Sylvania, because they even have Wald Waldenhof. Um, the Wicked Treemen actually surprisingly have a bunch of territory, and they have a territory in Northern uh, Sylvania, so we were bordering them in the end. 
So, I guess we'll try and bring down the twisted tree. So, Ostermark has been crushed, essentially. They've even moved into Costalton territory. Uh, I guess we'll return it. Because a lot of this territory, uh, it actually will allow us to get that minus seven down a bit. Ready. It is war. So I guess we'll try and return this one as well. Uh, that should have been assigned. We can return it to Ostermark. Is it worth it? They tend to get destroyed a bit, but I, I guess it is. Because then we can eventually confederate with them. But yeah, two armies. Focusing on Dryach. And I guess we're going to the southern ob oblast. Because she's even pushed up there. Which is really quite interesting. Alright, back down in Bretonia. I'm actually going to declare war upon the Red Duke. After he took Leoness and has established a small footholding here. We want to try and finally eradicate all the vampires from our sphere of influence. I think that's sort of the last one. I think Vlad von Karstein is like super far south, but we've obviously taken out the a vampires pretty early in this campaign. But if we can get rid of the Red Duke, we should be able to get a nice piece of coastal territory here. Right on to the border of the High Elves. So, we're going to negotiate with Bastone and Bohemond. And that's gone through. So, we are going to be able to take this. We did have this territory for a little bit. Then we gave it back to the Red Duke for a piece. But now that his vampiric corruption is spreading into the heart of Bretonia, it's something we have to keep an eye on. And we'll move this down south. We've already fought the Red Duke once in this series, a long time ago, I believe, when he was pushing into... Uh, it was one of those fortresses in the mountains there. I can't remember exactly which one it was. So we'll continue to siege them out there in Musalon. So Waldenhof has been attacked here by the Slaughterer. Really? He's now back. Bloody Azag. At least he's not in a... a war. Oh wow, we're not actually overly too favoured to win that one. We're going to have to manually play it. It's going to be a close one. Alright, well, let's get stuck into a battle here today. Like I said, um, mostly we're just sort of trying to... wrap up the last of Grom. And the ogres, which we did, but I hadn't really seen any major factions full stacks in a while. There were a little bit of Norskins, but now with Azhag coming on in, let's fight this one. The Red Duke, even with that attack, didn't even really seem to have much of an army either. So we've got the Battle of Waldenhof with Karl Franz. Mostly great swords. Got some Kislefite units. We do have one Hellstorm Rocket Battery. I would ideally like to increase that in the future. I've had some confederations as well. So, pretty solid episode progression-wise, overall. Alright, let's deal with these bloody green skins. So, there's two paths of attack. What do you bid? Looks like chuck you here. Oh, God. Great swords! Unfortunately, there, the terrain just went and let us deploy there. Shit, hang on. So, maybe try and do something a little bit like this might be better. If we put our mortars and artillery in the center, it might actually protect them. But the only problem is, Azhag is probably on a mount. A wyvern or whatever. So hopefully, Carl can deal with him aerially while our mortars and hellstorm rocket batteries soften up the rest. Nice shot there. And the rockets are flying. We've got to watch out for Azhag. 
because we've fought. Oh shit, they've got a rogue idol. That's going to complicate things. These stone colossal beasts are going to be hard to take down. But there is Azag. Hopefully Carl can bring him down for Sigmao. Stealing gunpowder, boys. Oh. We've also got a small amount of reinforcements from the nearby garrison. It's because we've recently taken the settlement. We're not at full strength with it. But so far, the brave infantry, great swords of the Empire and Kislev are holding the line for now. How's Carl doing? Okay, nice. A little bit back and forth. Really too quite close to call this one. But the slaughterer is definitely living up to his name. Okay, so although Carl's taken a battering at about a 50% health, it looks like he's going to be able to bring him down. I do want to try and get these bear riders in action, which is where they can operate. Fortunately, we've lost a great sword unit there. Let's uh, get them to... Oh no, I was going to try and... I was going to say try and stop that charge of those river trolls would have been good. They're really struggling to bring out those rogue idols. Oh, nice. Azhag is now in a retreat. We'll try and bring down that rogue idol, please. We're doing well punching through the rest of their infantry. But it's the rogue idol. Hang on, what the hell? I didn't press pause. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> yeah. There we go. What the fuck? I thought the game nearly crashed. Alright, that's a bit better. We're getting a good angle here. The bear riders have somehow found a way around the back. Come on, bring it down. Bring down this stony and very hard monstrosity. Oh, what's going on here? <laughs> Might need to restart my piece up. There we go. Bring it down. Nice. And victory. The rogue idol crumbles just like a cookie. And that's how the cookie crumbles. <laughs> get the bear riders and the boys just try and run down the last of them. Nice. So, going after the wood elves here, the green skins try to upset our <laughs> baggage cart that was ending up there. I'm sure Azhag isn't overly too impressed with Grom being Destroyed and fucking stapled somewhere in Old Dwarf. Interesting how that works when you crush other factions. The other factions get pissy. But anyway, co close victory. They said it was going to be that. Let's have that one there. Let's have a look at the. Losses in sustained itself. Okay, so we lost 400. We slightly outnumbered them. Carl did all right. Do it. Look at that. Look at the difference between the mortars and the Hellstorm rocket battery. Jeez, we definitely need to get some of those, some of those bad boys in. The Outriders did surprisingly well. They're a pretty underrated unit. I'd highly recommend them. Quite cheap. You probably don't. You definitely don't want like three of them. Like two is enough. Depending. We kind of could do with the money, to be honest, because we are hemorrhaging a little bit of cash. As we're still in 
significant <laughs> debt and inflation due to um, those confederations. Ah, oh, damn. It sucks that we can't auto-resolve this one. We'll just quickly play this one. It won't take too long. It's just because a bunch of the bone rattlers <laughs> have retreated. And the great swords were at such low strength, so we'll get, we'll get another battle in, <laughs> just. But we'll try and speed things up. Oh, we did so well crushing that army, just like we wanted to deal with them the second time. But just too many of them escaped. Not going to be hardly complicated. I think it's the same battle map. Back again for another defeat, as Hag. Alright, let's advance you slightly and speed things up. Here he goes. <laughs> Dude, the auto resolve is savage in this game from time to time. Yeah, that's how it is sometimes. You just have to manually play them. So be it. Yeah, I don't know why. I guess, I think it's just because they were so... weak health-wise overall. Anyway. Two battles in the end. We managed to sneak on in. Nice. And then we can focus on uh, Dry Etch for the majority of the next episode. I would imagine. Yeah, so we lost absolutely nothing there. It's only 200 of them, then we're going to knock out four units. Crikey. Or just because he's just a legendary lord. Must count significantly for something. But anyway, should be able to get a little bit of money for this secondary <laughs> adventure. 650. Nice. Well, as we've got a full stack here moving north, actually into the sort of southern Kislev region, yeah, the southern ob oblast, which have attacked up and through. So we'll try and bring some of this territory back into our sphere of influence, let's say. All right, Belakor is back in action. We've already defeated him a couple times this series already, but now he's come back down for what would be, I don't know, round three, I suppose. Oh god, there's a bunch of them now attacking us. Okay, back over in Bretonia. So, we've still got Franz in sort of Sylvania. Uh, we've still got some military assets against the Red Duke. That army's actually fled out, which is interesting. So we're going to be able to take Mussolon and bring all of it under our control. And that should be the last we'll see of the Vampiric Scourge here in Bretonia. As most of the vampires have now been um, basically pushed back. We don't even um, border any of the uh, pirates of the Vampire Coast. Nor like Vlad Von Karstein or anything. But the Red Duke now has no settlements officially. Sick. Alright, so we've still got some armies down in, uh, south of the Black Mountains as well. We want to try and put some pressure on the, faith. the Bloody Hands tribe as they pushed um, quite into our territory a while ago. So we're going to make sure that doesn't happen again with Wazak the Prophet. And we're pushing into Eastern Border Prince territory as well. So we're just mopping up small garrisons and trying to slowly but surely expand the empire where we can. This is what it looks like at the moment. 
absolutely massive, which is great to see. Nice. Okay, yeah, so we had a battle against uh, Azhag and his green skin tied in Scourge in the last episode. So we're going to try and make um, our way to the uh, Gryphonwood? Gryphonwood or whatever. Uh, we'll take es Essen and try and put some more pressure on them. Oh, we actually can return this, so we might as well to Ostland because I believe we've actually brought back two Elector Counts which were destroyed in the end. We're still minus quite a bit because of our confederations with Middenheim, with Middenland, uh, with uh, Boris Todbringer being brought into the faction. Okay, so I guess we continue to go north as well. We are going to be now bordering Gostalpton of the Grand Orthodox. Potentially even Throt and some other Skaven as well. So, we'll continue to try and return these to the elect accounts. It's not like I really overly covered this territory either. Okay, so they landed back. So hopefully this is the last of the Red Duke and his faction. Hopefully once and for all. Nice, because we don't want this Vampiric Scourge to spread further into our Bretonian owned lands. Yep, he's done and dusted. Okay, so with Shadow Legion is attacking. Yeah, so we actually so Lothar Dog Burglar actually got um attacked there. But we've already fought Bellacor before. Alright. Let's continue to push the bloody hands. Yeah, they even the um the Greenskins are taking the forest here as well. Yeah, they are really being hard done by some of the Dwarf Elves here and the uh, the Dwarfs and stuff. So, just facing garrisons at the moment. Nothing too crazy. We will get a battle at some point in today's episode. Particularly any difficult ones. But I guess we go for the forest gloom there. That looks like a juicy settlement. The Dwarves have pushed a little bit south, though, which is interesting, but they're pretty divided. Okay, well, I think it's time to attack Dryach's capital and take their woodland home. Carl Franz is here, decisive victory, and although we'd, we had all to resolve that one, that one's still going to be a good fight. I don't even know where Dryach is, is herself anyway. Anyway, let's uh, fight this one. Like I said at the start, we brought in some new units. We've got some dwarf warriors here to help with our infantry. Which would be nice to see. This is quite cool. A hybrid empire army. We've got great swords, we've got dwarfs, and we've got Kislevites fighting with us as well. So let me know in the comments as always. Feedback and suggestions for the series. And what you'd like to for me for, to ideally replace this. We've completed our short victory conditions. I think we've technically yet to complete the long just due to we haven't got all of the elect accounts under our control. What do we have? 70 regions under our control or so? I need to check. But we still want to try and go for that ultimate campaign victory. Domination. Uh, definitely going to be easier said than done. I believe there's over like 300 regions, I don't know exactly. It's taken us 100 turns already to get this far. But the Empire, man, I don't know if they're the easiest faction to go full map completion. They're one of the hardest. <laughs> like even against a battle like this, we are going to struggle. Although it was decisive in the order as of now that we're actually on the battlefield, they're probably going to take a fair bit of it out of us. But once again, we're fighting the Wood Elves. Mostly because we crushed Durthu a while ago significantly. Okay, 
Let's try and put some pressure on them. Give out some attack orders here. Brave men of the Empire. Getting stuck on in. <laughs> Great to see. Dwarves and... Elves battling it out. Like an old grudge. Got a nice flank going on here. This is really, really close. About 70% in her favour, still quite close, but it swung significantly. This settlement is just really tricky to take. Come on, let's try and bring this treeman down. Oh my god, my infantry are getting absolutely shredded here. Hey! We have victory, let's end that there. It was a close one in the end. Lost 600 in the end. Oh, Fran's got an absolute pummeling. But we've won a major victory over the Wargrove, which is great to see. Yeah, I think we definitely needed to play that one. If we didn't, could have slightly complicated things. Oh god, Carl got taken out. Yeah. Although he's a duelist, I think he's gotten weaker. Even since Warhammer 1. He's kind of not. It's a little bit deceiving, eh? Like, he needs to be more of a support character. They might need to change that. Or the way I need to play with him. I don't know, I just like throwing him in. Being ultra-offensive, because... I think it's kind of realistic. You want Carl Franz to lead from the front. I will marshal the band. Yes, my lord. But maybe he's just not simply really that conducive to that. Okay, I'm trying to find Dryach here. Because I'm curious to see how many f uh, regions they have left. Hang on, where is it? I can't even see. <laughs> Twist, bend, mangle, experiment! Oh no, they got zero. We're a bit attacked here now, so this actually might just straight up destroy the faction. Oh god, the garrison just got fucking pumped. And those fresh 
Dowie recruits we got as well. Hail to Leon Kor. How can the What's this? Oh god. Looks like the last men loyal to Bretonia have declared war upon me. Hey, we've destroyed uh, Dryach's faction now, though. Alright, so we're going to have to try and reclaim this territory up in the north. That was sacked and raised by Bellicor and the boys. We don't want this... ...chaos to spread any further whatsoever. So let's colonize this, and we'll try and uh, colonize you as well. Okay, we've got to deal with this Bretonian rebellion now. Shouldn't be too overly complicated. You dishonor me. So, the war. Alright, we're going to have to build some siege equipment here, because it is going to be a Pyrrhic victory otherwise. Okay, we've sort of set up a base of operations here. But thankfully there's not too much of a garrison there. Maybe we can make a play for this settlement. Nice, that one's a bit better. So it's in circle. Sigma is with us. Can I offer assistance? We can make a trade agreement with Krokka. That's pretty good. Let's do that. That'll give us some money. Get some lizard eggs up in here. Lady of Old Thor. Child. Why is Azag attacked Eshin? <laughs> That's weird. More units of the Shadow Legion attacking us. Nothing too crazy during this end turn phase. Oh, thankfully they attacked us. We should better throw them back with ease. I think we're better off to auto-resolve this one. We can struggle against Bretonian cavalry quite often. I will hear your petition. Okay. Oh, that's annoying as shit. They've attacked Ilhart there. Skaven are on the loose. Still recolonizing this uh, territory in the north. Alright, let's continue on the offensive here. Things looking good still. Oh, that's easy, that one. I will marshal the men. Okay, Guilt has made his way down south. To, well, his old sort of stomping grounds, eh? <laughs> Towards the Black Mountains. Gonna help out with the bloody hands. He, we had him in Hocklet for the majority of the campaign. But he should be able to throw back Wurzag here. And his small little incursion. Nicely done. Alrighty, so we've grown our borders slightly. More into former Border Prince territory. And... Now, against some of the last, the Bretonian factions. Uh, the corruption has now flipped here, which is excellent. I will not like my and I guess we push down into Carcassonne as well. By the comet. Yes. This army should be more than capable to deal with more than capable to deal with them. It's 
So let's loot and occupy that. Perfect. Alright, we'll try and bring this entire province under our control. Gelt can probably go colonize it. Still sieging out the forest. And we might actually make an offensive into Karak Kadrin. Give some vengeance back for Ungrim and the boys. We did have an alliance with them a while ago before they got crushed. Man, the greenskins have done really, really well in this series. They're bloody everywhere. And they're growing in greater numbers. Mm, we're getting pressured here though, but we're all good. Okay, um, yeah, we need all this Border Prince territory, eh? So, step to it. Now nice. Ready. We can get a military access agreement with Nagash. <laughs> Um, sure. I don't think we've really had any diplomacy with the Tomb Kings. So it's probably not a bad idea to get on good relations with them. Yeah. I think it's been a hundred turns. We've yet to encounter a single Tomb King faction. Which is actually rather surprising, to be fair. Can I offer assistance? Oh, here we go. Vampiric Ascension. Oh, jeez. Death and Decay... Hints the winds of magic as a bitter feud bred uh, out among the vampires with every major lord of the claiming uh, lord, lord of the night claiming Nefrakata's. I thought it was Nekakara's. Nefrakata's legacy. Maybe Nekrakata uh, is like the place um, or the settlement. Anyway. Uh, now they can only be stopped by capturing all the major sites of power and putting an end to their dark rituals. Oh, okay. Oh, damn. So this is like the um, the end event. So it's triggered 102 turn. So that means now the vampires are going to spawn in droves. Oh, that's so, so bad. Because we're the Empire, of course. They're going to be spawning back in Sylvania after we crush them. We just crushed the Red Duke as well. Now he's going to spawn back. Oh my god, the Barrow Legion. And then, well now we can officially go for our ultimate victory conditions. So here we go. 100 plus turns in. And we've been a little bit unlucky. RNG wise, because our empire currently spans through, what, three of the five um, <laughs> vampire holds. So, we've... Okay, so we hit the short victory before, now it's gone. We've already hit it. But now that the Barrel Legion and Sylvania are now back, that's been ticked off. So, great. Three full stacks have formed in what was spawned in what was the form of Barrel Legion territory. And another three full stacks have uh, spawned in Sylvania. So, a little bit complicated. And I'm assuming there's some in uh, Mousselon as well. Wasn't expecting this. So, we're going to have to double time and quickly deal with it. Uh, long victory-wise, we've hit the 70 settlements. We've currently hit 75 out of 272. And for us to get the ultimate campaign victory, which is, I guess, what we're going for, we need to get the Haunted Forest and... Oh, God, this territory down in, like, the Tomb King territory. So, I think that's what we'll strive for now, because it's still going to be a little while before we bring all of the... Um, Elect accounts under our control. So nine full stacks of spawn throughout my lands. Brilliant. Probably going to be under the pump big time because of this. <laughs> but hopefully we're strong enough to prevail. We're definitely large enough. So this is what we currently control. Boris in the north. Gelt in the south. 
Carl trying to head back south to Castle Drakenoff quickly. Hopefully, they can get down there quick enough. I'd be curious to see how they react. So, we might have to fight this one actually. Hopefully, one down, two to go. Okay. We are Sigma Reds. Looking at the topography of this battle map, slight high ground. There's a little bit of forest there, but nothing too crazy. Ready to We're rocking up with four great swords, three dwarf units, archers, and artillery. Now we've struggled against the vampires a lot this series. Man, it's pretty unlucky that we got them in the end game event. Oh, it would have been so much easier if we got like a green skin. Potentially a Skaven. Hell, even a Tomb King. But maybe because of the way we expanded. It's not exactly random. To be fair, the dwarfs would have been more annoying. as they're our only sort of ally in this series. We're just unloading our firepower here. Carl getting stuck into the Von Karstums. Oh, huge flank coming on here. Just need to hold the line. Hold the line, men. Let's throw down these skilly boys. Oh! These crypto horrors pack a big punch. But there goes the Von Karstein. I wonder where Vlad Daddy is. Just to be careful with this flank. Hang on. Come on, Carl. Get back in. This is a bit better. He needs to be here supporting the front line. Thankfully, Carl was able to take out the uh, the Lord this time effectively. Oh, now he's taking another beast. Dude's a Chad. Still about 70% in our favor, still holding the line well. Hey, our infantry have taken an absolute battering. Four fifty one. <laughs> Dude. Once again, the Hellstorm rocket battery is carrying. Even some of the weaker dwarf units fought on par with those greatswords. 
Nice. So, at least we've brought this from being like a two-on-one situation to the garrison. Now that we've crushed this army, it'll be a 2v2. And we might even be able to make our way back uh, into Castle Dragonorf. We need to move this army south. As is my right by Sigmar's crown. Now. We're going to have to force much to get in. Okay, we're still um, besieging out the forest gloom, but we might need to stop going full Elder throttle. Hammer. Too much against the greenskins. I still really wanted to push them further south and try and help out. Our dwarf allies, but now we're going to deal with this crazy vampiric incursion, which have yet to end the turn on. But I'm sure they're going to cause carnage throughout the empire. Oh god, it's a terrible order result. We'll try and move. Gelt further up. Enemies everywhere. Praise be to Sigma. Even Skaven we need to deal with. Sweet. Well, now that they've crushed that Skaven force, they probably can come over and help. We do have some armies here. Because we were dealing with... The Bretonians. In the south. But, oh, bro, there's bloody six full stacks spawned. Between Musalon and the Barrow Legion. Dude, that sucks. <laughs> I just wish you were more prepared. But you just don't know. It's RNG. Anyway. No, oh, that's not good. High elves cancelling agreements. We somehow won that. Now here we go. Here come the vampires. Oh my god. Was that three settlements lost in quite quick succession? As far as Oakenhammer. Bloody bellicle. My god, this definitely is the end times. We'll take the influence. I think I might make a peace treaty. As we've got to focus on the vampires now. Only the Grail companions of old could hope to best me. I concur. The Great Simon. Forget it, humans. Nothing is ready. Let. Okay, we're still maintaining most of our borders. We had to peace out with a bunch of greenskins. A short little armistice will help us for now. I will marshal the band. Now here comes Vlad von Karstein the in the mick of it. Yes, to unite the provinces. Move! I will not. Fight for our nation. Okay. Hang on. 
We need to get everyone in. The fool's action. I might have to hit this other army. Hang on. That'll do it. Okay, so Vlad's going to come in as reinforcements. But that shouldn't matter. God, he's still running. Who calls? We're still going to have to give chase. Because they've still got a bunch of forces down here. Attack! But the vampires are one of the hardest factions for us to face. They are so so strong. Ready. Raise your weapons. Okay. Perfect. We divided and conquered him there. I don't agree with that. And hopefully this will be the last of them. Perfect. We played that well. So that should be the last of Sylvania now. For the second time, god damn it. We destroyed one full stack. Now we destroyed the other two. Then we have to deal with the Barrow Legion. I'll play at least each one of them once. Okay, so looks like we've retaken Sylvania. Thankfully, with the help of Carl Franz, was in and around the area. But this pocket here in Bretonia, it's going to be more difficult. So we might even need to bring down Boris as well. But it's trying to get as much military in its Stanley to help. Protector of the weak. This is impudence. Let's besiege Karak Ziflin. And you know what? We might be better off to play that one at some point. I do want to play this once against the Barrow Legion. And Mousselon. Ah, uh, there's two full stacks there with the Red Duke. Can't believe they took that back so quickly. Alright, let's fight this one. Let's have our second battle of today's episode. This time, the first against the Barrow Legion. And Kadak Ziflin for the second time. I think we've played this siege before. Let's go for a multiple pronged attack and try and hit them from all sides. Well, I think we've got a bunch of great swords with this build. They should be able to get stuck in. Three mortars is fine. Would have liked a Hellstorm rocket battery or two. Same with crossbows, but archers will have to do. Those outriders are probably going to do well. Focus on the tower. Flank around with you. Let's go, 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 get it. Our mortars pummeling the enemy opposition. 
Well, they are holding us here a bit, though. Still quite close. 50-50. Mm. Those Capri suck. <laughs> they just capitulated. Nice. Nearly brought it down. Great shots for Three units have taken significant casualties, but Overall, we're still maintaining the advance and push of this siege. Advanced through the first part. Now we're in the second stage. We're about to get into the final third of the city. Just need to push through this barricade and then we're good. Oh my god, lucky I brought an absurd amount of grey swords. They only usually, uh, great swords, they only usually have about four or five. Four or five of them have been crushed. <laughs> Luckily I overdid it with this build. Hey, Perry Victory we won. Slightly outnumbered. But Valmir van Horstman have crushed one full stack of the Barrow Legion. One down. Hopefully many, many more to come. Dude, those Outriders are so good. They're so underrated. 155 again. They are still performing like over there. Cost-based analysis for the amount of kills they get. But where? Back in the Barrow Legion now, again, with an offensive war. It's a shame we had to fight them twice, but eh. Whatever, so be it. Still dealing with the Vampiric Ascension, which has happened, which is our unique end event. We've already destroyed Sylvania with Vlad one cast time. We did lose Oakenhammer and there was some skirmishing in and around Castle Drakenhof. But now we have to really deal with the Barrow Legion, which has returned, and Musalon. Alright, back over in the west, the Barrow Legion has attacked. We should be able to deal with them easily with an auto resolve. Anything else during the end turn phase? I don't think so. But this campaign series will end in the not too soon future as we're going to be hitting our ultimate victory conditions. So let me know what you'd like me to replace this series with. As the Skaven are on the loose here. Okay, so an army has pushed down from Musalon, and we'll send yeah, Boris Toddbringer into the fray as well. Nine full stacks spawned over here. And hopefully we can try and whittle a bunch of them down. As Boris comes into range. And can reinforce. Nice. We dispatched that Barrow Legion army quickly. And that's the last of them as well. Perfect. So, now we have to deal with Musalon. 
then of course, ultimate victory conditions wise, we do still, still do have to go into uh, sort of the Tomb King territory and the Haunted Forest. So, although we can destroy three factions here after they've emerged, we've already destroyed them once this campaign. We can't hit our ultimate victory conditions until we travail and traverse a bunch of the map. So let's get stuck into this battle here today. The first one, the Battle of Bordelex, or Bordeaux, essentially, <laughs> against Musulon. Five units of great swords, two hand gunners, crossbows. Uh, this time around, we've got two Hellstorm rocket batteries. So they should really pack a nice punch against those graveyard. Three mortars as well, with Rizard von Liebitz, the second general that we recruited in this series with the help of a garrison. This guy's been an absolute chad and legend from the beginning. Look at the topography of this battle map. Nice and open. There is a little bit more foliage on their side compared to ours, which will hamper our artillery effective firing somewhat. But overall, it shouldn't matter too much. We should be able to just pummel them with superior firepower and just simply outgun them. Let's move you here. Alright, lads. Fire. Letting the rockets fly. Nice. As if the ghoul is riding that. <laughs> it looks ridiculous. Our archers are now in range. Whittling them down. Dude, we are really peppering that Vargulf. Dude, we're pinned it in place. Alright, let's send Rizard. Von Liebitz. <laughs> oh, nice. That Vargulf is crushed. The Vargulf has engaged the front line. Oh my god. Our infantry just needs to hold. Alright, they're starting to flank. Oh, they hit my handgunners there. Let's give out some attack orders with these guys. Get a nice counter charge. Rizard is slightly a higher level, so he should be okay in combat. And these guys are freed up here, so they should flank. They're holding well against these wraiths. Musalon, giving us a hell of a fight here. Particularly those crypt ghouls, at all, as always. Some free units here, let's go. Oh, this is way too close. With Rizad. About to move him back. Just get the just get the ar archers to target him. We can't lose our general. Nice, there we go. They should massively turn the tide. Yeah, look at this. It's going to capitulate. <laughs> nice, close victory. We'll take that though.
Okay, about 800. 1,400. What did well? Oh, dude, it's just the Hellstorm rocket battery. These things absolutely smoke. They fucking smoke enemy combatants. Okay, so I'm kind of happy we crushed them in their aggressive mood uh, move. We can probably push back, push them back all the way to Musalon itself potentially. Decisive victory. All right, let's continue on. Grimgore Ironhide, okay. He's very far away in the blasted wastes. But more green skins are at war with us. Why not? Okay, so unfortunately the Leon S. Garrison will fall to the Red Duke again. So be it. Let's improve the omens. Okay, welcome to the top of the turn. 105 in. So Rizard, after being successful in the defense of Border X, we're throwing back the Red Duke as well. We've very much got Musalon on the back foot. We're going to try and stop this Vampiric corruption before it takes hold. So let's force my you to get you in range. I will obey. The Empire. To strengthen the Empire. And let's send now Rizard. Nice. And we could lightning strike it. Mm, I don't think that's really gonna help. Let's just attack it straight up. Fuck it. Nice. Dude, we've literally fought the Red Duke, what, two, three times this series already? <laughs> the fucker just keeps on coming back. And now they've probably only got one army left. Nice. We're in a really strong and significant position here now. As more reinforcements come to the front line day by day. And they've attacked Lothar here in the end. They've intercepted him. Yeah, Muslin is attacking. Well, it's because we're probably about to defeat them. They did take a significant amount of territories quite quickly, but we've been able just to hold them off. Thankfully, due to the investment that we put in a while ago, upgrading our settlements and thereby the garrisons and walls around in the minor settlements as well. I serve Sigma. Champion of the faith. By Sigma. Never to the provinces. Once we get rid of this army, that should be the last of them once and for all. Hell yeah. Now, the rest of the Vampiric Accession are probably super far away. Like, they're towards the far borders of our territory. Is there anyone here that we haven't set on auto? Because our empire is so vast, we've had to do that for a bunch of these lords, particularly the ones we confederated with. Look, I sort of early on cared about Carl's stats when it was overly important, but it's probably a time to put even some of our construction on auto as well, because there's just too many to micromanage. We've still got some influence as well. It's up to 24k. <laughs> Probably time to spend it. We've been saving it quite a bit. We want to try and get some more confederations. Still minus three. 
but a sign of a great leader is one that can delegate, so we're 106 turns in. We basically squeezed all the micro out of manually controlling our skills and construction. We can let it go to auto now. Okay, so 107 turns in. I think it's time to send Carl to the Haunted Forest because we want to try and hit this because we've re-hit the, the uh, short victory. We still haven't hit the long because of the Confederation. So we need to take um, Car Sabah and the Haunted Forest as well. And then we can complete the ultimate victory conditions because then, therefore, we've won the um, the end game event, essentially. But it's probably going to take 15 turns to get down there. I don't think there's any waypoints that we can get there quicker. So I think what we'll do, we'll send Gelt down through the desert and we'll send Carl to the Haunted Forest because it's further. God knows what's going to be down there. But I think that's where the other vampires are. In both those settlements. So it's going to take a, a little while, but hopefully we can get there without losing too much attrition. And then we'll be able to complete our first Immortal Empires campaign. Still a little while to go. You never know, we might get intercepted by God knows what. Yeah, so it doesn't say to defeat the factions. We actually just need the territory. So even those three Vampiric factions that came back, we didn't need to technically defeat them, though. Which is interesting. We just need their capitals. Really. And we can restabilize some of this region as well. Any diplomacy while we're at it? Lord of Bretonia. No, it doesn't seem to be. I will marshal the men. Valiant Lord. Alright, let's declare war upon Bastone, because they've just got one piece of territory. Weirdly causing some border gore there. We should be able to quickly deal with them. We've got units in the area. Pyrrhic, once you're here, once we bring in the second one, it should be okay. Will give us an over-resounding favour. Yes, perfect. Decisive victory. And that should be the last of Bretonia once and for all. Because we were at war with them before the vampires. <laughs> Essentially striked back and returned from the land of the dead. Send Boris back to the north. He can be the defender of the north now. The guilt is on uh, expedition, let's say. And we probably want to try and get rid of some of these spearmen. We've got enough money to probably add great swords and Hellstorm rocket batteries throughout. We're finally at a stage where we're just oozing and dripping with cash. 107 turns in now. Yes, my lord. Still got that goddamn Skaven army. Hey, Ostermark wants the Confederation, finally. We'll accept that. There mustn't be many more to Confederate with. Vissenland, maybe one other more. Don't know exactly, because we, br we brought some back that got fucking crushed, essentially. Raise Sigma. Now Ryan's attacked me. You gotta be shitting me. <laughs> he didn't come with much, but why did he try to retake the that settlement there? What? <laughs> That's pretty funny. 
Ah oh, well. Add another wood elf and treatment to the pile. No, we're gonna lose this one here though, but that's okay. What the hell? Gelt got intercepted by the Bleak Coast Buccaneers. A rogue dwarf force. Dude, they've probably got more firepower than me. On the battle, that was a close one. That's annoying that they got intercepted. Carl has made his way towards the Black Crag. Gelt got intercepted. Wouldn't be too unlikely or unrealistic if Franz did the same. Because he's still got a bit of a way to make his way there. So, let's try and do it if you can to go back there. Why is it going that way? I guess this is like Queek, Clan Moors territory. We are at war with them, so it's something to keep an eye on. I think the quickest route is there to the sea. Okay, Toddy's going to try and reclaim some territory in the north. As once again, the ever-present and never-relenting Norskin force is still hanging about. Did well to close that down. Let's go with this. Okay, I think it's time to put Hellstorm rocket batteries nearly in all my armies because we're making 4k a turn now and we've got only 15k in the bank. Because we've still been relying on mortars for quite some time. This is like the first time in the campaign we've got enough money to sort of spend that sort of stuff. All right. So we're going to deal with these Bretonians, actually. We're not fully done with them just yet. And then, eventually, Orion as well. Nice. Now a decisive one. Huh. That's interesting. Due to their alliance with the uh, Wood Elves, they have Wood Elf units in that army build. Curious. We'll try to rebuild the wall. And now... What's going on here in Carcasson? Oh, maybe the Skaven hold it or something, I don't know. But it will be a crucial port city if we can get trade and commerce to flow from Bretonia to the High Elves, it would be sweet. Oh, Gotrick and Felix depart. Uh, well that sucks. They have now finally left. Dude, they were here for such a long time. I think they've maybe extended it compared to um, previous times. Uh, Gelt's getting some Hellstorm rocket batteries in his build, so Franz actually might get to the Haunted Forest before we uh, send him down to deal with um, the vampires in and around the, the Tomb King Desert and stuff. Should be able to hit our ultimate victory conditions and win the Vampiric Ascension, which took over the land. So, if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video like and subscribe if you're new. I'd really much appreciate it. We've reached the Dragon Isles as... It looks like the Plague Lord is hanging around here. Cool. Alright, in the last episode as well, Buddy Orion declared war upon us. We should be able to deal with him, like the rest of his wood elf kin. So we've got three of the five vampire capitals back under our control as we push into the King's Glade. We crushed the resurgent Barra Legion, Musulon and Sylvania after already defeating them once in this series destroying them from a secondary time but yeah, if you've enjoyed this series at any point or if you've learned anything thanks for the support and if you haven't already left the video like and subscribe if you're new and up most let me know in the comments what you'd like me to replace this series with it doesn't necessarily have to be Warhammer 3 but if so, let me know what factions you are curious to see as we continue our offensive against Orion and the last of the Wood Elves. Ready. Praise be to the Lord.
Delta Sigma. We finally brought in Hellstorm rocket batteries as well. Throughout the majority of our builds. Gelt's on the way. Toddy's defending the north. But we're still quite close now to the haunted forest. Kind of threading the needle, actually. Okay, we can finally get a bunch of wizards <laughs> in our builds. We've really yet to have that much money in this campaign yet that we've finally had enough. Like, we've basically just been absolutely pushing and pushing our swordsmen, crossbowmen, hell, archers and mortars to the absolute limit. That it's, it's an incredible investment to actually get the buildings and the requirements for having wizards like what are we 115 turns in look we could have gone from early if we rushed it but man the empire campaign is um not as easy it's definitely a lot harder in warhammer 3. i can't be the only one that thinks that but we'll get some wizards in even though it's probably a little too late but they also have made it harder as well to get wizards you used to be able to get them much earlier on in a series, but we'll try and bring them in now. Never late than never. We'll try and get a Jade Wizard into Carl's army, ideally, as well. But even now, our two best full stacks with Carl's and Gelt, uh, Carl, Franz, and Gelt, are actually, well, mobile. They're on their way. So we've got a Bright Wizard in Altdorf and a um, Jade Wizard in the south. We'll go with the Burning Head. So we're sort of threading the needle there. Look, there's heaps of enemies in and around. Because this is uh, Gorst's faction, isn't it? So is that the only way to get to the Haunted Forest? Well, that sucks. We're going to have to take some attrition. Who owns that? It's only a one settlement faction, really. Like this re one, sorry, one settlement region. Who owns it? The Ogres. Okay, that's annoying. You'd assume a vampire would have it. We actually might be able to make a play for the Oak of Ages, to be honest. Decisive. Let's move this one in. Oh, we probably don't need to, actually. Nice. They've also got a one down there. As if Ka Kara's Karak got destroyed. Dude, what the fuck? Yeah, the dwarves have sucked in this playthrough. They've really not survived at all. Okay, so this is what we currently occupy. Most of Bretonia. Orion's being crushed to a little old seedling. And, unfortunately, Gelt is going to have to trespass through Tomb King territory. And go past the Black Pyramid. But we are actually going to finally meet our Empire allies in the south. Hang on, where are they? So that's, so that's Greece. So yeah, Greece is Goldtooth has that settlement. Oh, that's annoying. Because he's actually got a firm alliance with Cathay, which is kind of cool. It's surprising to see Cathay and the um, the Ogres really team up. So I guess we'll negotiate with Imric to try and join his war. I will not fail. Shouldn't be too difficult to take the Haunted Forest, though. <laughs> we have to fight some Cathay units. That's funny. 
Kind of cool that they have a hybrid build. So we're at four down, one to go. I doubt they're going to try and take it back. Uh, we'll try and get some relations with the Tomb Kings. They're never going to accept military access. Yeah, so Volkmar the Grim actually has a new faction down here with the Cult of Sigma in the Greater Desert, which is kind of cool now. I'd love to confederate with him. Like he has his own faction in his own right now, which is sick. Heed me! He's actually down near Araby. <laughs> I am the Supreme Patriarch. Still a while before Gelt can get well, down there. I will do this. No way. You're joking. Tyrion of the High Elves has attacked me. What? Um, okay. I was not expecting that. Avalon... If, um, that means Eltharion is going to come in. Kislev. Yeah, maybe because we destroyed their elfin kin. Oh, I kind of hate that the Wood Elves attacked me. Okay, so Gelt has now landed. And he really... Is it time? His conquest is all that's remaining. We've nearly hit 100 settlements though. Nearly halfway towards there. And what do we need these? Still Ostland and Ostermark. It's funny that we're probably going to hit the ultimate before we hit the long. It just takes a while. For all the elect accounts to come in, like, through Natural Confederation. To be fair, it's nearly at the time where we've got so many of them, we could just, like, manually conquer them. Anyway, Gelt's still heading south to try and take the last remaining settlement we need. It is best to move. I guess we're just trying to get there as quick as possible and try and evade the Tomb Kings. Uh. Ready. Summon speed. And we've knocked a Ryan out from his woodland home. Still got a bit of territory down here though. So? And once again, former Dwarven territory. And he's still hanging about, he's still got an army nearby. Uh, we've still got the uh, Thedric here. Yeah, but if you look in the south. What does the Emperor bid? The dwarfs in uh, Karaz Karak have been completely done and dusted. Let's reclaim this, it's not too far. Servant of the faith. Bringing back all the wasteland under our control. Just continually and getting sacked by fucking Norskins. Let's just try and replenish and repair where we can. I serve the Heldenhammer by Sigma. Okay, Orion's attacked us there. Fool. Dude, why did he do that? <laughs> Friends of the Empire. We ended up just absolutely crushing his faction. Just a little bit too late to avenge Durthu and Dryage and the boys. We actually can make a play for Carter's cut back now. Getting a piece of territory in the Silver Row will be quite profitable. Like, we've already got an army there holding, defending. The South and Sylvania, like, why not make a play? Like, I wish I could bring back the dwarves. Like, the elect account system. Oh, God. Three full stacks of vampires there. So, we still, we still, we still need to go past them. It's a little bit like vampire. It looks like it's tearing there. Still pretty Such early access, this version. It's just so weird seeing so much vampiric corruption there in the desert. <laughs> Do not mock me. And this is uh, like this is where like Manfred is, eh? Uh, Von Karstein. 
So maybe pushing this way might do it. Oh, the Tomb Kings have it. Seriously? As if. You'd think that um, Manfred will have it. Osterland Office Confederation will accept that. We should have the finances to um, probably deal with their units that we're just going to acquire. Their trash tier units. Oh no, we might have just been pipped here to the post. They've sent an army over. Oh well, actually if they take it quite quickly, that actually might work well. I could take the Springs of the Eternal Life, just to give us a bit of base of operations. There doesn't even seem to be that much vampiric corruption there anyway. And... Guilt has taken some attrition, nothing too crazy. Not like when... Carl had to cross the fucking... Toxic Seas. We'll use this as a, ba a base of operations, replenish and repair. Get back up to full strength, and we'll make a push. I guess we'll continue on the Silver Road and take the Pillars of Grungi or whatever. The Empire. Making some nice progress against the Crooked Moon. Champion of the faith. Might nearly be able to get all of it if we take Mount Squighorn. <laughs> Great. The Vampire Coast attacks us with the Pirates of Satosa. Salt Spy, Cariana. Yeah, so they have besieged them. You've got to be kidding me. They're putting two full stacks over. <sighs> we were so, so close. Um, even Volkmar's got an army over. We could go over there to help. Because if this works, we might be able to draw out the... Yeah, here we go. <laughs> the the, uh, the Tomb King garrison is going to help us. So, I guess what we'll do is we'll fight this one, because Manfred's actually rocked up. Manfred and Gelt going at it. So, if we can throw this back, if we can weaken the Tomb King Harrison, we can move on in and then hit our ultimate victory conditions. Gelt has, what, five units of great swords, three halberds, one swordsman, one handgunner, four crossbows, four Hellstorm rocket batteries, and two mortars as well, which are really going to pack a punch. But first time facing Manfred, we fought Vlad a lot, who's been tough for the Empire. Great swords. For Heldenhammer. Yes, sir. Nice, dry desert, but it's like in, at night, so it's kind of eerie <laughs> looking. Okay, so there is a delay with Manfred's reinforcements and the Tomb King Garrison coming to help us out. But Gelt just needs to inflict as much damage on this first army as we can. I haven't played with Gelt much in this series because he hasn't really been needed for that many clutch battles or significant ones. I've been using Carl mostly. Still a minute before those reinforcements come. I'll be curious to see how Gelt does in combat here. Should be okay. He just needs to be in range to get his offensive spells off. to keep that fire rate up. Look out, spellcaster. Surprisingly 90% in my favor seeing there's no reinforcements in. All right, trying to get Geld out of this.
do. As if guilt just fucking fled. <laughs> Thought it'd be right early in some capacity, but here come our Tomb King allies. These guys look sick. Oh god, Manfred's now here. Really pincering this right flank. Hopefully, we can hold. Thankfully, Franz, that's uh, what Carl, what? Gelt, <laughs> has recovered. They're blobbing up here, Wells. So just get all this artillery with that. Oh my god, this is really, really close. We need these Tomb King reinforcements quick, fast. Just fire absolutely everything into that fucking cluster. Our right flank is like falling, but the left is now holding thanks to the Tomb Kings coming in. Dude, this is way too close to Cole. Our infantry are doing a hell of a work, losing high casualties. We just need to get the skirmishes and artillery to help on out. They're wavering. Sigma, preserve us! For come on, come on. Missiles will fly to battle. Still way too close to call because fucking Manfred is tanking. Nice, we won. What the we fuck? I think the Tomb King saved our ass then. It's going to be a shame because we're going to stab them in the back <laughs> and betray them. We just want to try and completely get rid of them. Nice. Close battle. Yeah, no shit. Holy crap. They really outnumbered us as well. Gel got 747 kills. Oh my god, the Hellstorm rocket batteries? Dude, thankfully brought them in. If we had four mortars compared to the Hellstorm, I don't know if we would have won that. But, thankfully, we haven't had, they didn't really sort of camp that settlement with like three full stacks. Thankfully, the bloody Tomb Kings held it. We'll get rid of them. Now, I didn't really see exactly how... I didn't see how many they exactly lost the Tomb Kings. So we should be able to just march on in. Theoretically. 132 turns in. Well, I guess we take it now. And then, I don't know how long we exactly have to hold it for. Before we hit our ultimate victory conditions. Probably only one turn. 
So instead of straight up war decking them, which would bring potentially other Tomb Kings in. Oh, okay. I was going to say, maybe they're um, allied with factions. So we'll ask uh, Krokgar. Hey, can I join against the Tomb Kings? That'll be great. 2k, perfect. And now, with a slightly weakened garrison. Uh, not overly too much. We can go on in with a decisive auto resolve. And just repair slightly. We have a piece of territory in the shifting sands. Uh, diplomacy wise, anything else? No, we're good. It's always good to check. So, yep, we've fulfilled all the requirements. We should be able to hit this ultimate victory condition now. Now that we've survived the end game event. Dude, that's tough. That's tricky. We nearly got caught. I couldn't imagine if we weren't as strong or expansive as we were. Like, trying to deal with those relentless stacks that got spawned. Crikey. Okay, Volkmar's not happy because we trespassed through his lands. It's also interesting as well, as the campaign goes on, there's significantly a lot of less factions. Oh, Bellicor's coming in again. <laughs> he is really squishy in this, for whatever reason. Uh, more High Elves are attacking me, so be it. Um, but yeah, like it starts off with like 300, 280 factions. Once you get to 110, there's literally only like 90 factions left. Oh, we won. There we go. Look at that. It's taken us 124 turns to hit our ultimate victory conditions. Crikey. Here are the statistics, the stats if you're curious. And here are the records, obviously starting in humbling beginnings in Reichland. Spreading all out, dominating the Empire, most of the Woodland Realm, and Britonia. This is what we control. We'll continue the campaign. Well, thank you very much for watching. We've hit the ultimate victory conditions. We're going to put a pin in the campaign here, read your feedback and suggestions, and depending on the general support, the likes, the comments, the views, um, what you guys are sort of thinking. We could do more episodes. There is definitely an option for domination, which would take a significant amount of time, but we've hit 101 settlements out of a total 270, so not quite half. It's more of a, more of a third through. But the problem is, well, we might need to download a mod to get habitable territory or something. But it's interesting, look how far I east you have to go on. once you hit the... if you get the Vampiric um, Ascension one. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed my first Immortal Empires Ultimate Victory campaign. Stay tuned for more Total War content on the channel. Whatever it is. But yeah, thanks for watching. Make sure to take care of yourselves. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. My name is Ben Simsy, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.